Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How is everyone doing today? Alhamdulillah, we have uh, Ustaz Zishan with us, mashallah. Assalamu <laughs> <laughs> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, the other panelists, uh, Brother Mansoor, Muhammad, uh, Ismail, and Adnan will be joining us shortly. You forget the other panel. <laughs> it's time to wish Dawa wise. Congratulations and a mabruk and, uh, you know, big celebratory uh, hug. Congratulations and, and all the trimmings for, mashallah, reaching the milestone of 100k. May Alhamdulillah. Allah accept. Alhamdulillah. And uh, may Allah make it the beginning of, uh, of a, mashallah, a, a intense growth and, uh, mashallah, Ameen, just inshallah. more and more benefit, I guess. I mean, I mean. So yeah, jazakallah khair for that, uh, but the Zishan. Uh, may Allah accept from us all, and uh, may Allah make this a means of, uh, you know, benefiting the ummah. Whatever little we can do with these platforms that we have. So inshallah, I mean, it wouldn't be possible without the support of uh, all the people, you know, who support us uh, both on online and offline. Uh, so, mashallah, brothers like you in the background who help us a lot and, you know, mashallah, all the subscribers, uh, all the viewers, all the people who are the moderators, uh, people who comment, you're all part of the ecosystem. So, oh, for sure. Yeah, inshallah, oh, for sure. we'll see the ajr, we'll see the reward of this on Yawm al uh, It might be seem pretty insignificant at this point, at this stage. But inshallah, in the Akhirah, you know, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, Prophet sallallahu said that even if you recite one half of the Quran, not one word, but one letter of the Quran, Allah gives you 10 rewards. So, you know, he's merciful. He's, uh, he's uh, rahmatul alameen. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has um, given us a lot in terms of just the... The fact that we are breathing, the fact we are walking, we are sitting, you know, many people don't have that. So we should be thankful for every second of the day, you know, if we are truly to show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah accept from us. So Brother Zishan, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. You know, you're talking about the favors of Allah. Yes. Uh, one of the favors that I think caught my eye was the fact that the planet is traveling 1,670 kilometers uh, as well per, well per second or uh, I think yeah but an hour yeah 1670 yeah. kilometers an hour and uh, wow. subhanallah us sitting here in our comfortable yeah. chair and subhanallah we don't really appreciate some sometimes we wonder you know what is Allah really doing even though I think that's a nonsensical question that anyone with a rational mind wouldn't necessarily um, posit but in case somebody is wondering, just the mere fact that you're able to sit still when the planet is spinning incredibly fast is, yeah. subhanAllah, one such example of a blessing that we can't necessarily see and no Absolutely. less experience as well. So alhamdulillah, yeah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, so inshallah, as I said, the other panelists, they'll be joining us soon. Uh, what we will do is um, when they join, inshallah, we'll open for the Q&A. Uh, but just want to tell you, I mean, in terms of um, the achievement of this milestone of the 100,000 from uh, on the Dawah channel, it has been a long journey of like just over two years, I would say. Um, and alhamdulillah, in that duration, we ourselves learned a lot in terms of both the technology, about the social media, how everything ticks, you know, behind the scenes. And mashallah, with brothers like... Uh, Zishan, mashallah, smile to Jannah, you know, alhamdulillah, we are blessed to have brothers like this to help us and to guide us. You know, we might be in the dawah scene for quite a long time, but these technologies are still new to us. So alhamdulillah, jazakallah, care for that, brother Zishan. And, well, yeah, I'm yeah. just I'm just glad you guys honored me with your initial videos doing it, obviously, here in, in our setup, mashallah, which was... Uh, oh, yes, yes, yeah. the famous couch. Oh yeah. yeah, the smile to Jannah couch. Are you sitting on it now, or oh, you know you're you're far away? I think. No, no, no. It's it's over there. Oh, it's there. Okay, in the same room. Yeah. So, okay, Alhamdulillah. No, Mashallah. Yeah, those were the early years. I can't. When... I can't grace it with my presence too often. There's just too much. 
you know, glory <laughs> and, and blessings there. I have to be in a right, right state of mind to, you know, yeah. go there. and Of course. Perform your gusol and then, you know, sit down on it in yeah, your white clothes. Yeah, just on sober <laughs> to make sure, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm there. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, yeah, it is indeed the legendary couch, <laughs> as uh, Alifia puts it, mashallah. So yeah, alhamdulillah, what's um, what's happening on uh, Smile to Jannah? Anything new? You guys got any projects uh, in the pipeline? Yeah, yeah, inshallah. Um, I was, uh, inshallah, I'll be filming something. Um, on, I think Habib, there's, there's a fight going on between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. And on s2jnews.com, Mm -hmm. We posted an article where Habib actually um, declined the offer, allegedly by Elon Musk, to uh, to to be one of the people that trains him. Right. So, and the and the reason cited was religious reasons that there would be too much of a conflict. So, yeah, inshallah, that that should be coming out. And uh, on the Smart Jannah Hindi channel, one of the ex-Muslims responded. Um, I was going to ask you this. I mean, you know, in in the uh, Indian kind of culture, you know, when somebody calls you a jalebi salesman, is uh -huh. that what does that mean? Well, it just means like you're 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 just waffling, in other words, in short. Ah, uh, so it's waffle, yeah. but it's waffle, but Indian version. Yes, the Indian version, because oh. jalebi, you know, the shape of jalebi is just right. like a spiral. Right, so right, right. Oh. Your talk kind so, of just spirals down. It doesn't really make any sense. That kind of thing. yeah, yeah. So, I, so I made this academic response to this ex-Muslim guy, and I was breaking down. I was talking about morality. I was talking about subjectivism, and you know, um, that that sort of stuff. And he just responded with that, to be honest. And oh, I yeah. thought it was. It's just a lazy I thought it was response. A, I thought it was a great injustice to his followers, frankly. I was expecting an <laughs> academic response justifying his uh, his kind of worldview, and, and that's what he hit back with. Uh, it was, Who was this? The, was this someone popular or just some random guy on the internet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's I think, uh, one of the egg popular Indian ex-Muslims. And I, and I was, you know, to be honest, I wasn't surprised that that was a quality, and that's, that's the strength that they're bringing to the table, frankly. I just yeah. hope the viewers can see right through them. Uh, it's quite pathetic, to be honest. Well, I think you're you're raising your hopes too high if you expected any academic response from people like those ex-Muslim who are just full of emotions. Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> I think we've got to learn from the, the OGs, you know, hitting the 100K mark, mashallah, yeah, setting, the, setting the, the standard. I remember uh, Brother Mansoor made a... A reaction video to one of these ex-Muslims. The guy didn't even know how to read the Quran. It was like a joke. I have a feeling he was even that reading of the Quran he was doing is probably was reading from a transliteration from the way he was uh, reading it. So yeah, most of these guys, you know, who think they they knew Islam and then that's the reason they left Islam. It's just mainly just either emotions or for some other worldly benefits or maybe a woman, you know, in their life. Who, for which they had to sell their akhira, you know? What do you expect from people <laughs> like that <laughs> who have sold themselves out? You know? <laughs> I like how that was such a that was such a big diss. Um, I, yeah. I don't think it came across to the people. Uh, I hope <laughs> I, ho I hope it landed. I hope. Yeah, I'm sure they all, they understand. Alhamdulillah. So yeah, we know this. I mean, it's it's nothing new. Uh, but yeah. I guess um, these people, you know, they just, just like the Islamophobes in America, you know, all these uh, right wings who used to be against Muslims. And now they are kind of realizing what the left wing has done to them. And they can't take it, you know, the way their children are treated, the way mm. their genders become a joke. Uh, so it's, it's, I think it's the light, there, there's still light at the end of the tunnel somewhere in this Islamophobes, be they Hindus, be they from the Americas or Europe as well. So yeah, I mean, this is uh, the reason we have these channels, isn't it? To thwart all those uh, misconceptions they spread against Islam. And Alhamdulillah, with these um, humble platforms uh, of ours, we can do whatever little we can do, you know, inshallah, mm -hmm. uh, we try our best. So yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, you you went to Speaker's Corner last Sunday. Any good discussions? Um, yeah, yeah, mashallah. Um, I mean, I, I could probably say it here. There was one guy who was very close to Islam, one mashallah. step away from Islam, 
Right. And um, we spoke, and then we had to switch the camera off. Okay. So I mean, read between the lines. I mean, I can't disclose what happened because um, he he didn't want his parents to know. But uh, yeah, just make. You know. Okay. Inshallah. Yeah. Did he accept Islam or? That's, was that's what I'm saying. I can't say. We had oh, to I see. Okay. Off. But you don't know who yeah. you're not mentioning the name, so it should be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't have the picture or the name, so it should be fine, you know. Yeah, then, yeah. We, the thing is, it got uploaded by. Oh, few... I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. What? Even just... though you said not to, he doesn't want the camera on. Yeah, yeah. So until like that that point where I right. said, "Do you want to accept Islam?" We just, oh, we I just see. shut it off there. Okay, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Never but alhamdulillah, um, alhamdulillah. I guess what I could say is, um, they definitely are, you know, po- um open-minded open-hearted people that come um with with a good intention and and that's the hope that we have of course for for these live streams as well yeah. and guidance is not in our hands it's in the hands of allah just Absolutely. come sincere and uh yeah ask ask your questions as long as the genuine and sincere be be respectful and ask ask god for guidance it's literally as simple as that and i would say i think dawah wise has been doing fantastic work hashim yeah. mansoor in particular they've been consistent and that's, uh, I guess, a, a sign of kubulia, a sign of acceptance as well, that we know in the narrations mm-hmm. of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that Allah doesn't like, well, it's not that Allah doesn't like like big actions, but Allah prefers actions that even though if they're small, but they're regular um, in, in, in the way they're done. So you yeah, guys, I mean, mashallah, have been regular. In fact, when you guys aren't at Speaker's Corner, it doesn't feel like Speaker's Corner, honestly. Um, it feels... It feels uh, it feels strange. It feels like there's something lacking. So, you guys, mashallah, have have done great work, and and I think it will definitely uh, improve. And and the only reason, obviously, I'm saying it is because obviously we are live, and hopefully to motivate other people. And you know, unfortunately and sadly, sometimes um, the way things are now, it's very TikTok, very short content. You know, this person's yeah. going viral or that person's going viral driven, but. Um, and sometimes the people that have been doing the work don't get the recognition. So I guess I'm glad that you guys have reached this milestone. And I hope that, you know, more people kind of appreciate what you guys have done to the field. And I hope and pray. And that's another reason that I'm doing it. I make dua for these brothers that Allah keeps them, you know, healthy. Allah keeps them steadfast. Allah I mean, removes sure. the obstacles that occur in family and in work and, health and wealth because those are the reasons sometimes brothers fall off they can't you know attend because they're dealing with those issues may Allah deal with those issues so they can deal with the enemies of Islam because we need of course whilst you have people with my style that are very you know soft um, you do need people that sometimes can be assertive that that can really get the, the, the point across and you guys have experience in that not that that's the only way I mean, you guys have the best of both, but you really have honed in on, you know, getting your point across and not um, falling for the traps that, say, um, newbies at Speaker's Corner would fall for or go for the overly kind of snowflakey, apologetic kind of way. So, alhamdulillah, uh, I hope that people do do definitely appreciate that. What about yourself? I mean, I know you didn't go, but Mansoor went. Yeah, Mansoor went. He had... Uh... <laughs> An extremely long conversation. Like I think that was a record. I don't think anyone at Speaker's Corner probably spoke for that long. Three and a half hours. Mashallah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> and I, I would I would actually give credit to that uh, woman as well, who was a Christian, I believe. And she had the patience to wait that long. And she was like asking questions um, after questions. And mashallah, Mansoor was just responding to all of nice. them. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Sorry, just one sec. I think the panelists are ringing in. Mm. Uh, so just let me get this call. I'm going to put myself on mute, and um, so maybe you want to give some advice to our viewers while I'm. I'll going. just I'll just uh, deal with the comment section, I guess. Okay, sure. So guys, just you and me in the comment section. Just hit me with some questions. We just deal yeah. with that. Right Go now. easy on the brother. <laughs> Come on, guys. The more controversial, the better. Somebody comments Malhama. Answer is yes. Somebody say salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. 
Fisherman goes, Hala marhaba. Barkalofi Habibi. Uh, somebody goes, Do you think of philosophy useful or useless? I think anyone who is, uh, if, if that's the contention that people are bringing, then we do need to know that contention, but obviously we don't need to make it emphasis of da'wah. Someone goes, Shawarma or Kebab? I would say Kebab. Urdu channel release content, I was supposed to film something today. So, yeah, inshallah, I, I do need to, bro. But where the shorts, mashallah, are, are quite regular on there. Somebody goes, I truly am, admire your knowledge. Jazakallah khair, bro. Knowledge seeker goes, Salaam alaikum, wa alaikum as salam. Uh, Ahmed from Somalia, wa alaikum as salam. Well, I have a question that why there couldn't be an infinite regress of dependent things. Yeah, because look, if there's an infinite regress of dependent things, then we wouldn't necessarily exist. In order for us to exist, there has to be an end to that chain. The example that I like to give is if I'm to throw something, if I throw it and I need to ask someone's permission, then he has to ask someone's permission. And, and if it goes ad infinitum, I'm never going to get to throw it. The mere fact that I get to throw it means that somebody in that chain said, yes, throw it. So there's an end to that chain. So it's us as well. So it's like that. Um... Uh, welcome, salam wa rahmatullah, streaky red. Allah, let's unite upon haq wa alaikum salam, brother. I hope you're doing good. I'm appreciating your work. Thank you for making Hindi and Urdu space too. Barakallah, Fiq, bro. Jazakallah for supporting and subscribing. I'm from Kerala. Oh, Ashbin, hope you're doing well. Mubashir wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Yes, 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 mashallah. Why do we need to fear Allah? Um, fear in Arabic means different things, isn't it? So when we're talking about fear, we're talking about khushu, like a child that gets told off by the mother, but out of love, the mother needs to tell the child off, but the child runs towards the mother. That's the sort of fear that we're talking about. Not just fear, I mean, to, to colloquially and generally speaking, there needs to be a balance between hope and fear anyway. Um, people, um, lone warrior says, Brother Zishan, my answer is yes, brother. Um, and uh, yeah, somebody, uh, these guys keep asking for Swati sister. Who's Swati sister? So, Sister Swati used to be a regular panelist and she still is. Alhamdulillah, people need to know that some people need to take a break, need to go uh -huh. on holiday. They're not here every week in and out. <laughs> so yeah, Sister Swati is taking a, a break. Uh, so inshallah, she'll be back. Uh, inshallah. As for Brother Sam Stallone, uh, unfortunately, as you all know about his channel, it, it was hacked and somehow he's lost his channel. Uh, may Allah help the brother regain his channel and we pray and hope the best for him. Uh, so both of these... Uh, Brother and uh, Sister Swati and Brother Sam, mashallah, they have been quite vocal in their, um, basically in that dawah against uh, the, the Hindus, you know, and to expose all the things, all the Islamophobic articles that they've written, the videos that have made. And mashallah, they have uh, done a great job. And, you know, obviously people will uh, want to be against them. There are certain elements who would not want... Uh, them to continue that and be the hindrance in that. But you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has blessed people in this field of da'wah. So the prophets and the messengers, they had a lot of hurdles, you know, and they were like 100 million times better than us. So, you know, why would we expect an easy ride? As mm. they say, you know, the path to Jannah uh, is not a walk in the park. So people have to struggle, you know, the can't the more... just smile your way to Jannah, you know. <laughs> yeah, you can't. <laughs> uh, though you will go to Jannah smiling, inshallah. And uh, inshallah. we pray that we all are part of that uh, that journey to Jannah, inshallah. So yeah, it's you need to strive hard. You know, people like Nuh alayhi salam, they give da'wah for 950 years. Can you believe that? And all they got was like maybe just a few handful of people who mm. accepted the deen. Can you imagine how they felt, you know? We only live like maybe what 70, 80 years, uh, maybe thereabouts average. So 
in that lifetime, if we spend like 10 years of da'wah and we had a few hurdles that we had to face, it's doddles in comparison to what they had to go through. And not only the, the Anbiya alayhimu salam, but even the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. If you look at the story of Bilal radiallahu anhum, you know how he was uh, tortured by his masters, by slave masters, just for him saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Just for saying that, you know, he used to say Ahad, Ahad, that means Allah is one. There's only one God, one unique God. So yes, all of those people who spoke for Tawheed against the polities, they had to face a lot of um, torture, a lot of hardships. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, with his mercy, as there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, which states that not even a thorn pricks you, that your sins are not expiated. So even a thorn prick expiates your sin. You know, when you fall ill, when you have depression, when you have anxiety, when you have any hardship, Allah is in a way not only testing you, but at the same time, he's relieving you of all those sins that you might have accumulated. You know, so don't think that this test in, in this dunya is easy and don't think it's futile either. It's going to be something which will be the means of eternal bliss. So bear with it for a few years, few decades, you know, a century at most. But inshallah, there is, like they say, light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, after hardship comes ease, you know, this is an ayah in the Quran. And Allah has promised us this. So inshallah, bear with it patiently because Allah is with the ones who are patient. Inna laha ma sabirin. We got uh, Brother Ismail in the background here. Yeah? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You are muted, bro. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh. What, what, what beautiful smiles. Why is this? Masha well, we have it smile to Jannah. What do you expect? Oh, wa alaikum wa salam. <laughs> wa alaikum This guy's my new favorite, you know. No, no. <laughs> he's, he's everyone's favorite. You know, people have been asking no, no, in the no, comment no. section, where are Ismail's uh, videos? We want more of his videos. If Masha only he comes Allah. to Speaker's Corner. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, forgive me. You're right. Brother Hashim is getting on my case. He's so right. I have uh, unfortunately been uh, moving cities and then new job and all this stuff. It, it, yeah. it really took me away from the park for the last month. Inshallah, I'll be there this Sunday. So uh, maybe maybe me and Brother Hashim and Brother Zishan will be fishing for some, uh, for some atheists <laughs> and some Christians. You know what I mean? We'll put you on the uh, front line. <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Inshallah. How are you doing, bro? You're right. Al Alhamdulillah. I just came back from work. How about you guys? Yeah, thanks for joining. I know it's a difficult time, like just after five o'clock, because most people here in the UK, they finish work around five, five thirty. So it's not easy for everyone just to hop in on the live stream. I think Brother Adnan will be joining us soon as well. He just messaged me saying he's running a bit late. So okay, Inshallah. Good. Uh, yeah. Brother Zishan. But how is everything with you, inshallah? Everything good? Are we going to see you on uh, on Sunday in Speaker's Corner? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. I just realized, I just I was just checking your um, your 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 name, just under your name. I didn't realize you had a YouTube channel, so I just subscribed to that now. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> it's a YouTube <laughs> channel at, at, at the beginning of its life. No, no, there's, there's nothing on there. I think yeah, it's, exactly. very, That's the point. <laughs> it's very powerful because... Although we think, like, we're in consensus that there's nothing there, but the atheists, mm. they have to they have to say and they have to acknowledge that there is something there. Yeah, so yeah. They, they definitely think, you know, like something. I powerful <laughs> metaphor that you're using. That, yeah, that's what I'm doing, exactly. I'm, I'm <laughs> showing how, even according to the atheists, you know, something can come from nothing, I guess. Yeah, so you yeah. say, look, I've got phenomenal video on my channel, check it out. They're going to be like, there's, there's nothing there. So, ah, but Sounds what is good. nothing? What do you yes, think? Yes. Nothing is something. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it'll, it'll be best if you put Ismail before your name. Oh, uh, sounds, I've done it for you. Oh, is yeah. that okay? Oh, okay. Yeah, perfect. Color sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, that way, you know, people know who you, who you are. Ismail, there are lots of yeah, Kennedys, yeah. you know. Like Jeff. Like, oh, is there? <laughs> Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy. Uh, 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 he wants I'm, to say I'm Kennedy. How, how do you pronounce it? You just say Kennedy like. Kennedy or no? No, I say Al Kennedy. Yeah, Al Kennedy. Al Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 
<laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, whole, Alhamdulillah. Whole, whole, whole. Yeah, so guys, please subscribe to Brother Ismail's channel and he's on Twitter as well. Are you on any other social media? It's just a two. Uh, yeah, those those two. And I'm on, on the same handle on Instagram. So, so oh, you yeah, okay. Bro, oh, just just please don't get into these uh, polemics. You know, sometimes certain brothers come into the scene, they start mm -hmm. debating Akida, Fiqh, just... Bro, <laughs> my, my bro, have you, brother Zishan, did you see me do that in a video? There's a reason I have not done that. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I take your advice brothers, full on board. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. But yeah. then when you see them, they just get pulled into this and it just really takes away from, from what they're really kind of uh, good at. And uh, yeah, I think that's why people love Ahmad Didat because he just stuck mm -hmm. to his lane and he just... And he just did that, and and I tried to do that as well. You, you probably see with me as well that I don't get involved with. Uh, with yeah, same here. You know, yeah. stick to the dawa. We don't even get into fake because that's not our field. Mm -hmm. You so, know, yep. it's it's Agreed. just keep it straight and narrow. The dawa to the non-Muslims in particular, um, even though Muslims do require dawa as well. But yeah, mm -hmm. keep it to the the misconceptions out there. Stuff like that. Yeah. So even though your name is Ismail Al Kennedy, this brother didn't mm -hmm. get it, I guess. So you want to tell oh, me where okay. you're from? <laughs> from Canada, brother. Brother Azman, okay. yeah? From Canada. No problem. Um, but, uh, yeah, brother Zishan, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, like I I think we have plenty of atheists and plenty of liberals and plenty of feminists. And uh, these are the guys who are like going out of their way to assault our religion and assault the lesser educated uh, Muslims and trying to bamboozle them into um, kufr. So um, uh, we, we're not, uh, you know, we're not sold out of the the main targets. Uh, why would we, you know, put our attention to anything so frivolous and that causes so much divisiveness uh, when you know there's a clear target that's aiming for you? So I think the priorities are clear. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. No, you're you're hundred percent right, bro. It's good you see it like that, and um, may Allah kind of give you stability so you can come and cause instability in the hearts of the people. <laughs> Trying to cause divisiveness. <laughs> Mashallah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely. There's a certain level of like, you know, yeah. th there's a there's a, a, a minimal level of loyalty you have to somebody else who says La ilaha illallah. So like, you know, that you start with the people who reject and uh, and and you know reject La ilaha illallah and then cuss the prophet peace be upon him. Uh, so that that's that seems like a clear um, target. And, and at the end of the day, everybody has to stick to their, uh, you know, skills and their education and stuff. And, um, you know, you should recognize your limits. And Alhamdulillah, I think we do that pretty well. Nice, nice. Yeah, that would be awesome, bro. And we need to connect as well, like um, regarding a YouTube channel. Let's let's kind of connect and bounce off ideas yes. and, and see where, where we can take it, inshallah. Sounds inshallah. good, inshallah. More than happy to. Yeah, you need to start making videos too. <laughs> yes, I know. Brother Hashim and Brother Sabur have been on my case for months now. <laughs> well, you got your phone, right? Uh, just make yeah. a, a one minute video. You got your phone on yeah. you. Yeah. You just yes, post yes. it. That's how we start. You know, you yeah. know, you could do like you've got these long discussions. You can take clips from those yeah. long discussions yeah. and upload them that are more succinct, digestible. Then you can because Dawa Wise has got the full one, then you can kind of link their channel as well. That way yeah. there's there's benefit. To both, inshallah. Oh, I think, you I think, you yeah. both you both are 100% right. I've been I've been slacking on that because it's fallen behind due to some other responsibilities. But you're right. It's, this should take priority, inshallah. So, yeah. um, I have I have great mentors here and and behind the scenes as well. So, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. all of you brothers. Alhamdulillah. All right. Shall we release the kraken? Oh, sorry, the Q and A <laughs> question. <laughs> so. Inshallah. What have you been up to, uh, Brother Ismail? Are you coming this Sunday, by the way? Sorry? Are you coming on Sunday to Speaker's Corner? Yes, Inshallah. I'm, I'll be there on Sunday um, at Speaker's Corner. Um, just, yeah. you know, I'm just mo moving, mo you know, the, the moving process took some time and then getting comfortable with the new yeah, job um, and learning the, the learning curve of the new job and stuff. So, Alhamdulillah, just, you know, settling in, but also preparing for the next academic year, Inshallah. So that takes you know, time doing some reading and doing, you know, some research to try to get ahead of the, get ahead of the non-Muslims <laughs> for, for next year's set of, uh, you know, academic discussions, inshallah. So that's, that's about it for me. How about you? How did you enjoy your va little vacation, Brother Hashim, with the boys? 
Yeah, I was uh, away with the friends and then I went away with the family as well this week. So, alhamdulillah, that was good. Oh, uh, it's good to take a break, you know, from all this. There's a lot of, uh, <laughs> you know, when you deal with a lot of toxic people, you want to detox. Mm. And I think it's good to take a break now and then, even from Speaker's Corner. Uh, it's it's a yeah. must, I think, for everyone. Yeah, you know, we switched. <laughs> we switched. Yeah, yeah. We, I used to be the one hopping around and now... So, mashallah, <laughs> every every week you're somewhere new. You're well, it's, new, it's a kid's uh, Adnan, Adnan Rashid. It's a kid's holiday, so that's the only time the parents can go out. You know, have holiday. <laughs> it's not mm. that uh, that simple. But inshallah, I see what I'm going you're to... doing, pinning it on the kids. <laughs> <laughs> where were where were the kids when you were out, going out with your friends to Lake District? Now, where were the kids? No, <laughs> it was it was a kids' holiday that time as well. <laughs> you know, we we having um, a vacation. It's summer vacation here for the kids, so they get like six weeks off, which is enough, I think, <laughs> for anyone's holidays. Right. I'm going to pin the um, the the link to ask questions in the panel. So if anybody wants to join, uh, and today we are giving chance to everyone, Muslims, non-Muslims, everyone, uh, to join. We only ask you to. Um, Switch on your camera as soon as you join so we can verify your identity. And only I can see you in the back chat. Uh, so before you come live, you can switch it off, inshallah. Um, so this is just for verifying that there's no, that you're real human <laughs> that we're dealing with. Because in the past, other channels have had issues where there were trolls who wanted to basically, you know, to shut down the, the stream. And they do some antics, so we don't want that situation. So yeah, if you're genuine, you shouldn't have a problem. Switch on your camera for a few seconds, you know, like even five to ten seconds. Switch it off just once your ID is verified. Uh, even then, if you don't uh, believe that you exist, uh, yes. do it anyway. Yeah, as um, long as the camera exists, <laughs> <laughs> you can come on the panel, inshallah. So yeah, I'm going to just put the link out there. I'm going to pin it, inshallah. We just need Brother Mansoor for his uh, tripod analogies now. <laughs> <laughs> You've learned them well, inshallah. Right, so I've uh, pinned it in the live chat. So if anybody wants to come on the panel, ask questions. Once again, make sure your camera is on in the back chat. And then we can bring you on the panel. So right, until they're joining, uh, is there anything you guys want to... I don't know. Mention. Yeah, we could. Do, why don't we talk about well, how did you guys like the um, the debate, the atheism and Islam debate in South Africa? I haven't watched that yet. Had a oh, lot of. Okay. I was traveling. Remember? <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. What about you, Brother Zishan? Did you did you get to, uh, a chance to watch it? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Mashallah. I I thought it was it was fantastic. Um, in terms of in terms of of course the uh, the arguments and the content. Um, yeah. I, I think some of the points may have gone over people's heads, but I think the thing that that kind of really made it a frustrating a frustrating watch was um, the organisers. I, I think they did a, a great injustice. Um, I don't think they were the right people for the job, and uh, they they didn't really host very well. I, I think even the premises as well. It's very unprofessional. Just uh, I mean that's the time we need to go now and. Not allow it. I mean, you understand. You're you're calling big names. Um, it's it's going to do well. Um, I mean, the University of South Africa. They definitely, or Johannesburg. They definitely need to kind of have meetings with these individuals, and uh, because that's very bad. I think publicity. I think it's very yeah. poor. Um, uh, the arguments. Yeah, the I think it was. Yeah. yeah. The, the ending was no good, especially with the guy. I love Brother Hamza's retort. Um, as soon as he talked about his knee, uh, Brother Hamza is like, exa he just called him out. He's like, how do you know that? It's like, yeah. it's so true. And he's the most perfect person to call that out. It's like, mm -hmm. how do you know what's in the in the speaker's hearts and intentions? It's That's such a right. basic Islamic concept. It's like, you don't question somebody's knee because, you know, you, only Allah knows. So, like, uh, it, it was very unprofessional. And to hear that from like supposedly the senior on the panel, the senior academic that's supposed to be overseeing, I mean, it just gives you kind of an idea of, you know, what lackluster setup they're running. If that's the most yeah. wise of, of the bunch. 
That's and, right. Uh, and I really found the chair to be um, not. Uh, yeah, like I just found him not suitable for the job. He was not uh, somebody who was ready to 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 you know do this. Uh, okay. The the important question: Who won? Oh come on! Is there is there even a question there? <laughs> I thought you I thought you guys would tell us it was a knockout or something like that. Come on, man! Yeah, that no, was... you know sometimes when things are so obvious that yeah. a, a side a side point gets more priority. I mm. think that's that's what's happened here. That it's mm. just like this. This is an axiom: when there's an Islam versus atheism debate, that Islam's always going to win, like no matter what. Mm. Uh, and over here as well, you could just see, I mean, in terms of presentation, in terms of argumentation, in terms of approach, in terms of just preparation, uh, in terms of rebuttals, retaliations, mm. just in terms of everything. I would say every single round went yeah. to, to, to those guys. They simply outclassed them in every way. Um, and those guys, I think, were coming with very very weak points frankly very weak yeah was, like, it's the same old stuff it's the same old stuff brother zishan like uh, like they don't even bother to engage like islamic uh the islamic perspective or islamic dialogue on the problem of evil so they just come with christian rehashed arguments um and they don't even they just copy paste so it's like you know i actually appreciated the present the first presentation um, of what the first atheist in the black suit he had a, at least a very cohesive presentation but it's the same it doesn't like the same rehashed stuff from just christian uh, uh what, what do you call it um uh debates you know what i mean so they don't even bother um so they make they make a lot of errors and a lot of assumptions about our about our positions and then uh, the other guy i mean come on like just he didn't even do like, i swear it, i thought he like I couldn't believe my eyes when he was talking about how women are to be burned for, and this is a fiqh position, yeah, to burn women for having sex during menstruation time. That's like, and he's like, you could find this in many fiqh books. And then Brother Hijab's face <laughs> and Brother Hamza's face was just like so funny. It's, did he, like, did he give a source for that? Uh, no, fiqh? of course not. Of course not. The source is Trust Me Bro. And yeah. he's like the many fiqh books, yeah. <laughs> So I don't so know if he went to... He was one of those website. internet scholars, was he? Yeah, yeah. It came off... The, you know, he just came off a guy who looked up, like, what are the worst things in Sharia? And then, like, stumbled on possibly some Hindu. <laughs> some exactly, Hindu yeah. Mixed, yeah. yeah some and, Hindu and the Hindus Hindu get culture. it from other Islamophobes, you know. It's, it's a vicious circle, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Right, let's bring some uh, some people on board, inshallah. We got uh, 4517... Salam alaikum, bro. Are you there? Wa alaikum salam. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, yeah. Alhamdulillah. First of all, I want to say uh, Mubarak on uh, reaching 100,000 subscribers. Mubarak and Lafiq, brother. Um, Thank you. I, I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you guys in this life and the hereafter for not only inviting uh, non-Muslims to Islam, but also uh, passing on knowledge and good argumentation for Muslims to actually uh, essentially have more yakin in their own iman um certainly i think over the last four or five years I, I i've personally you know gone from being non-practicing to alhamdulillah uh practicing the best i can um yeah. and, and that's down to you know channel so uh, alhamdulillah i want to i want to thank you for that um <clears throat> may allah keep you firm on the deen and us as well uh what shall we call you brother where are you calling from uh, I'm calling from London, so you can call me Shohib. Shohib, okay. That's the S, okay. That explains yeah. it. Uh, there's that number just looks like some prisoner's number, you know, like on their badge. <laughs> we don't want to call you by that. <laughs> uh, so okay, brother, Shohib, uh, what's on your mind today? So the question I, I've got is, uh, again, I watched uh, Ustad Adnan's video that was uh, released this weekend with um, the... The Kadianis? The Guardianis, yeah. Okay. Of course, there was a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, information online that is from their side, etc. And there's a, there's a lot of arguments that they put forward. So one of the ones I've been engaging with, he said the word, um, he's, so I, I, I've used the argument uh, which the EF Dawa brothers put forward uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, which, uh, what was it? Worst 156, 157, 158, 159. Okay, and, yeah. 
peace al Islam, this and yeah. yeah. And so this brother's saying, oh no, the word rafa means uh, elevate and it means spiritual elevation, not physical elevation. So I just wanted to get your view on that first of all. And second of all, um, there's uh, a, a, another brother um, who basically said that uh, Mirza Ghulam claimed to be um, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. Uh, and he claimed to be God. And, you know, he just made all sorts of claims. And again, I just want to get an, an understanding of where uh, these sources have come from, um, because I think it's very important to reach out to uh, Ahmadis, especially ones that, you know, are told not to speak to Sunnis because we're wild and, and all the rest of it, um, just to essentially tell them that, look, you know, there's, these are from your own sources. So sort of get your understanding of, of, of which direction the Dawah should go for, for, for Qadianis. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure Brother Zishan dealt with Qadianis as well. Zishan, you want to come in? Yeah, the the thing when it comes to Qadianis that I've noticed is um, they take verses and they love talking about Isa a.s. Um, like even if you look at some of their claims, they claim that there's certain verses um, and they claim that it's it's a clear notion that Isa a.s. did not die. Yeah, actually he died. He died. So that's going to be their argument. But then the verses that they put forward um, need to be explicit in that regard. So if they're saying that, look, Isa a.s. died, then with all due respect, show us a verse in which it's mentioned the word Isa, the word died, and the word natural death. Like that's that's what we want to see. It's all well and good. They're giving us these um, obscure ayahs in which they're saying this word actually means this or this word actually means that. Not necessarily, no, I mean, uh, they, they do this with, with, with quite a few, to be honest. Um, uh, in fact, they actually add in, for example, in chapter 3, verse 144, they will say that all the messengers have passed away before him. Um, but the word all is actually not in the Quran. It's actually, it's in the translations, but it's in brackets. So um, that's that's the kind of strategy that they take when it comes to Isa, alayhi salam, but um, you ask for a strategy when, when dealing with Qadianis, the best strategy to, to kind of be engaging with them is talking about, number one, the necessity of another prophet. Like, that's the first thing. Like, do you believe that we needed another prophet? And number two, do you believe that this prophet or Nabi or whatever you want to call it, if, is Mirza Ghulam? And Mirza Ghulam Ahmed that he is somebody that is suitable to come after the Prophet. That's that's where the, the conversation, that's where the discussion should be. Uh, going into polemics uh, and going into grammatical, uh, this is what this word means, and no, Ibn Abbas said this and that, we know their games. yeah, And, and they do this quite often, and they do it with, with actually a few verses. But uh, like when it comes to khalat, yeah, um, you probably heard this as well. It, it's the same again, but we, we just look at other verses of the Quran where that word is used, and uh, it's not going to be according to how they say. They they take, even if it's like a um, obscure opinion or a a solitary kind of view regarding the translation of a specific verse, and then they're just going to roll with that. So the conversation actually needs to be that: Do you believe that the religion was incomplete? And do you believe that Mirza Ghulam is the person that came to kind of complete it? They will say, no, 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 it was completed at the time of the Prophet. Mirza Ghulam just came and da, 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 da. Okay, so what, is, is he suitable for that role? Let's, let's deal with this discussion. And then when you actually look at some of the, the, the sort of stuff that he's mentioned, I think it's quite problematic, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, like when we, for example, looking, I've just got like a, a couple of quotes here. Mirza says, I am neither, like when we're dealing with somebody who claims to be a Nabi, yeah, is this, you? T I mean, you, you can tell me yourself, like, would a Nabi say, I am neither the insect nor son of man, I am the place of embarrassment on the place of man, yeah, the, the place of embarrassment on the place of man is either the front or the back, and that's not really, it's not befitting language. Mm. Uh, of, of a Nabi, frankly. And then he goes on to say he would go to toilet a hundred times a day. 
Yeah, that's that's uh, every fifteen minutes. Like again, is this befitting of of a prophet? And you might be thinking, look, we're good. okay. In another place, the guy goes, God addressed him as Maryam. Then he became pregnant. Then he started getting labor pains. And this is Rohani Khazain, volume 19, page 48. Yeah, now just let this, this is a whole video in itself. This is a whole argument in itself. And I've engaged with Qadianis. Yeah. And they will say, no, no, it it's actually means this. I'm sorry, but when you're saying that God called me Maryam, then I became pregnant. Then I started getting labor pains. That's problematic. Mm. That's just problematic. Like, uh, I, just, <laughs> I mean, how how do you navigate around that, frankly? You know what I mean? Like that. He, he was way way before the gender wars. You know, I, like I, I was, <laughs> he excelled them all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, brother Sherb, I think your question has been answered in that video by brother Adnan. Is it not about it's, the Rafa? It certainly has. Uh... Okay. So let's not dwell on something that's already been. Uh, at, because the thing, look, it's it's obvious when Allah says in chapter 4, 157, that he's neither crucified nor killed. Okay. How can you link that statement with just raising his status or something like that? You know, it, it's just mind boggling. The, the word gymnastics, they have to play in order to fit yeah. their... Mirza, you know, into the into this equation, so it, it's it's just desperation, I would say. Absolutely, Jazakallah, uh, Jazakallah, her for your time, brothers, and uh, wish you best uh, in this life and best in the hereafter. Salam alaikum. Amen. Take care, brother. Salam right, I think Ismail is having some issues with his connection, so we'll take on the first person. Oh, he's back. Are you okay, Ismail? Everything, everything good? Yeah, here? sorry. Good. Yeah, my uh, unfortunately, uh, Cambridge is not the best with, with the regard. Okay, we get the message. <laughs> Cambridge is not the best when it comes to boat races. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, that's okay. Smile, uh, we cannot hear you because your your connection is not that good now. All right, so I'm going to bring in Faizuddin Baig. Assalamu bro. Are you there? You need to unmute yourself. Walaikum salam. Walaikum salam. Uh, Alhamdulillah, you've reached 100,000 subscribers. Um, Where are you joining from? Just great. Um, I have a few questions though, if I may. Yeah. Sorry, before, Faiz, before you go on, where are you joining from? Can you hear me? I don't think you can hear us. We can hear you. Um, Guyana in South America. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Good. Uh, yeah, go yeah, ahead. I, I what's, what's the question? I'm in, um, Guy I'm in Guyana. Um, it's a country in South America. Okay. Yeah. Good, Good to have you on board, yeah? Yeah. So, right. I've been... Um, there was a video I saw that there was... Um, it was explaining that uh, that like it was posted on August sixth. It was saying that um, scientists were. St I don't know if it's true. That's why I'm asking, right? Um, it mm -hmm. was saying that uh, the the I I forgot the name of it, but um, the rotation of Mars has changed and now the sun rises from the west. That scientists recently discovered that. I don't know about it. Um, it says that it's a natural thing or something. I'm not sure. But it's supposedly Earth is next for the um, rotation to change. So I'm not sure about that. So, you know, before you actually ask a question like that, should you not have researched it yourself into, instead of saying, I'm not sure? You know, when they talk about Mars or any other planet where the rotation has changed, should you not have gone and asked them to show me the source where you got this from, then done a bit of research, whether the, the news that you heard is actually true, and then ask your question. So this is the way the Muslims are taught, you know, when Allah says in the Quran that we have to ask, we have to verify, um, and it is something which is the sunnah of the Prophet as well. So we should all adopt the same 
nature where we have to verify the news that we receive. And in this day of social media, you know, there's a lot of fake news out there. Uh, I'm not saying what you heard is fake. All I'm asking is, have you verified it? Face, are you there? No. Okay. Yeah, um, I said no. I didn't um, verify it. Right. Yeah, so brother, but that's do you the first see, thing you need to yeah. do. Do you see um, also another problem that you face? There also... There's another yeah, problem with the face because because when we don't when we don't verify, and we just like any headline we see, we start spreading it and we start spreading it on public platforms and live streams and stuff. Then you know there are other people who are listening who might not care or might not um, what's it called do their own research, and then you could possibly have destabilized the way they see things or spread, uh, and, you know, accidentally, you could have spread misinformation to them. And then they could, pause, because they're not critical, then they will go spread that to somebody else and spread that to somebody else. So we should also be careful when we ask questions. We shouldn't just, you know, oh, my friend said this, so I'm going to go and ask it publicly on another thing. Like, you should verify things, especially when it's a public platform, when there's other people watching, other people listening just so that you don't plant seeds of, uh, of falsehood, of false news, or, you know, because then this is how misinformation spreads. Because, because look now, brother, you, you don't really know the details of what you read, but then you said a, a sentence that's very, like, shocking. And then people might walk away from that, and then next time they see their friends, they're going to be like, oh, did you know the sun is rising from the west? And this could all be false, but now we've just started a chain of, of falsehood that could mess with people's heads and the way they see the universe. But yeah, that's yeah. all I'd say. So this is, uh, if you if you read Surat Al-Hujarat, uh, chapter 49, uh, this is in verse 6, Allah says, O you who have believed, if there comes to you a disobedient one, a fasik, uh, with information, investigate, lest you harm people out of ignorance and become over what you have done regretful. So yeah, this is what uh, Brother Ismail was saying. So how, how old are you, Face? if you don't mind me asking? Um, Alhamdulillah, I've lived, um, I'm, now, I'm, I'm 13 years old. I'll be, I'm turning 14 in uh, December. 13 years um, old, okay. Yeah. Right. So okay, apologies. I was a bit too a bit too harsh. If you're 13, I thought you're like at least 20. <laughs> right. Sorry about that, brother. I think you were harsh for no, even no. a 20 year old. Ismail, calm down. Oh, okay, <laughs> but, but I've also <laughs> just, kidding, just kidding. Yeah. So, face. Look, I think you should you should follow the principle I've, I've of verification. Like, um, whether look even for even are for no reason kind of just like hate. yeah. So they're trying to water down the miracles. Yeah. Or the signs uh, of the Yom al yes, I think you were you were referring to the sun rising from the west uh, as a as a great miracle or a great sign of the day of judgment. Am I right? Are you there, face? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I it's. Believe. I think it's. I don't know what. Yeah, to, I believe so. I don't know what groups you hang around with. But I would suggest you stay away from any atheists or any Islamophobes out there who, whom you might be on Discord or might be on some other places where you can have these private chats. They fill your mind with all this junk. So keep company that is good, okay? Otherwise, it drops on you. And this is something yeah, I would advise you at, at a young age as yourself. Yeah, I understand it's, that. Oh. Yeah. Brother Zishan, you want to give some advice I, to our I've, young um, followers? I also have one more thing because I don't understand why. Yeah, just just before you go to, to that, bro. Yeah. Um, the, I, the story has been um, debunked, so um, uh, I think now Twitter has got a really important feature called community notes. So when stories like this do get shared underneath um, such stories, you'll see community notes, and they do typically. Um, you know, clarify if it's fake news or not. This is one of those things. Um, the AFP fact check has confirmed that it's, it's false. So understand, I mean, you, you are young. 
like we've established, just bear in mind that the, the internet, especially when it comes to social media, is not the most accurate and the most uh, objective or truthful that it should be. A lot of people want their posts or their pages to be clicked. So there's clickbaity headlines and sometimes reading this, the, um, the article, seeing where the information is coming from is very important. Don't just go for, okay, the titles of the videos, the titles of the headlines. And um, yeah, just, just bear that in mind. Just bear that in mind, inshallah, bro. And um, yeah, like the brother said, um, just be cautious. Yeah. So I think it'll be best you spend your valuable time with Muslims. Ask the scholars in your in your community, people of knowledge, sit with them. And it's a good thing, actually, you came and asked this uh, doubt or something. But I think it's a company that matters. So if you value your deen, if you value your, your iman, I suggest you not associate yourself in any way, shape or form with these online creatures, I would call them, you know, because they are there uh, who are doing the bidding of the shaitan. Yeah, they are the foot soldiers of the shaitan. They want to take you away from your deen and drag them, drag them um, themselves and yourself to Jahannam. Is that what you want? No. Yeah. How how is your how is your practice of your deen? Do you pray? Do you read the Quran? How is your daily practice in yeah. terms of the Quran? Well, oh. well no? I usually uh pray Fajr in the morning. Um on and I help my parents. Uh, we have a small business. Um I help them during the day, like to sell right. and so on. Okay. Yeah, um Alhamdulillah, I got to pray. Um, yeah, I just um, I just wanted to, you know, clarify. I don't understand why people hate the religion. It's a nice religion because, like, the, right. the Arabic language is so nice and everything. Because, like, persons, for no reason, like, they, they hate, like, they, they, they say that um, wearing the hijab, like, locks you up and they disrespect and take it off and call it freedom whereas it is the uh, muslim girl's choice to wear the hijab it's a part of the religion i don't understand this uh, for some how um not accepting someone's opinion is possibly them it's their choice they want to wear the hijab how is it freedom just because like it's nowadays some people just don't make sense and put thought into what they see right okay uh, yeah, I mean, you're young, so, you know, <laughs> mashallah, you're, you're already passionate about your deen. Alhamdulillah, you pray Fajr, which is more than I can say for many of the Muslim women out there. So I'm assuming your parents have given you good tarbiyah, have given you a good, uh, uh, I mean, knowledge about the deen, the fact that you, because prayer is everything. To me, I judge a person based on how they perform the salah. If they are missing the salah, it just shows that they are not really serious about the deen because that is the first thing you'll be questioned in your in your grave as well so if you're not taking your salah seriously and you're calling yourself a muslim then you need to recheck your iman recheck your deen right i'm going to bring in a special guest here uh, we got uh, the lion in the den here L Hamza. lion in the shop <laughs> 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 well, that's what you call your den nowadays. Assalamualaikum, uh, <laughs> brother Hamza. How are you doing, bro? You're right. Assalamualaikum, boys. How you doing, man? Alhamdulillah. Nice of you to uh, to drop in. Yeah, I was just just doing a quick shop stream, and then people were saying, "Oh, Dawah is alive, doing a hundred k celebration." I was like, "Oh, mashallah." So I thought this. Is, I thought I'd just pop in. Just yeah, what are you doing on a Thursday? Doing live stream. This is our slot, bro. <laughs> it's shop live. Shop live. So like. Yeah, um, or is it like any time? I show my shop. Man. Oh, mashallah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, so, so I do a shop live, um, yeah. usually on a Wednesday when I'm in the shop. Right. Well, because my missus is away, I'm working in the shop every day. So I've just been doing lives just to pass the time. But I just <laughs> Where is it, bro? Boys, man. Alhamdulillah, mash, 100K. Alhamdulillah, yes. Where, where's the shop, bro? It's in Ilford. Ilford, yeah. East, East, East London. Come on. <laughs> 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 right, brother, brother Faiz, uh, we're going to say assalamu alaikum to you. But um, hopefully, if you got any questions, you can always email us. Um, Dawahwise at gmail.com is just on the bottom right corner there. And as I said, you know, 
just associate yourself with good Muslims, inshallah, you should be able to find the answers to most of your questions. If not, drop us a, uh, an email, inshallah. Okay? You okay. Take care, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Right, Hamza, what's on your mind, bro? I just 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 con congratulate you boys, man. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> nice so of you. <laughs> so nice to see that you'd reached the hundred k. Mashallah. Like I said, I was um, I was remember when I first saw Mansoor in the park back in the day, Muslim archives and all that, and then you were with yeah. SC Dawa, and then you started your sales, and Mashallah, hundred k. Alhamdulillah. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. To see you, bro. Yeah. May Allah accept from us all. Oh, thank you very much. And you, you're going to do uh, a celebratory appearance on the arena tomorrow. Right? Tomorrow. That's a celebration. Oh yeah. Yeah, we are live. Yeah, we are live. Yeah, the whole, whole you, um, Mansour, Mansour, and Brother Ismail, inshallah. Yeah, sorry, I'm not, I don't want to mess up your program. I just no, no, it's okay. You're more than welcome, bro. You. More than welcome, inshallah. You know, I, I would have told that kid to stop whinging, so that's you see, it's not my <laughs> <laughs> honestly, seriously. What are you going on about, for God's sake? You probably yeah. paid Power Rangers two years ago, and now all of a sudden you're talking about me, anyway, bro. Tell me with this internet, you know, I feel sorry for these young kids. You know, they are yeah. they're just thrown into the deep, you know, from a very early age. Yeah. I I think that's they need they need some sort of mentor, you know, they need some mm -hmm. some connection with people who can guide them rather than just being left alone to these wolves online, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Salam alaikum, brother Muhammad. How are you doing? Hey. Walaikum salam, brothers. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Alaikum. 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 Alhamdulillah. Yeah, sorry so, for being late. Uh, it is a working day okay. for me, and uh, I, I've literally just finished working two minutes ago. That's okay. Um, it's all right, I oh, me. great to see Brother Hamza here. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm just I'm just jumping off now, actually. Um, but I, I just yeah, no, actually, well, I, I couldn't let your life I pass it well. And Zishan, Alhamdulillah. We, we need your we need you in the arena as well, inshallah. So we have just to drop me a message, bro. Anytime. Definitely. Really enjoyed you. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. All right. Salam alaikum. All right. It's from the same chat that was well, in my shop. Anyway, salam alaikum. Well, salam. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Take right. care, brother Hamza. Salam alaikum. Take care. Right, uh, Ismail, your internet has improved, mashallah. That's good to know. Uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Oh, I think uh, taking off the camera for a little while helped, maybe. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah, sometimes you just have to exit and come back. Right, brother yeah. Muhammad, how are you doing? You okay? Alhamdulillah, I'm well, yes, uh, busy uh, with uh, 101 things as always, but uh, yeah. Alhamdulillah, we've reached a, a milestone, and um, I think it was uh, just over a year ago that we reached the 50k milestone. Yes, um, yes, I think, that's right. Um, was it last June July, or something? Yeah, July, okay. last June or July, I think it was, yes. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm, you know, what can I say, Alhamdulillah, and... Um, Brother Zishan, uh, your advice was very, very timely, by the way. You remember after our 50K, you gave us some very good advice on how to uh, build up the channel, and we, we followed it to the T, alhamdulillah. And so it's been very beneficial. Um, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. And I'm glad this is, I think this is what we need to do. We help each other. We help each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Talking of helping uh, each other, uh, Ismail, uh, it might be worth trying something. Are you on Wi-Fi mm -hmm. at the moment? I am not. I'm hot spotting. Um, unfortunately, Wi-Fi in my place is not um, uh, working okay. at the moment. So that's okay. why. That's that's what I was going to recommend for you to hotspot. That's the problem. Uh, maybe yeah. somebody else has got like a better package or um, another network. But maybe. Yeah. So yeah. I figured, figured out. So when I when I was in London, Cambridge, uh, Vodafone was great. Like I always got four bars. However, when I moved here. In Cambridge, uh, Vodafone does not get four bars, unfortunately. So I need, either need to switch providers or um, yeah. I don't know. I, I'll probably just figure out a better place um, to to do the live stream and show. Yeah. Depending on your phone, you can it's have two SIMs. Now, you, know? you can have an e SIM as a temporary when you're, you know, when you're mm. yeah. <laughs> live streaming, inshallah. <laughs> but we'll let you know that later. Right. Let's bring in another caller. Um, we got. Uh, Zainal Abidin, you want to keep your camera on? I'm going to bring you in next, yeah? Right, I think he wants to keep his camera on. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, brothers? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Where are you jogging? Alhamdulillah. 
Uh, I'm going to play football actually. Good yeah. to see you. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm. A, so, yeah, yeah, thanks. I'm in High Wycombe actually from okay. UK. So, yeah. Right. Make sure you uh, score some goals. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like to play defender actually. <laughs> I don't score Defense? that much to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you stop those goals. <laughs> I will do. I will do. That's on me. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So basically, I would say congratulations on your hundred k. On this and hopefully you will get more followers and more subscribers that's uh, that's a good channel and uh follow my experience i mean i've been i mean i started recently watching you guys like most of you and other other brothers as well like hamza like like uh, muhammad ali like i'm watching those videos and and i'm algerian okay i'm algerian i've been here in the uk for 10 years so I have one question, like I want an opinion it's not it's not really a question so what do you think about كتاب تفسير القرآن للجلالين جلالين يا إيش التفسير الجلالين يا كتاب تفسير so I want just to know yeah I want your opinion about it because I I like like I asked my uncle that actually this morning right and he's he's back in Algeria and he's like so he asked an imam asked because I'm interested in reading more about تفسير okay so I read the Quran. I know Arabic. I you know, so I've been I've been reading the Quran all my life, but I've never been. Uh, but I've never digged into it. If you got my if you got my my point. So when I told him, he said he told me that the Imam's advice, if you read this book because it's simple. Okay. So I want just your opinions as well about this book. You go. I mean, so I don't want like to follow something like wrong or something. Let's say. Let's say it's not. I'd say that something that the 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 our scholars do not agree on. Yeah. So Jalalain is actually a legit uh, tafsir. It's something that the, our scholars do agree upon. But you know, like every tafsir, you will have certain things which the ulama's, you know, when they look at the the hadith and they try to see if what the tafsir says is it it actually is in sync with the Quran and the Hadith, many times they might just give their opinion or many times it might be an Israel yet source. So it's it's not something that you just sit down, open the tafsir, read by yourself and then come to a, a conclusion. Reading the Quran, even reading the Hadith is something that should be done in the company of a scholar, in the company of a teacher. Yes, because they have a background in which they can impart the knowledge to you, uh, a, a more holistic knowledge rather than just you reading a particular ayah, a particular hadith or, or tafsir itself. So every tafsir obviously is written by men. Men are susceptible to mistakes and we have to obviously read this um, with some mentor, with a scholar who can help us. So you can't just go about and reading by yourself and come to conclusion because then you'll open another tafsir and you see something is on on face value, it might be contradictory and then you will get confused. So it's always good to read it along with a scholar, along with an alim. There are many videos out there which actually explain the tafsir of the, of the ayats. So, you know, research them. But yeah, Jalalin is, is a legitimate tafsir, yes. Okay, lovely. Lovely. Thank you so much, then. Barakallahu yeah. fikum. Jazakallahu khairan. Jazakallahu khairan. Go. Shukran. Shukran jazeen. Go save some goals. Go save some goals. I ah, will do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Yeah, Jalalin is a very short. Sometimes it's just to the point. Sometimes it just repeats the ayats. You know, I've seen the Jalalin tafsir. It's not, um, it doesn't go much into depth. Uh, maybe sometimes it does. But from what I've seen, it's, it's, Quite a simple, straightforward tafsir. Right, so we got uh, Ajay Rator wanted to ask some questions. Let's see what he's got on this time. Hello there, Ajay. You all right? Everyone. Yeah, I'm fine. How are you all? Yeah, we are good. We are good. Okay. So I have some question and uh, I want to clarify also on your one of the reel you posted on your channel just a yeah. few days ago about Shiv, Shiv and Mohini. Yeah. Right? And, and uh, I want to clarify that if you give me just two, three minutes to put my okay. point. So before you clarify, tell us what is the contention and then clarify it. What is the? 
what is your ob objection what is the contention yeah, that my objection yeah my objection yeah. is that that reel gave a misleading message or it tried to present that give an impression that shivji was a, such a lustful man and he was influenced just by a woman who was who was roaming around her so and it was looking it was out of context from the whole chapter so i want to clarify that okay go on clarify it yeah so first of all the chap the the real mention that she went mohini and the mohini was a girl where she she was roaming around the shivji and she was influenced by her so much that he got he got lustful desires and ran after her in the sense like even like elephants ran uh, uh, like around the she female elephants so it gives an impression that Sh shivji is just a lustful man who can be easily influenced by a even a normal woman like mohini but the chapter when you read the chapter 12 chapter it gives it tells us that the full context tells us that that was the vishnu who took the mohini avatar and the shiv asked vishnu to took that he wanted to see the his highest form of maya in the form like the mohini was able to even influence the everyone in the every mortal being in the universe so shivji gave ask the vishnu to give him the form of the mohini so he can so see that and when the we read the purans even the mahabharat like itihas tells us that the purans are the stories which gives us the some moral values and moral lessons and the same chapter the same chapter 12th chapter gives the morality and the teaching which we have to understand understand by this whole story and i can quote you even the references i have with me now i got the reference mentioned so if you yeah. watch the full video the reference is given is from shrimad bhagavatam yeah yeah okay so we have but the reference was, we gave the re you know when you look when you watch a reel on our channel on dawwise hmm. we always put the link for the full video in the description of yeah. the video so hmm. any any shorts any reels that we post we always post hmm. the full videos link to okay so do not judge a reel just by those 60 seconds go and see no but because we actually give context is, so for you to say we didn't give context is is a bit unfair no, by you just watching a 60 second because the headline was your headline of your reel was the disgusting rape in hinduism and then it gives the impression that she raped mohinian like this so i want to clarify that and i can quote you exact reference okay. where it was not about raping a woman or something like that not just a okay first and foremost desire. first and foremost yeah. Who was Mohini? Mohini was the illusionary energy of Vishnu. In the same chapter, was mentioned she, it. Was she a real woman? Yeah, she was not a real woman in the sense like normal woman. She was just the Maya, and the the every form of the Maya divine has the divine qualities in it. You can't say that he was a she was a normal hum, human like female around us. She was okay, not normal. So, so why did Shiva get attracted to mm. her if she wasn't real? Yeah, first of all, I just told you that this, when you go to the last ending of the same Purana, Shrimad Bhagavatam, where, from where you quoted this reference, the chapter it's chapter 12 says that these are the just stories to give the more moral lessons. And I can quote you the direct reference from this no, chapter no, where it was you, said wait, that... Wait, before you give us the moral yeah. lesson, the question that I asked you, you haven't answered. Did Shiva mm -hmm. get attracted by this woman who was seducing him? Did he get attracted yeah. by her? He did. That's what, what I'm telling. No, no, he didn't because the he what I'm not. telling you is that okay. these are these are the stories which I'll tell you, you what. Have, to have you got take into... have you got the book? Have you got the book on you? Yeah, the yeah. Can you read? Can you read yeah, yeah. that that particular passage? Okay. And you tell us whether yeah, according to the book he got attracted or not. Hmm. Okay, because okay. you said he did not get attracted. Remember this. Now, if no, the book I says something. Other than what you are saying, then you will be the one who is being insincere, not the real. Okay. Do we agree? So here is the so uh, the thing here is that if I you accept the full chapter, okay. Well, you can read the full chapter when if I, when you I want. But I want yeah. I want to focus on the question which I ask: Did Shiva get hmm. attracted by this seductress called Mohini? That was the question. Yeah. You said no. Am I right? I. Uh, let me clarify. I told no, no. that no, in no. First, reality, yeah. First, tell us, did he get okay, attracted or not? Okay, go. Ahead. Yeah, in this, in this story, 
when you are quoting a particular story he was attracted but then Good. i told you that these puran now you made a u turn story, very quickly no no let me clarify i told you that that he was attracted in the story but in reality these are just the stories shiva won't can't attract won't attract to any such what no, do you mean just stories moment. i don't understand what, either either Because, whatever story yeah. that has been mentioned here in shrimad bhagavatam and this is mm-hmm. in canto 8 uh, chapter 8 yeah, verse 8, 12 8, i believe yeah 12. yeah yeah Text 8, 12 26 to 31 mm-hmm. so we got the yeah, reference yeah. here okay mm-hmm. do you mm-hmm. want to read that reference yeah, from from 26 to 31 just read it to us and tell us yeah, whether yeah, you learn any moral lessons yeah. from that okay Be- no. the moral lesson in the uh, is in the after the verse is 36 yeah. so i so have to read, pro- read properly full chapter full. no problem you, okay. you can read up to 36 okay, okay. no problem but read from 26 so, onwards okay so i have with me hindi i will translate in english too just say it okay. in english from, if I, you have I, it in english okay 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 i'm from so 21 audience are english speaking yes okay yeah go ahead okay so i the verse is it long i will paraphrase 26. in short you you yeah. Uh, yeah, you will get the yeah from 26 okay yeah 26 yeah yeah mm, that that girl was was the naked and when he when she saw the shiv shivji she was very what lajji she was mm, Okay, I'll I tell you what. Translate the legit, legit no, no problem. In... Listen, I'll I'll translate. I've got the translation here, and this is by mm. by Prabhu Pada books. So I, I believe yeah. it's from the Hari Krishnas, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is what he says. This is in the same reference, Shrimad Bhagavatam, uh, chapter eight. Uh, sorry, uh, Canto eight, chapter twelve, text twenty six mm. to thirty one. He says here the beautiful yeah. woman was already naked. and mm. when she saw lord shiva coming towards her she mm. became extremely bashful thus she kept yeah. smiling but she hid herself yeah, she among hid. the trees and did not stand yeah. in one place his senses being mm-hmm. agitated lord shiva victimized by lusty desires began to follow mm-hmm. her just as a lusty elephant follows her follows a she elephant yeah is it good so far okay you agree yeah. with the translation okay yeah i agree good and then it goes on to say after following her with great speed lord shiva caught mm. her by the braid of her hair and dragged her near yeah. him although she was unwilling he embraced her with his arms being embraced mm. by lord shiva like a female elephant embraced by a male the woman whose hair mm. was scattered swelled like a snake yeah oh king mm. this woman who had large high hips was a woman of yoga mm. was it yoga amya is that right Mm-hmm. Pre- presented yeah. by the supreme personality of godhead she released mm-hmm. herself somehow or other from the fond embrace of lord shiva lord shiva's mm-hmm. arms and ran away as if harassed yeah. by an enemy in the form of lusty desires lord shiva followed mm-hmm. the part of lord vishnu who acts very mm-hmm. wonderfully and who had taken the form of mohini okay Yeah. Was there anything so, mistranslated so, here? Because this is by the Hindus, not by the Muslims. Yeah. The yeah problem here is not mistranslation. I have to read the pro- next verse too. Now should I? Yes, yes. Read that? But I want to know if you if you yeah. agree so far. I just wanted to know that. No, I I am agreeing with the story. Whatever story mentions, I agree. Now I have to clarify it. Okay. Yeah. So, so I am reading. Do you want um, to clarify up to here before we go further? You. when you read the prop- full chapter then you will get what it's talking about if you quote just three verses then it will just send a distorted message that was my objection okay it wasn't just three i've read quite a bit no, but if you want was, me to you read, just, yeah if you want me to read will, further let me i can no problem yeah i i can read should i yeah go ahead if no. you want why don't you just yeah, tell yeah. us instead of having us read for no reason why, why don't you tell us what we're really missing He's and then show it to us no let me let okay. let me complete you know what he's doing you know, you know what you're doing you're doing the the read the read and hope and pray no, you're no. hoping and praying that there's something in there that could obfuscate what's no, clearly no. in the in the Just text listen. earlier that's all you're doing no bro no no okay. not something i i will give you proper reference then you can ask me question i've given you so the reference let me already do. okay let me complete yeah, it I will. yeah let me complete it because i think you're going to take quite a while so This I've okay. read up to thirty thirty one. Let me read thirty two now. Thirty mm-hmm. two. Yeah. 
32 okay yeah i've read up to 31 right so 32 it says just mm. as a maiden bull elephant follows a female elephant who is able to conceive pregnancy lord shiva followed the beautiful woman and discharged semen even though his discharge mm. of semen never goes in vain okay oh king yeah. wheresoever on the surface of the globe fell the semen of the great mm. personality of lord shiva mines of gold silver yeah. later appeared okay you want me to carry on yeah okay. i i can read if you allow me Yeah, go ahead if you want to read it. Yeah. Okay, ha. Okay. So here we go to the thirty-nine verse. Here, you, Vishnu. You're going straight to thirty-nine because Vishnu. I haven't read. Because okay, these verses are telling about the same thing. Yeah, thirty-nine says Vishnu says that. Uh, should I read in Hindi or just direct English? No, in, in English. Yeah. Okay, okay. So here Vishnu is telling Shivji that no one in the world can. get out of the influence of maya because the mohini avatar was, was the leela of vishnu himself and this was just uh, just i told you starting the morality lessons and here vishnu is telling shivji that no one in the world mortal being can get out of this maya but shivji who himself he was influenced and he got out from that maya himself because he was he is the he is the he got the control over the senses and these things now i'm no, done i'm not. going to work No, no, wait, wait, wait. He no, did not. Me... He dropped his semen. Come on, he yeah, was yeah, attracted let, let... to her to the point where he had to drop his semen. No, no, no. How can let you say no? I... How can you say no? He wasn't attracted no. to the woman. He was. He was attracted. Just let. Her. Yeah, he was attracted. Just let me complete first. Okay. What is he okay. to complete? Yeah. Hmm. So here, in the next verse, Vishnu is telling that that this is my lila. Like we have the concept of lila, where the different things are explained in a way of story, where these things may not might not happen in real life, but these are the moral lessons which are given to human beings to indulge in something or not. In the last, in now I am going to the verse forty, where he says, wait, "This wait, is wait, my wait, the bahiranga shakti maya." You are just reading. You are just reading like a robot. You need to understand what is the moral lesson yeah. you get from a god being seduced by another goddess or god. Yeah. What is the moral okay, lesson? So you, are you? Yeah. So can you please? Can you res- no, no. Can you can you respond without reading from the book? Respond mm-hmm. because yeah, the, we all been given common is, sense. Yeah. So use okay, your okay. common sense and so tell me what is the moral hmm. lesson for one god. lusting after another god who is in the form of a seductress mm-hmm. and who is naked like a, a naked woman and this mm-hmm. god yeah, okay. drops his semen which somehow turns into gold and silver i mean what is yeah. the moral lesson here i still don't understand yeah let, uh, i'm answering the moral lesson here is that when according to story when we sh- she ran around them with on the behind the mohini the mohini went to the places where there were the siddhas and the yogis living and even the many siddhas rishis were doing the tapasya and the they they were bewildered to see that she was running behind a woman and did give the moral lesson in the last chapter explains that every mortal being can, thinks himself as the superior that he can control and won't get in the trouble of lusty desire and the, the senses here the this leela is trying to explain that even when the shiv who is the, considered as the god you can say god the devta in the hinduism he is also influenced by the maya of vishnu the maya of god the let are alone saying, leave the mortal shiv, beings are you saying shiva is mortal or immortal which no. one is it shiva if you consider the shiva the three dev then he is mortal he just he appears and disappears at the every cycle of creation the, the same chapter last verse is, explains are you that, saying he dies so, yeah is that what you mean mortal means he dies but i want to say i want to die it just appearing and disappearing like dissolving and recreation i want to say that i still don't see the moral lesson honestly why would I just why would a god why would a god okay display nudity in order to teach someone some moral lesson okay. you're you're yeah. saying the yeah. the god somehow demonstrates immorality to no, no. teach a moral lesson it's crazy i am saying yeah no i am saying this if you go to the last chapter of this the puran it explains that whatever stories mentioned in this puran are just the stories it didn't happen in reality so you friend, are, if you are stories, taking it in the stories which yeah. demonstrate that gods are lusty hmm. okay they have Not, it, desires like animals like the case of the elephant and a female elephant that is hmm. not a good thing my friend especially for a god let alone a A common man. 
i am i am giving you a reference where it the same chapter if you go in the verses it says that this is this is due, due to demonstrate that everyone can get influenced that maya of the mohini the mohini is not a normal human like female if you say if you comparing it it with the same girl like he is, she is just we are a, if it's not a normal yeah. human being then how is that relevant for us surely for us the best lesson would be if oh. it was a normal human being so using something no, that, in fact i think that's deceptive as well that if you've got then yeah, the yeah it's it's relevant for us firstly because... firstly just let me finish here so let's just say you've okay. got the avatar of vishnu now vishnu i'm sure mm. you'll agree is a, is a male so he's coming down as a female to seduce another god and then the other god gets seduced and then we're hearing you know um this this imagery there's this imagery of elephants mm. mating and this do you think that this is something that's appropriate for all ages mm. that's my first question yeah first of all if you considering it as that's why i told you that these are the stories and the same chapter explains that this is to demonstrate the the siddhas and the tapasya who are doing the rishi muni tapasya i i got your point to my, tell my them that is, is it suitable for mm. people of all ages yeah to yeah it is suitable for all ages because in our hinduism the first our enemy is told that lust is our the enemy the calm and then we saw the gr- greed and anger the first of all is the lust we have to control that and so, this story so give the yeah okay so you think uh, yeah. stories about lust and two people having you know um, being attracted like elephants that's something appropriate for a 7 no, no. year old child no not no it's not like having elephant like this it is the story when we teach this purans to the people students in the brahmacharya the first we tell them that you have to control the sensory organs and the desire that this story tells that even the mortal humans like human will be in the trap of lust and lust kind yeah, of thing like think, she so just a point, he himself there's yeah. a point brother zishan is yeah. saying if they are not normal human shiva is not a normal human mm-hmm. vishnu is not a normal mm-hmm. human mohini is not a normal human so if the yeah. message is for normal humans this is gods mm-hmm. behaving badly not humans behaving badly no i told and, you that and i don't the, think look, this is true then you read the book whether just, whether just let me clarify about lust just a little I mean, bit yeah no, i think the, the point about lust that's not suitable for mm-hmm. a 7 6 year old child you, 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 i'm sorry yeah. you cannot be discussing this in front of a minor look, um it this is something no, that all, needs to be that needs to be spoken to when it comes to people that have gone through puberty and the way that passage was read i mean even objectively mm. you can see that that's not suitable for children i i just want to make sure that okay. you know we are on okay, the same let page me here. yeah first, first of all i am not saying that you have, you will tell this story to a six old child because in our hinduism we, are, we have this brahmacharya where it, it starts between the like at the age of 12 and that it goes to the around the puberty and we reach when we reach the adulthood this is the time when the stories of the purans which give the moralities are taught to children where they have to understand the gist of the story and the message around it like this even when you open the 8, 12th chapter of this okay is so stand, now now you're saying that, it's not suitable for children because earlier when zishan asked you you look, said it was suitable for children make up your mind was, look, ajay come on yeah it i am telling you that there is a time when we give the even the sex education is given to not a 6 year child we tell them that so say so that this. when zishan asked you is so, it suitable for children mm-hmm. that is when you should have said this that this is for 12 plus look, because when you reach the when you teach the children religious things they, this is not just the one puran we, we have that you have to just to tell them these things they are the geeta and these kind of we have to start we have to start them give the religious education and when they reach the time of adulthood and puberty then we will impart them this knowledge that this is the gist and this is the conclusion of the story where you have to understand the puran in the this sense because mahabharat explains that these are just the stories because even when you open the shiv puran it mentions that shiv is not even influenced by the you can say the emotions because he even burned the calm there the lust pull the lust of the controller it doesn't matter it so doesn't matter he, yeah so it is if just you, the story you have to take you, in that sense you can't you keep, want you keep to saying it's just a reality. story ajay you keep saying because it's, it's, a, it's story, a rule but the story the whole yeah. purpose of the story is to impart some mm-hmm. moral lesson what we see here yeah. is immoral lesson that shiva even though he's But being how? he's being a devta he oh. still mm-hmm. fallen for the seductress mohini okay yeah, until the end no until, until the end no, no, realizes no. first yeah. of all you have to understand this that devtas are in the maya okay so maya is the 
you can see the illusionary energy or of the god that even devtas are in in the control of that and the devtas are they do they have they have the stories around them which tells us that not to indulge in these things you want you can't say that it happened in reality where she was running around the mohini because even the same puran says that these are just stories so it is the from the same chapter Ajay. which is saying that these are stories. i'm not telling my own point okay yeah. Okay, yeah. Mah- Mahamud. So I've been listening to this again. I don't know much about these stories. I think Hashim is much more educated in this stuff than I am. But uh, I'm curious. You say these are just mm-hmm. stories. So are they stories yeah. that are made up, or are they stories that never really happened in reality? What do you mean when you say they're yeah, stories? Yeah. yeah. When I say that these are stories, it means that these things didn't happen in reality these are just the like you can say some uh, we have to teach them some some someone the moral, moral lesson and such important things then we you can say we were we were story around the topic and then we make it the properly properly in, look you can say the properly effective so that it can reach the mind and affect the brain of people so listening it. Up, so yeah. when you yeah these are just yeah, the well, major because the same it. puran yeah. says it not i'm okay. saying the same puran says that these are just to impart the morality to the people and the same chapter also say that vishnu is telling that even the normal human pe- beings are in the influence of maya and lust but the if shiv ji who is considered devta is also in the uh, it, so it's just a story to give a moral lesson ajay ajay if you have kids they do actually yeah i happen yeah so if you say if you're saying these stories are mm-hmm. never really happened and they're yeah. simply there to deliver a message Because, then no, what is i'm not saying what i am saying no just i want to clarify i am not saying this this the same puran says this next chapter it's not my own opinion the same puran is no, saying no, that yeah, these no, are just the stories exactly so, yeah. so according to your scripture your scripture itself mm-hmm. is saying these are just stories they never really happened yeah. and yeah. you are to take some kind of lesson from it so mm-hmm. how do you know what is true in your scripture like really happened and how yeah. do you know what yeah, didn't happen answer. yeah we have we have the categories of scripture where it is the mahabharat like itihas which is which is translated in english as a history so mahabharat contains the events which happened in the reality you can say the the events of ram ram going to lanka and even the killing the ravan and these kind of krishna krishna and mahabharat these things happened in reality and these are recording in the mahabharat but when you open the puran the same mahabharat says that these purans are the separate categories to give the moral lesson so you can't quote a puran where it's, it is saying that it's a reality or not because if you have okay, to so see the reality were, you were go to mahabharat okay so okay so were, okay so i get that so and i'll come back to that later yeah. but were the puranas in some way mm-hmm. were they, are they meant to be were they, sorry were they written by human beings or did they come from a divine source where did they yeah. come from they only when you say the divine source the only the vedas are held at the top authority which is said to be you can say revelation or divine command so vedas are the okay. top and these things puranas these are lower it is written just to impart something so it's written by the vedvyas where he just want to convey something and you, it's not just one story when you open some other puranas it talks about the how to uh, tackle the greed and the lust and these kind of things so these are the different stories made around the, those are you, topics are you saying vedvyas vedvyas compile the puranas Yeah, Vedvyas. It is said to be the Vedvyas compiled the Puranas he, because the is same. Is he not the Puran. same person who compiled the Vedas as well? Yeah, he is the same. So what's the so, problem? So, so the authenticity is not there with the Puranas, but it is there with the Vedas, even though it's the yeah, same. Yeah, because it's yes, same guy written it. Yeah, I know because it, the there are Smritis, even the Vyas Smritis, the their Rishis wrote the Smritis in which they mention the proper rules about the scriptures. So Vyas Smriti is the person who wrote the Vedas and Puranas himself says that Vedas are the top authority and these Puranas are just the stories to you can say that uh, elaborate the further principle to for the human kind. He himself is saying yeah, it but, is ruled made did, by himself. Did Ved Vyas say they are not authentic? That's okay, sir. yeah he he just wrote in the vyas smriti well if these smritis and puranas are just the stories so no, he no, saying did that he say they are not the... authentic that's a question did ved vyas ever say it's not authentic they just made the up authentic... stories yeah he himself is saying in this chapter in 12 chapter and even the vyas smritis 
that these are just the stories made to impart knowledge to the mankind he himself is saying okay what is the what is the point of the puranas if i think majority of the hindus they actually go based on the puranas isn't it most of them no, don't no, read the vedas that, and upanishads they go by the puranas the, yeah. you that's the you can say that misleading fact because when we when we see hindus they basically read three things first of all gita ramayana and mahabharat so gita ramayana and mahabharat they come under the category of itihas which is superior to puranas the puranas even the people who read puranas they even when you open the vishnu puran the same the first chapter even says that these are the these are the things which have to be taken in the you can say the teachings which we will you will get about the sins and virtues so hindus reading about gita mahabharat and purana oh, ramayan so they are, are you saying they don't read the puranas is that what you saying look look they the, the read, they read is, the puranas yeah. and they know look. that this is just to get the message they don't take look, it literally they do read the puranas you, 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 you actually you actually can't read. get away from this because even if you uh, ramayan yeah. yeah or mm-hmm. even you mentioned the mahabharata a couple of times as well there there are similar mm-hmm. stories with sim- with similar levels of absurdity that it's very difficult to to defend and to no, to, no, no. to protect and to justify i'll give you an example you Look. mentioned the story of or the book of ramayana and then you mentioned ram versus ravan can you tell no, us who ram first of is? all no you are just taking the, when i told you that these puranas are no, the no, things no, which taking, you have to I'll take the you, teachings i'll tell you what i'm doing I'm te- I'll, I'll tell you what yeah. I'm doing because you spent okay, the right. last 5 minutes saying the puranas aren't something we follow they're not divine you mentioned ramayana yeah, it's I a rule not it. first of all just, i want to clarify first of all i didn't mention it's it. not and my now, opinion and now, wait wait the shishas are saying this and and now look mm. now i'm talking about the very books that you're saying yeah. is held in in kind of authority that you do take from so rather than yeah. sticking on puranas which you're you're mm. talking and we can start another discussion on that because of the mm. limited time i'm saying why not we talk about something that you do agree upon because the, the, we're not going to get anywhere you're going to say the puranas okay. is yeah. made up so, story somebody else yeah, so what, what, what do you want to yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so, so i'm saying on. that the general principle still stands because even if you look mm. at the story of uh, ramayan when it talks about ram and ravan i mean just the main mm. fact there there's again things that don't make sense like oh. ravan is the grandson of brahma yeah grandson grandson of brahma then yeah so he's the grandson of brahma he's given invincibility so? from brahma mm. that he won't be able to defeat gods and then yeah. brahma becomes powerless when he sees him commit all these atrocities and then brahma goes to vishnu for help then yeah. vishnu has to come down on earth as ram so mm. before we yeah. even get to the story yeah and and here's the point that we we're, we're trying to bring to you ajay yeah we we're, mm. we're trying to kind of meet in the middle here and just just show what's you what's the point how, on this this story so so i'm giving you the point you just stopped me in the middle of the point when i'm trying to give okay, you okay okay yeah. yeah you need to listen okay, Yeah you need to listen to the yeah. point that I'm actually saying so when we talk about god we believe that god is the most powerful the most kind yeah he doesn't mm. need to come to earth to get things done he doesn't misjudge he doesn't make mistakes he doesn't give mm. powers to his offspring there's mm. no nepotism here there's there's so mm. many concerns just with these two lines that i said yeah so he's given powers to his son his son mm. sorry his grandson his grandson is depicted as somebody with 10 heads that we're just supposed to mm. just you know be okay with that and then yeah firstly why is brahma giving invincibility okay he's giving mm. invincibility against the gods it doesn't seem befitting of a god to do this to be yeah should um, i reply i haven't made the point yet so the second okay, okay. point so is it's not befitting for a god to do this whether mm-hmm. it's to his grandson whether it's to a human being and then to yeah. become powerless to such a degree that he's now having to call upon the help of another god to go down and then yeah. you know throughout this situation that frankly was a great misjudgment on the on the um side of brahma you can respond yeah yeah okay so okay, sh- sh- now should i play if you have done that's what you can respond means yes yeah. 
yeah 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 first of all when you the when you you know when we use use the use the term gods to the brahma and the vishnu and shiv the this term is the misleading when you say the, there is brahma god and there is some another god vishnu like there are two gods or three gods like one god is powerless and then he is going to the some other god first of all the, our scriptures tells us that the brahm which is the almighty eternal who is who has no shape form or anything like that he is the eternal god who is beyond these material things he is the brahm so on the top is the brahm these are what what you are just talking are the devatas like brahma vishnu shiv indra okay so these are the devatas when you use the terms gods with them it's it will it gives an impression that in hinduism there are many gods like like as plural so here problem is that these are just the devatas devatas are in in the influence of maya are they and they are in the you can say like these are the devatas brahma vishnu the three dev which we say and then we, avatar take place so when you refer brahma as a god it is mis- misleading because brahma is just a devata god is only a brahm who is beyond this world and he's, he is he doesn't take birth and he is eternal and beyond the yeah. space so time I- fabric Ajay so, thanks thanks for your input but i think a lot of hindus yeah. will disagree with you because for them the supreme no, god no. is the supreme god is vishnu or it's uh, shiva that's depending the, on which sampradaya they follow you might follow yeah, a different are, sampradaya you might follow no, a different no. sampradaya and I for follow, you i follow for, vedas vedanti well they they so all I'm claim to follow veda the whole they all follow veda but they have to give reference i can give you reference i can give you reference they can give you reference as well go to iskon they'll give you reference for krishna no no I'm this sure they will. Yeah, they will because yeah, they will give the reference on the puranas down, even even when mm. we know about these stories of brahma going to vishnu and then vishnu comes down as ram you don't believe mm. ram is a regular human being or he's he's this or he's that you believe that yeah. he's in his god incarnate so yeah if, because yeah he is god, god incarnate, incarnate because he's got the power of god prove. you can't now pick and choose and say okay he's not god now no. okay he is god he's this i can prove that that he is incarnate in god sorry if you allow me i can prove okay. you that Ajay, he is not a human thank you yeah. thank you we, we need okay. to we need to continue okay, this so, next time ajay but uh, thanks for your input okay okay, okay. yeah okay um, goodbye take, take care thank so, you bye bye zishan bhai this is uh, hinduism it's a uh, different kerala fish bro the term god doesn't do justice i agree with ajay actually in hinduism but anyway let me say assalamu alaikum adnan bhai are you there he was struggling with his camera you need to un- his... you need to unmute un- yourself okay. absolutely yeah. alhamdulillah so welcome everyone welcome salam oh and salam full house as salam well. alaikum for the mansoor as well Good. alhamdulillah I'm full house uh, how is everyone doing very, very well, well thank you that's, that's, well. that's all coordinated entry <laughs> very coordinated <laughs> oh. very coordinated alhamdulillah how are you, how are you brothers doing adnan and mansoor you guys all right yeah alhamdulillah I'm enjoying the summer Whatever. Yeah, man. Today is like what twenty six degrees, yeah. which is mashallah. Not complaining, but it's hot without air conditioning. <laughs> okay, be quiet. I I want another week of this, please. I've missed it so much. Okay, uh, if it rains enjoy, more, I want to enjoy it you. while it lasts, bro. Enjoy yeah, exactly. It lasts. So, brother Mansoor, I actually watched your uh, marathon debate or marathon. Sorry, marathon discussion. Yeah. Um, and I o- took only three and a half work. hours. Maybe we can go through some. Yeah, I, I watched all three and a half hours, by the way, because I wasn't down it. But uh, very interesting topics that came up, and maybe we can go through some of them later. But today's session is really about um, the future. Um, where are we heading? Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us with a hundred thousand subscribers today. And again, you know, we did nothing except um, um, the effort and you know the, whatever Allah has given us. That's all we've done. So you know, we we don't take any credit for this, of course. Um, Brother Adnan, you've been on your travels. I've I've seen you online, all over the world. It seems every time I switch on, you got a different background, different country, different language behind you. Uh, maybe you can share some some maybe interesting stories you've had recently, or interesting discussions you've had that may be worth uh, sharing with the audience here. Um, uh, there's always something. Just, just pick one. Just just pick one. Yeah, just pick one. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I mean, I had a discussion with Ahmadis. Uh, this sunday mm. and it was a very interesting uh, dialogue and before that i was traveling uh, through latin america I was in brazil and then uh, peru and ecuador and uh, it, uh, it was absolutely mind blowing the dawa potential in latin america is absolutely huge 
IRA is doing a lot of good work. Uh, and uh, now there is a lot of attention and a lot of interest in Islam. You know, people, people want to learn about Islam in Latin America in particular. Latin America was a neglected continent. It still is. I don't think Dawah in the Spanish language has been done as it should have been. Okay, and uh, it is a highly neglected continent. Uh, so I think Muslims need to wake up and realize that there are people out there who are just waiting for them to 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 be taught. They need they need to learn basic things and they will accept. Okay, Latinos don't have any attachment to the history of Western Europe, let alone Catholicism and all that. They see it as an oppressive uh, force. They were forced into Catholicism. Okay, they did not choose it. They did not choose the Spanish and the Portuguese to come and take their land and uh, force this religion upon them, which is historically absolutely correct. Okay, so they, 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 just, they just see this religion, they were forced to accept as an inconvenient reality in their lives, basically. But if they were given an op option to accept Islam, they would... So I believe Muslims have neglected Latin America far too long. Those of you who are listening right now, you know, it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot of effort to go and do dawah. Just like we can make businesses and uh, we can do research for our education, like we can do degrees and masters, and even do research to establish successful businesses. Just like that, if we become absolutely sincere with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala when it comes to dawah, we will find ways to do dawah. There are so many creative ways to do that one, as as some of you are already doing, mashallah. May Allah accept from you. I mean, inshallah. Yeah, I think brothers and sisters need to brush up on the Spanish to do dawah in Latin America because I think language is hugely important in dawah. Not brush aside. Brush up. <laughs> brush <laughs> brush, up. brush uh, up. So, so, so it's Latin America. <laughs> yeah. Because so far it has yeah. been brushed aside, you know, with yeah. a huge brush. The Muslim Ummah has been very negligent uh, towards uh, most people in the world, unfortunately, when it comes to dawah. It's only recently that dawah has taken off, alhamdulillah, thanks to social media, because our voices were suppressed in the past. We couldn't really have a view or, or an opinion without being uh, manipulated. But alhamdulillah, we have independent voices now, and we can use these tools to get our word, word across, people, let people know what the philosophy of Islam is, what Islam stands for, what Islam has done, what it can do. All these things are very important. So, um, yes. so we are bad. We are currently, so far, we are bad firefighters. We were supposed to be firefighters, you know. Firefighters basically saving people from hellfire. Saving, saving our job as Muslims is to save the world from the fire of Jahannam. Okay? And... This is why the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent to save people from hellfire. And this, ma this makes us spiritual fi firefighters. Imagine a fire station where people are sitting there playing cards, watching football, munching sandwiches, and there is a fire in the neighborhood and they, they continue with their business. They don't go out to put the fire off. What are you going to call them? You're going to call them criminals, murderers, selfish, to use polite terms. Okay, well, that's the Muslim Ummah in general, you know. So I don't want to sound cynical, but things are changing. Alhamdulillah, the good, the good news is things are changing. Things are changing. There are people who are coming forward and who are doing dawah in their own uh, uh, respects. MashaAllah, we have a good collection of brothers here on this panel. MashaAllah, who are doing amazing work. Zishan, Brother Mansoor, Hashim, Brother Muhammad. I'm sorry, I don't know the... <laughs> Ismail. Brother Ismail. Brother Ismail. Brother Ismail. Brother Ismail. Oh, yes, Ismail. Sorry, I didn't recognize you. So <laughs> no, I'll get out of that. Can I, how can I not recognize you, man? I have the hat on. You, you, just, you just look like a random white guy sitting there. Just, uh, Between the bases. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry about that, Ismail. Okay. Yeah, so, Ismail. MashaAllah, you know, Allah has blessed all of us in many different ways. And may Allah I mean, accept from everyone needs more needs to be done inshallah inshallah no, and mashallah we, we are nowhere near the commitment I'm on, that people have honorary daisy honorary daisy 
Um, I'm... <laughs> Brother Mansour, can you repeat that, please? Yeah, yeah. We are nowhere near the commitment a certain religious community with their mission around the world um, in terms of their efforts um, they put in in the work they do. They would, for example, just go there in a certain country, live there 20 years, 30 years, all their life. They will <clears throat> learn the language. In fact, they learn the language beforehand, their customs, they dress like them, they eat like them, they talk like them, they take their local name, local languages. Um, they will settle there perhaps with a school or some kind of um, NGO type activities, hospitals and you know, which, which religious um, missions we are talking about. They went there in many parts of the world and they evangelized people to their religion. That was the level of commitment they had because this was a training that they took, undertook to go there. Dedication, amazing dedication. I mean, who can you think of Muslims? Apart from certain groups that um, you hear of like, four days and 10 days and 40 days going around, right? Coming back again. But we are talking about a an individual or a couple, for example, they would go there and settle in that country. And that's it. They settle there. They live there. They talk. They dress like this. Just imagine. I mean, they, I mean you would not make a distinction between them and a Pakistani. The only thing is like in the color of their skin. Everything else the same. They speak Pakistani. I mean, what, what we know... Pakistan is not obviously a language, the Urdu. Um, and you would not even recognize that this person is actually not a native. You won't think of it. it doesn't adapt. I mean, looks European, but everything else is the same. That's the amount of dedication they have. What have we done? What are we willing to do? How much are we willing to take that into stake and say, you know what? I want to spend my entire life doing dawah there. There is no commitment. I mean, if you think about it now, there is no commitment from anyone. We are like part part time though. It's not even part time. Part part time though, art in which we try to make an effort to give dawa, and that's it. So, how do you expect Ustad Adnan Rashid, the world, to change to come to realization that Islam is the truth when we are not going to them? Because you can't expect their, our non-Muslim friends to come to us in every corner um, as we walk, as we talk, as we shop, as we work, as we study, for example. You can't expect you know, non-Muslims to come to you. you. We need to go to them because that is the model where they have not been exposed to Islam. So you present Islam to them, whether in practice, in deeds, in actions, in words. That's what we should be doing. This is the model of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions. What are we doing and what much of dedication have we got? So, alhamdulillah, organizations like IERA have opened up a lot of, you know, the world in terms of demographics, going there, doing the activities, employing and utilizing the local from the, among the communities there to start where dawah activities can go on, dawah, you know, I don't know what you call them, you know, dawah groups, organizations in which it, you know, becomes like a fruit from there and it nourishes and it sprouts and it develops. Because unless you have someone there on the ground, it's not going to work. I mean, fine that our online sessions are reaching out, but that's only for what? Two hours, three hours, seven hours, maybe to the max or something like that if we're really going too much. But that's it. But if they see you there, you're there constantly, whether it's a daytime or a nighttime, whether it's at your work or your study or your engagement in a shop, when they see, like, this is what a Muslim is, through their actions, that's when they understand Islam in practice. Because Islam, theoretically, there are two camps, apparently. theoretically, either it's, wow, it's a, 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 a puritarian where it makes sense, that's fine, or it doesn't make sense. But when they see an action, that's why when people see Hajj, they have a shock. Like, how can you bring all these people together in the same clothing, Muslims wearing the same clothing, whether they're rich or poor, or they're fat or skinny, doesn't matter. 
whether they speak in, in, in the same language or hundreds of different languages, they're all together, you know, side by side, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the brotherhood in action. And this is what we need to show more and more in terms of how Islam is a practical religion of, of truth, of reality. So <clears throat> maybe brother uh, Ustad Adnan, you can, you know, encourage, you know, the, the youth out there to see how they can be part of this endeavor, this work in which we can be at least say, to, you know what, we're doing something that, you know, disposing our very much needed duty of dawah to our non-Muslim friends who are otherwise not exposed to Islam in, in the real sense. Absolutely. You know, one of the one of the things I like to mention when we talk about dawah is that the situation is very urgent uh, and dawah is life saving. I believe dawah is life saving, not only spiritually, but also physically. Dawah makes people better. OK, it, it it when people accept Islam, they are not going to consume alcohol, which is one of the biggest uh, problems in the world in continents like Africa and Latin America, alcohol consumption is linked to most crimes and, and disturbances. Okay, so if more people are Muslim, less alcohol consumption. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that alcohol, alcohol or or intoxicants will disappear or drugs will disappear. Of course not. But Islam is one of the remedies because of the the injunctions. Okay, and there are many more examples. Like one of the biggest issues is breaking families men getting married to women or having relations with women and then walking away when the child comes through so again a lot of people see islam as a solution to that problem christianity hasn't solved the problem i mean many christians will argue that they, these people are not following christianity that's exactly the point because christianity in many you know in many many when it comes to many issues it doesn't make sense there are no clear instructions so yeah. people are left to fetch for themselves. So look, I like to mention that it's an urgent situation. Uh, we have two people dying every second in the world. Two people die every second. Every day we have 166,000 deaths. Every single day, my brothers and sisters. Right now, as I have been speaking, almost 10 to 20 people have died somewhere in the world. And most of them are dying in kufr. They are dying in disbelief. And they could be saved. That's the way I see things. They could be saved. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and the reason why they die the way they die or how they end up with Allah is because of our negligence. Because we are not active enough. Not enough Muslims are in, in, involved in dawah. Not enough Muslims are taking the responsi responsibility of being a firefighter which is what Allah made us to to, uh, to to do. You know, this is what we are supposed to be doing. The Prophet ﷺ was sent to save people from hellfire, to bring them to Allah. So we need to reach out to non-Muslims in particular. Okay, going to Muslims only is a great thing. That's Islah, that's advising Muslims to be better Muslims. And that's the skill. All of that is beautiful. What Tabligh, the, uh, our brothers from Tabligh, they do, they try to make Muslims better Muslims. But we need enough Muslims reaching out to non-Muslims specifically, focused on non-Muslims, giving da'wah to non-Muslims, explaining Islam to non-Muslims. People think going to Muslims and teaching them about Islam and making them better Muslims by consequence is dawah no that's tabligh you can call it islah you can call it but dawah when allah mentions it in the quran it means going to non-muslims in particular specifically non-muslims for example take the verses from the quran a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim bismillah rahman rahim wa man ahsanu qawlan mimman da'a ilallahi wa amila salihan wa qala innani min al-muslimin whose word is better than the one who calls to allah Calls who? Calls the disbelievers to Allah. In another place, Allah says, Udu ila sabili rabbik bil hikmah wa mawizatil hasana wa jadil humbilati hiya ahsan. Okay, again, here Allah is saying, Call to the way of your Lord. Okay, 
called who? Called who? The disbelievers, the non-Muslims. Like again, Nuh alayhi salam when he talked about da'wa, inni da'autu qawmi layla wa nahara. Oh Allah, I call my people day and night. Okay, I call them with loud voice. I call them with low pitch. I call them privately. I call them publicly. Call who? Call the disbelievers among his people. So the Quran is consistently reminding us about da'wah. 40% of the Quran is on da'wah. The stories of the prophets. Allah is not talking about their businesses, how they far did farming and how they harvested their crops and how they got married and how they did hajj and how they prayed nafal and how they fasted. We don't have all these details. We have none of those details. What Allah tells us about is their da'wah. 40% of the Quran, almost 40%. So this is one of the most neglected obligations of Islam when it comes to the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the ummah of Islam. So I, I believe we, we, we have to change things. We have to move forward. And, and as Brother Absolutely. Muhammad rightly pointed out, the Christians, even though they are taking the Trinity to the world and spending billions of dollars, and they have to spend the billions of dollars because they know uh, there is no other way to, to, to spread uh, their faith. Because it, to most people, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Okay, believing one God in three persons, it doesn't make sense. Absolutely. We don't have to do that. We have the haq. We have Islam. We have the haq. We don't have to spend billions of dollars for people to accept Islam. Islam... It, it appeals to people. When you preach, we have seen people teary, crying, tears rolling down the cheeks when they hear the name of Allah. Okay, so this is very important. So I don't want to go on about this. Yeah, Barakallah Fik. No, no, Alhamdulillah. Barakallah Fik. Yeah, Barakallah Fik. Yeah. Right, can we bring the next uh, guest? In? Yeah, can so I'll bring, I'll bring uh, Bashir in. Bashir, do you want to keep your camera on? No, or not? someone else. Or oh, it's yeah, so this oh, person sorry. has joined uh, way... Way back, I think it'll be fair. To oh, okay, Bashir, you you be next, Bashir. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. So Hasib. Yeah. Where are you joining from, Hasib? Uh, New York. I'm joining. Oh, okay, from... that's good, Mashallah. New York, Mashallah. Uh, uh, What's on so your mind? I hope you're. I hope you're all doing well. And congratulations on the 100K. May Allah grant you an even larger audience, and through this platform, may Allah allow you to bless others. Um, uh, I, I, I need I mean, your help. Yeah, you. I, mean, I need your help because I'm dealing with some. Um, I'd say he has doubts of my own character. Um, I'm a college student and I live in America. And in college, I work for a Muslim charity that you know tries to provide opportunities to other Muslim colleges college students that donate to like different campaigns or charities, just like to help people around the neighborhood, across the city, and sometimes other countries as well. I work there as like the market manager. I have to lead the marketing team and like running social media accounts and advertising our events and getting traction and just spreading awareness of our organization. Um, I originally I originally joined because I thought this could be like a place where I could help, but um, I'm not sure if my intention was as pure or as true as it should be, or as I thought it was, um, I I don't know why. I don't even know how I even got the position because I felt like I didn't do that good. Um, I I I don't know. I'm not a good leader. I I don't know how to become one. I look at other Muslims in other organizations, other charities, and how passionate they are, and I feel like I'm not doing enough or I can't keep up, and. Um, I don't know if, it ha if I have what it takes to do what they do or, or to, you know, actually help. And so um, what do I do? I, I see you guys. You're so passionate in giving dawah and so passionate in what you do. And I don't know how do I, how do I reach that level? How do I become a good leader? How, how do I know if I'm, um, how, how do I know if I'm doing good or should I stay or should I go and, how do I make Allah proud with what I'm doing? You know? yeah. Right. Brother Adnan is in the in the charity field as well. I think he's got some experience in that. So maybe he'll be able to advise you, inshallah. Sorry, the question was a bit long, so I couldn't get 
the the the, the crux of it. What? what yeah. So the, the, let me let me sort of let me sort of sum yeah let me summarize the crux of it. So the crux of it is, Hasib has uh, uh, volunteered to do some work, charity work at college, and they've put him into a leadership role. And in this leadership role, he needs to do marketing and messaging, and and he's expected to show that kind of leadership. So what he's struggling with is number one. He was saying he doesn't believe his intention was probably as pure as it should have been when he started. And, sec and third, secondly, he's doubting whether he has the leadership abilities to lead. It's not what he wants to do. And th thirdly, he's saying, you know, should I even continue doing this? Is, is it worth it? So it, does that summarize, Hasib, what, what, what you said earlier? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, very yeah. quickly, I'll just give you very quick uh, tips on this. Firstly, uh, it is always worth it to do good work. It is always worth it to help people, to uh, save people's lives, to do to do good work. Charity work is good work. Okay, it's it's always good. Okay, so don't ever doubt the the validity of the work you're doing. If it's if it's if it's something good you're doing, right? And charity work is always good. Uh, second thing, leadership. If, if you recognize that you are not a good leader and the project will suffer as a result of your weakness or your weak resort, you're not decisive, you're not making timely decisions and you're not charismatic, you're not driving people and the project is falling behind, then you should immediately step aside, let someone else deal with the situation and do what you are good at. Everyone knows their strengths. Okay, so if you know your strengths, you know what you are good at. You could be good at admin. You could good at. You could be good at support work. You could good. You could be good at uh, advising, consultancy, things like that. Okay, so if you if you know you're not good at something and you recognize that, and other people have advised you uh, similarly, then you should definitely step aside and let someone else do the job. Okay, uh, as with regards to intentions, they can change. You can, you can start with good intentions and then your intentions change for, for worse. Or you can start with bad intentions. Sometimes your intentions are not correct, but they become better or correct later on. But it is a continuous struggle. You have to continue, you have to continue uh, checking your intentions every single day. When you're about to do something, you have to check your intentions. Why are you doing it? Who are you doing it for? So it is not just beginning with the correct intention and your intention is going to remain static for the rest of the project or for the for the duration of the project there's no guarantee for that so it's a continuous struggle so just because you're struggling with your intention uh, you shouldn't do the work no that's not a good idea that's a whisper of shaitan you should continue to correct your intention you should, you should continue to remind yourself okay and carry on carry on there's no perfection this is a continuous battle between uh, the shaitan and yourself, okay, and you will never be perfect. Remember that. Also, don't be ha don't be too harsh on yourself. There is no perfection in this world, okay. You need to look at pros and cons. If you, as a leader, are actually ultimately benefiting the cause, and you know more than anyone else, if that's the case, then you continue. And if you know for sure that the cause, the project, will suffer due to your certain weaknesses then you should step aside. Okay? So intentions are something, you know, you have to battle with continuously. It's not going to stop. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. Also, Hasib, how long have you been in this um, this job of yours? Um, uh, yes. Um, I recently, like, got accepted for the role. You know, we're just in, like, the planning phases. I'm, like, planning the project. It's only been like for a couple right. of weeks. We haven't actually so you have, you have only been there, what, a couple of weeks, you said? Yeah. Well, you know, you got a long way to go. Most of this confidence and the leadership comes with experience. We didn't just achieve it overnight, my brother. So have patience. Inshallah, you know, the determination. If you got the right near. And as Brother Adnan said, you know, if you follow those rules, Inshallah. And have a mentor, you know, that's also important. Have someone within your own field that you want to pursue. Um, you know, help, um, get some advice from them directly. Uh, so inshallah, we wish you all the best and may Allah reward you for your efforts and uh, give you istikama and keep you firm on the deen. 
And yeah, if you got any questions, you can reach out to Brother Atnan Rashid or email us, inshallah. And we should be able to uh, help you out privately, inshallah, as well. Okay, Brother Bashir, you want to go next? Yeah, bring him in. Assalamu alaikum, brothers. Wa alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. So I'm, I'm not sure if you guys know or, or, or remember, but assalamu alaikum, uh, brother Adnan. I just watched your videos. I'm an ex-Qadiani, a Muslim now, alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah. You know, you know we've, we've watched it with uh, great attention, taking notes, uh, finding all the references, you know, and et cetera. But I, I, I did have some questions about that. Um, and, and, you know, Muslims, like the general Muslim scholar, isn't, isn't versed in Qadiani arguments and et cetera. So, but um, you had mentioned that the uh, Brahini Ahmadiyya was an excellent book. Um, and that's simply not the case. It was, it's, 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 in that book, he makes one argument. He promised 300 arguments, but he makes one. And the one argument is he's a prophet. So it's like the ulama immediately did the fear on him. Only one person defended him, and that's who they quote. That was just like a school fellow, his friend, but no. he wrote that review. Yeah. In Brahini Ahmadiyya, he didn't make the argument that he's a prophet. No, it was published in 1887 in Amritsar. He was nowhere near claiming to be a prophet at that time. Uh, he claimed to be a prophet, or he declared his uh, alleged prophethood in 1902. 1902. So, Brahine Ahmadiyya basically was a defense of Islam. It was supposed to be, as you rightly pointed out, that uh, there were there were supposed to be many, many, many more arguments. But he came up with this, and he spent a lot of money. He raised money from the Muslims. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, the, so when I praise the book, when I praise the book, I didn't mean the book is perfect. I, I, there is no perfect book. Okay. Um, it is very nicely published. It is a very nice print. I can I can even pull it out from my library right now. I have the first edition in my library. Okay, and there are certain things, certain places that he makes good arguments. But at the same time, when Qadianis or Ahmadis try to use my statement to claim as if I am praising Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, they don't know what they're doing. They are very inconsistent. They they are experts. Uh, to my experience, they are experts of cutting and pasting and ignoring the context. For example, now, if I was to praise Hitler, let's say, as an, as an absolutely mesmerizing auditor, am I endorsing his actions? No. <laughs> Anyone who knows auditory and public speaking in the history of humanity, you will put Hitler somewhere in top 20, top 10. As well, a speaker, as, as a public speaker, but he was an evil man. He was an evil man, despite the fact that he had these abilities that he used for evil ends, doesn't make his entire life uh, worthy of uh, praise. So likewise, I mean, le let's give you let's give you more controversial example. Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie. OK, are you going to tell me that the guy doesn't know how to write? Are you going no. to tell me that his English is not good? He doesn't have a good command on the English language? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The guy has a good command on the English language, but he used his command to do evil things. Right. Okay. Likewise, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani had done some good work, no doubt. Okay. But at the same time, he used his good works to claim something he had no right to claim. He used his fame he had gained from debating uh, Arya Samaj, uh, you know, and also some Christians. He got some gain. As you, I mean, like nowadays, if you start debating Christians uh, on, a, on, on, a major, on, a, on a major level, okay, naturally, Muslims will get to know you. They will, you will go around the world, you will debate people, you will raise questions, you will respond to their attacks, you will become somewhat like a hero of Islam, okay? People will start to see you as someone in positive light or you will, they will start to look up to you. This is what happened in Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. He was initially defending Islam against the attacks of Arya Samaj and some Christian missionaries who were backed by the British government at the time. But then he himself did something worse than what those people were doing. 
he right and can uh uh sorry to um, interrupt you but uh, yeah. so so i researched this like so there's new information that's came out about mr so uh, uh for example in that book uh, um brahini amadia it's in english it wasn't in english until like 10 years ago or like seven years ago brother he's claiming verses of the quran about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for example ch chapter 61 9 48 28 9 33 this is where uh um, he says he is is um, the same as Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Astaghfirullah. But in that book, he's saying that. And brother, in fact, the ulama of India, I think almost a lot of people did a takfir on him immediately after the fourth publishing of Brahini Brahini Ahmadiyya, which was um, 1884. So he only got defended by one guy, and they bring that up. But yeah, no worries. I I understand it, and all sensible Muslims understand it. But that they, they've been cutting that from I think. Dr. Israr Ahmed has a um, has a piece of his speech where he says that also. And and okay, uh, so about the Christians, they, they, this is the problem. They always do this. Now right. you see, in my three hours conversation with uh, this gentleman called Ibrahim, okay, uh, I mentioned this passingly, just as a side point that his book has good things in it. It, it, it is a good book. Okay, I mean, many people disagree with that. Of course, I understand why they disagree with that because then there are certain pages that are blank, and there is only one word on one page. I have the, I have the actual book with me, so there are there are a lot of stupid things about the book as well, no doubt. I'm Some of the font is, is really big. Some of the font in the, in volume one is like is like yeah. there's 20 yeah. words on the page. Yeah. So so look, when I when I praised that particular work, I'm not saying every single thing in it is great. I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying it has good arguments in it. it. It would have been good book otherwise if he had not claimed to be a prophet. One could, you know, say, okay, this is a book in defense of Islam. Okay, he's he's defending Islam against uh, the enemies of Islam. So it could it could stand like a book. You could say was written in defense of Islam. But later on, his later actions and his later claims and his abs absurdities and his visions and his absolute madness, you know, right. when he's I, claiming I to be agree. Isa alayhi salam, when he's claiming to be Maryam and Islam, and when he's claiming to be pregnant, uh, all these things, okay, the guy was not, he was not right in the head. He was not, right, right, right. He, was, so, he was mentally unstable. Okay? Yeah, so uh, 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 let me go a little deeper. So so in 1891, he, he claimed to be the Messiah, etc., etc., and he denied prophethood. For 10 years, he said, I'm not a prophet, I'm a muhaddis. So Noonan had brought up that uh, the first Khalifa is a muhaddis. Never, that never happened. No, he never made no let, let me Let me add to something there. He actually said that I send lanat upon the one who claims to be a prophet. He did, yes, yes. yes. He For actually wrote it at, at this time, the period you're referring to, he actually said that Ham us shaks per lanat bejte hain jo nabuat ka dawa karta hai. Right, right. Okay. Then all of a sudden he starts saying, well, so it's a funny story. He says anyone can be a prophet. He says yeah. a conjurer can even be a prophet. He says just all you got to do is repeat uh, chapter one. I think it's verse six or seven. Um, uh, Guide us on the right path. He says we're asking to be prophets every day. Astaghfirullah. Um, no one can become a prophet. You can't achieve it. You got to be born it. Right. So, so anyhow. Uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, what, what he did was really bad because if you know about the si situation with the Hindus and Rangila Rasul, which, which was written in 1927, that was written in response to the Qadianis. So the Qadianis were fighting the Hindus. Why are you fighting the Hindus, bro? They're on, in the situation that we're in, they're on our side for freedom. You know, why are you attacking the Arya Samaj who are anti government? You know, you shouldn't be attacking them. So, so that whole thing with the Hindus, you know, some people shouldn't. Try to represent Islam. You know what I mean? You're gonna you're gonna make an embarrassment of all of us. So you, you should just not. Okay. So, um. So then, um. There was yeah, this this look this makes sense when you look at the British tactics to divide and rule. Okay, in India, uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani was one of those uh, tools you can say they tried to use to divide the Muslims and Christians and Hindus so that they don't politically unite. Put so much hatred between right. them. That they cannot politically unite to do away with the British. And as we know clearly from his works, he praised the British Empire, the British government, in particular Queen Victoria, with lavish tributes. Yeah, with he lavish called, tributes. He okay. called her the Khalifa of the Muslims. 
And, and and if I if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember because this is I read this a long time ago. Okay, he even he even called the British uh, government or the, or Queen Victoria uh, a blessing of God. A ble- yeah, he did. He did a blessing of God, a blessing of Allah. So imagine, this is the most cruel political establishment uh, to date. <laughs> to date, okay, the British Empire was the worst empire. You know why? Because it was the most organized in inflicting uh, disasters and catastrophes. Yeah, well, so, so let me tell you how the British helped them. Um, the British helped them uh, um, open up a mission in Israel, in, in, in Kaaba Beer, in, in, in Haffa. They got them into West Africa. They got them into East Africa. They took them around the world. They got them into America. When they got into America, it was the British who helped with, with the visa. So, okay. Um, what about uh, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan? You know, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed took like 90% of his Akiza from Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan, who said there's no angels, there's no day and judge, there's none of that. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed took all of that exactly from him. So, okay, um, the um, Ibn Abbas, um, I, I, I just want to clarify what that was. Uh, Ibn Abbas said that uh, um, in the Mutawafika could mean Mumituka in the future. He said wa in chapter 3, verse 55 is out of sequence. It doesn't imply sequence. It, it, it doesn't mean he's going to die first and then um, Raphaelka. He said it could happen the other way. So that that was the whole Ibn Abbas thing. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed did not give context when he quoted Ibn Abbas, which is not even in the Sahih of Bukhari. It's, it's in a chapter heading. It's literally a chapter heading. Look, the, the question I ask, uh, the question I ask is that why even debate this point it was never debated in the history of Islam like the Ahmadis do. Okay, why? You know why? To prove Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani to be a prophet of God. It is all for him. It is all for him. I mean, if 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 he hadn't claimed uh, to be a prophet, th- there would there would be no discussion. Well, the, uh, the Lahori the Lahori Islam, Islam, Islam didn't Islam. have to die; they had to kill him. Right. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani had to kill Isa salam for him to be the reincarnation or the rebirth of the Messiah from another woman called Chirag Bibi. But amazingly, amazingly, the Hadith literature repeatedly says that it will be Ibn Maryam. It will be Ibn Maryam who will return. Isa Which is a unique name. Ibn Maryam. No okay. one else has that name. La Yanzilanna Isa Ibn Maryam. Right. Adilan Hakaman or Hakaman Adilan Hakaman Adilan. The Hadith in Sahih Muslim. I was reading from the book. Right. That, I mean, he he had this Hadith from Sahih Muslim in his book, using it against us as if this proves the case. But if you read it carefully, every single word dismantles the the claims of uh, Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. For example, the first thing is it says he will descend. Instead of saying he will be born, it <laughs> says he will descend. And who will descend? Ibn Maryam, not Ibn Chirag Bibi. Not Ibn Chirag Bibi, okay? Uh, so so when this point is raised, I don't know why our Ahmadi friends cannot understand this. There is a huge distinction. When Allah calls him Ibn Maryam, you cannot mess with his return. It's you over, can't yeah. question it because Allah <laughs> sealed the matter. Calling him Ibn Maryam means... The one no one else who like was him. born of Maryam, not right. the one who was born in Qadian of Chirag Bibi. Right. <laughs> right. right. Understand. <laughs> so Ibn Maryam means it will be Ibn Maryam coming down, not the son of Chirag, Chirag Bibi. Right? Right. This right. is well, one well, of the they, points that, yeah. Uh, they don't agree on the birth of Isa al Aslam either. Uh, uh, um, they say, you know, Astaghfirullah, that uh, Maryam was a hermaphrodite. Astaghfirullah. Oh, my. Astaghfirullah. You know, and, and the other sect, the Lahori Amdis who uh, deny the prophethood of, Mir- of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, they say that um, Isa al-Islam Astaghfirullah had a biological father. Um, so both of these sects of, of, of Qadianism are all messed up. Um, I grew up in it. We had no idea what any of it was. I grew up in California. I'm like 44 years old. The books didn't come into English till like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So so hey, I, I also want wanted to talk about that quote, uh, uh, Zurut al-Bagaya. Uh, uh, so that is in a book that is Urdu, but you know sometimes they add two books into one. Uh, they mash the Arabic book, his first ever Arabic book, into this Urdu book, 
And and in, in that Arabic book, which was meant for the Arabic world, Arab speaking world, which is not really uh, British India, he was telling them, hey, look, everyone's accepting me, except the worst people, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay. Let me see what else. So, um, look, look, I, I, I am, I am willing to entertain any one of them at Speaker's Corner on Sunday. I've already put a comment out on my video that anyone who is uh, willing to take me up on these quotes or challenge me on these quotes or the veracity of our translation or the translation we have chosen, okay, I will substantiate every single one of them, whether the quotes are in Arabic or Urdu. This is the game a lot of them play because there are plenty of Urdu quotes. Let's say, okay, this one, Zurriyatul Bagaya, it is in Arabic. But I will show them plenty of Urdu quotes where Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani was obsessed with calling people bastard children. You know, he, he called the Arya Samaj bastard children. He used this term, Waladul Haram against them. Waladul Haram, literally, I mean, let's say Arabic. Let's say Arabic, okay? The Riyatul Bagaya, they can play games with that term, okay? Because the term Bagaya can be translated in a number of ways, okay? But what are you going to do with the term waladul haram okay waladul haram means a bastard child a bastard child right so uh, so that term has been used repeatedly by him in arabic and also in urdu right in urdu writings and he's not using it against one group he used it against arya samaj he used it against christians he used it against muslims who did not accept his claims okay so this man was obsessed with accusing chaste woman of unchastity. Islamically speaking, when you accuse a woman of unchastity, okay, of being uh, a, a, a baghi or let's say a prostitute or kanjri, whatever you want to call her, right, you will be taken to the qadi and you will be asked to produce four witnesses. And if you can't, then they will be had punishment against you. And your testimony will never be accepted for the rest of your life. So on that, by that virtue, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani loses his credibility completely by the fact that he accused chaste women of unchastity. Now, right. how do I know these women were chaste? Because many of them had died before he claimed to be a prophet. Okay, he's, he's cursing the children, right? He's cursing the Arya Samaj, the Christians, and the Muslims who don't accept him. He's cursing the children by cursing the mother. That you are all waladul haram. You are children of basically haram illicit relationships. So you're calling their mothers basically prostitutes or or uh, illicit, uh, you know, women. So now you have to prove your case in a court. And if you can't, your testimony is rejected. So right. how can you even be a noble, moral, trustworthy Muslim, let alone a prophet? Let alone a prophet. This is a very important point Ahmadis have to, uh, you know, grapple with. How can you prove Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani to be a moral Muslim man, let alone a prophet of God? This right. is the point I'm making, right? They bring these references from the Quran and the Sunnah and they say, oh, the prophet said this, Abu Bakr said this, Allah said this. We are talking about specifically Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani calling the mothers of many people prostitutes is calling them baghi or bagaya for example okay so there is no escape there is no escape there is no way out of this yeah they they've actually uh, uh, said that to me bro <laughs> they've said that to me on live streams my brother uh, uh said it i like we 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 got the audio it's it's a crazy um situation brother please pray for me you know i tell all the muslims that that, that i come into contact with you know uh, I got a lot going on, you know. Uh, so okay. Um, uh, so 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 just some other things about uh, uh, Mirza Ghulam. He never led the prayer. You had mentioned that that uh, it said in in, in the hadith that um, Isa al Islam would tell the Imam Mahdi, "You lead the prayer." So Mirza Ghulam Ahmed used that, and he never led the prayers at Qadian. So so like that really shocked me. He doesn't lead the prayer, right? He's never been for Hajj either. Is that right? Never went to Hajj. He never went to Hajj. Um, I mean, these these are the what do you say pillars of your deen, the five pillars, and he didn't complete one of them, even though he could have. 
Yeah, and he's sitting around doing nothing in Kadion. I mean, let let let's be let's be open yeah. about this. He's not. It's not like he's living the lives that that we, we live yeah. in America, where you know, we're, you know, we're on the hamster wheel the whole. Time. I'll tell you what, brother Adnan, why didn't you put a on your community page on your YouTube a challenge for the Kadianis mm -hmm. to come? I know you have said it in the videos, but most of these videos, you know, they probably just goes under the radar. So yeah, yeah. Put I, it I, more I, prominent I, I, I on your social media. Beginning. That I'll, I'll be there in the park on Sunday, and yeah. uh, any Qadiani, Ahmadi, Imam, scholar, yeah. uh, a learned man who wants to challenge me on those quotes. Why yeah. those quotes? Why? Okay, why? It is not a trivial matter. A man calling the mothers of other people prostitutes, okay, or, uh, you know, lose women, to use the polite term, okay, cannot be a moral Muslim, let alone a prophet of God. That's the argument. That's the right. argument. Okay. Right. Uh, before you get to Mutawafika, before you get to the death or life of Isa Alayhi Salaam, before you get to all those issues which they love to debate for a reason. Okay. Uh, because they know they cannot defend the person of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani. They cannot defend his person. Right. Yeah. So that's put a challenge, put a challenge out on your Instagram on your community page and on Twitter, inshallah, that should get their attention. Okay. And fi um, final question, because I know you guys got a whole show and a lot, lot going on. I want to take away your time. Uh, uh, what were your initial thoughts on Jesus in India? The Jesus in India theory, <laughs> the Yuz Asif, chapter 2350 is what they use. With, with, what, what are your thoughts on that? Okay. Well, I, you know, I don't know why they came up with this. It doesn't just doesn't make sense, right? There is no evidence for Jesus... Uh, I mean, look, even to ask for evidence for some something like this is just absolutely crazy. I mean, one of the things they always come up with is the, the Turin Shroud as well. You know, I don't know if you've come across that. Yeah. Okay, that has been shown to be a forgery yeah. by most academics, most historians. They have done carbon dating of it. It dates from the 13th century. It's a forgery. Okay, the Turin Shroud. Guys, do you know what Turin Shroud is? A Hashim sure. and Mansur? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so they try to use that and like make like long discussions to prove a point, okay? That Jesus was in Kashmir, he died in Kashmir, and he was buried in Kashmir. And all that. Why, why India? Is it because he was born in India? That's the reason they wanted to make the connection to India. No, uh, uh, let me explain. So, so remember, the Portuguese also came up with the Jesus in India theory. The Portuguese were on the west coast of India. They they were colonized, and so they built a church. They said Saint Thomas. They said, "Hey, we've been here for a thousand years. Saint Thomas was here. We're not stealing this land. It's our land." They made it all up. Right. So Nicholas Natovich, some Russian guy, it writes a book, the, the, the Unknown Life of Jesus. And he says, no, Jesus in his first 15 years or from like age eight to like 23, he was there in that era. And then he came back. So Mirza Glamama takes that uh, twist, chapter 2350 of, of, of the Quran, which has the word uh, Rabwa in it. And it's about the birth of Isa. Uh, al Islam. He, he was taken to a rubwa with his mom and she gave birth, etc., etc. They said, no, not just Isa, that they say Maryam also went to Kashmir. <laughs> because in that verse, it mentions both of them being there. So, Allah must stand, you know. Yeah, it, it, may, may, may Allah guide, may Allah guide amen, these people. Amen, yeah. We have nothing but sympathy, we have nothing but prayers. Uh, we don't want to hurt their feelings, we don't want to, to insult them, we don't want to humiliate them, you know. All of these conversations are not to hurt them. We haven't uh, insulted their, uh, their prophet, the one they believe to be a prophet, although we believe he's a false prophet. Okay, um, so uh, we don't we don't insult him. Many Muslims do, and they shouldn't. Uh, I like the Quran is very categorical about this: that don't insult the false gods of others, lest they might insult your true God in ignorance. Okay, so. I'm paraphrasing the Quran. So, so uh, we should not insult anyone when having dialogues and discussions. You can, you can use sarcasm to uh, to get your points across, so that people realize how naive they may be or how stupid they are when they make certain points. Sarcasm is not always bad, as long as it's not insulting the, you know, or, or hurting the feelings. So we should not insult. My advice to all Muslims listening to me right now, please don't insult them, don't curse them, don't swear at them because you endorse 
uh, their perceptions that have been instilled in their minds by their murabbis and their teachers uh, don't confirm and don't endorse those those perceptions and conceptions please be kind be gentle be friendly be loving be compassionate and you will see a change inshallah ta'ala inshallah inshallah okay brother bashir jazakallah khair for your contribution thank you so much Allah hopefully Allah adnan Allah can have a, a debate soon yeah. <laughs> inshallah right so we got uh, this brother sufyan he's been there for a while sufyan you need to unmute yourself assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh where are you calling from thank sufyan you. I'm from India. I'm from India. Okay, that's good. You're, you, it India. says you are a new convert. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. How long uh, have you been a Muslim? I, uh, it's uh, two months, two, three months. How is it okay? You know, uh, because I, uh, from back uh, six months, I watch a Muhammad Ali video. Muhammad Ali, he was also from uh, UK, I think. Yeah, He's an Arabian, I think. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I have a question regarding uh, uh, after the convert. I don't know about what to uh, read uh, because I only read Quran and uh, translation. And right. after that, uh, I got some uh, hadith from PDF, okay, uh, Bukhari, like. So uh, there is a question that uh, when I go to uh, first time masjid, okay, then uh, when I prayed there, uh, I learned prayer from the YouTube, okay. Then I got there and pray. After that, uh, a person come to me, a man, and he said that uh, which Imam you follow, okay. I didn't get that uh, what she was talking about. He was telling me like uh, you are the Jawandi or Wahhabi and like that. So I told him that uh, I don't know anything. I, I was scared to tell him that I am. Uh, I was before I was uh, Hindu like that. I said him that uh, I don't know what are you talking about. So I go go home and research about it. Okay, then I get to know new things uh, like. Uh, but it be the one the end all the sects like this so I have a question uh, then I talked to my friend who helped me to convert to like uh, okay. then I asked him and he said yeah you have to read Allah uh, Allah he named Ahmad Reza Khan he told me to read that uh, his books I don't know Urdu like he told me to read his translation. Uh, but uh, before this, he told me about uh, the beliefs. I didn't get the beliefs. Uh, means uh, uh, when I read the Quran, there in the first uh, uh, surah, surah Fatih, I think, there is a word like yakna uh, like this yakna budu yakna thing. So when I point this out to my friend, he said, uh, yeah, you can ask help from Allah, but uh, like uh, you can also ask help from uh, them also, like uh, who are in graves. So there are many things that I didn't get them. Then I, I was confused about it. And I think I choose to ask uh, this from any scholar or imam. But I didn't get uh, when I asked about the Moism there, uh, who Azan, who take Azan. He was also, I think, from that sect. He also told me to read uh, uh, Ahmad Raza Khan book. So I didn't get the point here. And he also told me that, that you don't read translation direct. You should not uh, you should read uh, tafsir and first you have to read uh, this book like that so that's my question what should i do which book should i read 
and akida we say that which akida is to follow all right uh, brother nan you want to have a go okay very quickly i'll give you very quick advice my brother from india who has who's a who's a revert who's a new revert to islam my brother my basic advice to you is to don't follow any muslims when it comes to islam follow allah and his messenger muslims are all divided they have many different opinions on different issues okay and as a new convert to islam you will be confused if you try to get into their differences okay some of the differences can only be fully understood by people who are very deep students of islam who know the arabic language and they they have advanced knowledge of islam um, or they are scholars of islam and i am assuming you are neither of these two okay so uh, as as a, as a, as, a, as a beginner just focus on the quran my brother read it with translation choose a good translation okay we can recommend few sahih international is a very good translation you can read from uh, clear quran mustafa khattab uh, although there is no translation that's perfect uh, you you might find here and there small errors in translation uh, but um, these are good translations to start with okay so uh, other than that read about the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so for that i will strongly advise you start reading this book called the sealed nectar the sealed nectar it's a very good book in the english language it has been translated into english uh, originally it was written in urdu and arabic but now there is an english translation uh, it's a very good brief summary of the life of the prophet i would advise you to skip the first chapter where it talks about the geography and the ancient history of arabia go straight to the life the birth of the prophet start reading from the birth of the prophet peace be upon him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and make your way all the way to the end okay these these are the basic things you need to focus on for now don't get into differences between muslims whether it's okay to go to graves or not whether it's i mean clearly when you read the quran carefully you know who to worship and who to ask is it not clear to you yes uh, uh, you have said it clearly that uh, we have to read rely on quran itself okay like uh, when i the quran the quran rely on allah ask only allah do not yes. ask so anyone I, else for anything okay i have thought i yeah the, uh, the guy uh, thank you the guy uh, who, who asked me about the imams uh, i then i go to the home and i research about it uh, what is the what he want to tell then i research it about and then i go to that person again i met him in asr and i told him about this like uh, the quran clear says that to follow uh, the prophet and like uh, how the prophet pray pray like him on the so i tell him and uh, the and i also tell him that uh, you can see uh, quran directly say that only ask allah there are many ayats so he also told me that uh, many of the ayats are uh, for a booth uh, they were come for booth not for uh, graves like this so i i just leave the leave i just leave yeah so that's, that's that's why i'm advising you not to get into these debates because the quran is very categorical it says iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in yeah nasta'in yes yes you alone you alone we worship you alone we ask for help full stop period no one is more powerful than allah no one is closer than allah no one is more compassionate than allah no one is more uh, you know attentive than allah so why would you when we have the superpower when we have the big boss and we have direct access to him and he tells us to reach out to him directly why would we go the long way if someone wants to go from delhi to ahmedabad and there is one straight road 
Okay. What you do is yes. you what you do is when you want to go to Ahmedabad, you go from Delhi to Calcutta, from Calcutta to Hyderabad, from Hyderabad to Karnataka, and then you come back up to Ahmedabad. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so so so, what would you call such a person? This is a stupid person. A stupid, yeah. Yeah, stupid. So yeah. Allah is telling yeah. us the straight path is call only Him, worship only Him. Full stop. No one else is more powerful than Him. No one else is going to listen more, listen to your du'as, your prayers than Him. So that's it. This is what we tell. This is what we tell Christians. You know, when we go to Latin America, we see people worshiping Mary. Uh, let me let me give you a very good example of this. I have seen statues of Mary all over the place on 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 big like you know uh, big squares, big uh, you know uh, um, monuments. And in Brazil, in Peru, in Ecuador, everywhere you go, you see a big massive statue of Mary, and people are actually praying to Mary. Okay, the Catholics actually pray to Mary. Okay, and yeah, yeah. prayer amounts to worship. I asked him. I asked him this question: Who is more powerful, Mary or the one who created Mary? They all say the one who created Mary. Then I asked them, Why do you pray to Mary when you have someone more powerful than her? And they can't answer the question. They can't answer the question. What they do is they tell you, Oh no, these are intermediaries. But Allah told us, Don't have intermediaries. Allah told us, don't go to intermediaries when you want to come to me. I am not like human beings. I am your Lord. And Allah says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa iza sa'alaka, wa iza sa'alaka anni, wa iza sa'alaka anni fa inni qareeb. Ibadi fa inni qareeb. Sorry? Wa iza sa'alaka anni ibadi. Yes. When my slaves ask you, O oh Muhammad, about me, Allah, the Creator, tell them I am close. I am listening. So if you mock Christians for worshipping Mary, what gives you the justification to worship people who are less than Mary? Or let's say they don't worship them. They ask them. They go to their graves and they pray to them. I am asking them, if it's haram to pray to Mary, why is it halal to go to someone who is below Mary in status, in power, in, uh, in, in everything? Mary is mentioned in the Quran. None of these people are mentioned in the Quran who are buried in these graves. May Allah have mercy on them. Many of them are great imams and, and, and preachers. So does that make sense, my brother? Yes, yes, yes. So, so this is it. So use your common sense. Allah has given you the be carefully with translation and then use your akal, use your sense, use your common sense. And if someone tries to misguide you, okay, ignore them, don't indulge, just continue. Yeah, I left that. I left that person. I said, uh, no, uh, I, I read the Quran and it says like this. So, sorry, I can't. Allahu Akbar. So now you see you read the Quran, Quran, Allah is guiding you, but those people they read the Quran mm -hmm. but they don't want the guidance. It doesn't change. Yes. Uh, can you recommend me uh your you know belief book, Akida Akida book? Okay. You know? There is there are basic Akida books you can read and there are a bit more advanced Akida books. The one I would strongly recommend, but you must study it with, with a good teacher who doesn't have these beliefs. Okay. Uh, this is Akida at Tahawiya. Akida at Tahawiya, and you need to read Akida at Tahawiya. At Tahawiya with the commentary of Ibn Abil Is. Okay. Imam commentary Ibn Abil Is. So you read Akida at Tahawiya with the commentary of Ibn Abil Is. Okay, remember this. Ibn Abul is sure, writing. And you can get an English translation of it. You can read yourself as well. And if you don't understand something, uh, you should come to a knowledgeable Muslim uh, who doesn't have these beliefs. Uh, you know, they will explain. But this is the problem. The challenge is in India, I don't know how to advise you where to go and who to speak to and all these things. This is very difficult. Okay. So you have um, said Imam Ibn Abul. Imam Ibn. The, 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 book, the book you want to read is called 
Akida Tahawiyah. At Tahawiyah. And commentary? A co commentary is Ibn Abil Iz. Okay. Ibn, Ibn Abil Iz. Yes. Ibn Ibn Abi. Yeah, I'll, I'll show him the book. Um, okay. There you go. Yeah. Mansoor has it on the screen. There. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. I have, okay. uh, so this is this. the Sorry. this is the belief of Muslims. Okay, in this book with the commentary explanation, get a good English translation of it, a good quality one, and read it. Inshallah, you will make you will uh, learn I, a lot of I, You're I, intelligent. You're I, a and you can easily understand it. And you know. Uh, I want to learn Arabic also. Uh, how can I start it? Like go, Arabic? go on YouTube. There are good programs that teach you basic Arabic. Start base, start with basics, and it, it will take you a year if you're consistent. It will take you a year to understand the the foundations of the Arabic language. Language, sure. la language Arabic. Like you speak Arabic, uh, and the translation with that. Like you know, Arabian speak Arabic. No, I mean, there are many programs online, YouTube. You can go and check them out. Inshallah, uh, oh. you can start with Medina. So, so brother, three. yeah, so actually, oh. the, the question is, there's two Arabic. So, one is the Arabic of the Quran, brother, which requires the lesson that uh, Ustad Nan is sharing with you. If you want to learn colloquial Arabic, which is the, the spoken street Arabic, yeah, that's yeah, a different kind Arabic. Arabic. Yes, but this is a different kind of Arabic. This will not help you with the Quran. This will not help you with understanding no, the Quran. No, I am telling like uh, this, like Aliba Tasa. I am reading this from when I started. I am reading this, and I am learning that uh, like Aliba Tasa, like that, and uh, I can read Quran in Arabic, small. But I also want to, but I also want to learn the spoken Arabic, like so. Okay, don't don't worry too much about that at the moment. You're in India, so try to understand the basic Quranic Arabic. Once you have a good understanding of that, then you can start learning how to speak Arabic with Arabs. One of the best ways to do that is to maybe go and live in the Arab uh, world, maybe one of the Arab countries, and then you can learn how to speak. You might have to live with them three months, six months, when you have the foundation. But for now, focus on the Quranic Arabic. Focus on the Quranic Arabic, inshallah. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Allah bless you. Thank you, so Thank you. Allah bless you. Thank you. And, and Thank also, you. brother, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, anybody like this comes to you again, you can email us. Our email is on the bottom right hand corner here. Yeah. Don't, be, don't believe, don't, don't, don't believe people just because they tell you. Uh, always get an opinion okay. if you are in doubt. Uh, yes. you can, and you can always, you yeah. can always email us, inshallah. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, Sam. Alhamdulillah. That was very, very good questions. Sorry, guys. I'm going to be back in five minutes, inshallah. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Inshallah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Inshallah. Yeah. Carry on. Go and join Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. All right. We got uh, Muhammad Mudassir. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum, Sam. Mm, I'm from India, and I just want to say that uh, please raise more and more voice against this Hindutva propaganda which is going on in India. Things are taking a very wrong turn here. And, uh, uh, you know, recently an incident happened where uh, an imam was killed in the masjid. I used to pray behind that imam, and I used to stay nearby in that city where I was doing a job. And these things took place and I had to flee the city. I had to come back to my hometown and uh, my family is so scared that uh, I left that job and doing a job in my hometown. And one of my friend uh, uh, who was also uh, there in that city, he was stuck there and he was taken out by those Hindu wagons and he was beaten but he also somehow ran away and flew and uh, he he there uh, at at metro uh, sec he was saved by metro security if if he was a little late then I i'm sure that he would have been lynched till now he was a visible muslim with good beard so uh, i just want to say that please raise more and more voice for indian muslims here the government is evil here. 
Absolutely right, brother. So this uh, Imam, which you're talking about, he was only a 19 years old, if I remember correctly. Maulana Saad, is that right? Right, right, exactly. This happened in the suburbs of New Delhi. Yeah, it, it happened in Gurgaon. In Gurgaon, yeah. okay. Uh, may Allah grant him Jannah, um, the status of a Shaheed, inshallah. And, you know, we can pray. I mean, whatever we do, it's not going to be adequate. Uh, we try our best to raise our voices um, against um, this kind of atrocities, uh, wherever they arise, whether it's in India or elsewhere. Uh, but, you know, the Muslims, alhamdulillah, are kind of divided as well, everywhere, as you know. So who should be taking care of these things are actually the Muslim leaders. Uh, but unfortunately, there's a lot of division amongst our leaders as well. Uh, we can only pray at this state, uh, at this stage. Uh, we try our best as du'at to give da'wah to the Hindus to basically get, to, you know, all the misconceptions that they spread, the propaganda they spread against Islam. We try to thwart that as well. Uh, and that's the best we can do at this stage. But uh, inshallah, keep us in that. Uh, we should all keep us, keep them in our du'as as well. For the atrocities they suffer and inshallah you know there's always ease after hardship as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says but I can understand the situation on the ground level for you brother Mudassar because you have seen it firsthand so I can understand it's not something whatever we say it's not going to be doing any justice to the situation you're in now uh, but yeah I mean if you got any suggestions as to what we can do with our platform uh, do let us know uh, because we are doing our best. And for us as Duat, we don't only deal with Hindus, as you know. We deal with Christians, we deal with uh, uh, atheists, with uh, all sorts of non-Muslims, all sorts of, um, you know, false firkas uh, and sects within Islam, like we were discussing the Qadianis just now and Ahmadiyya. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's basically something that we are already doing to the best of our abilities. But if you got any suggestions, do let us know. I just want that, uh, right, like, uh, share more and more videos of atrocities happening with Muslims in India so that the people of other countries know that what exactly is happening here. We can't raise our voice here properly. The, we are afraid that the government would bulldoze our homes at any point of time. They're, they have bulldozed almost 300 homes there in, in a village in Haryana. And uh, the, the worst part is that I see the comment section. I see that in real life, the Hindus glorify, the Hindus glorify those people who torture Muslims. They think that Muslims deserve it. Yeah. So in terms of the media coverage, uh, you know, mosques set on fire, clerics killed in religious clashes in India, in Haryana as well. So this is actually on the BBC, you know, it's it's not something that is being shoved under the carpet as you would have imagined. So Alhamdulillah, I think even the non-Muslims are raising their voices against such atrocities and against what's happening in India. Uh, so yeah, inshallah, you know, with the power of social media now, uh, things like this cannot go unnoticed. So it doesn't matter what what in uh, what the Indian authorities do in India, outside India, the news is quite easy to spread nowadays with these social media, with cameras, with videos, uh, you name it. So inshallah, justice will be served. If not in this dunya, inshallah, in akhirah, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just and he will serve justice uh, in the manner which, which he knows is best. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking okay, me here. Brother. Thank you. May Allah help you and keep you firm uh, on the deen. Uh, keep all the Muslims firm on the deen and make it easy for the Muslim moon, uh, wherever they are in India or elsewhere uh, where this atrocity is happening. Uh, we feel for them. We, you know, we, we, we are helpless basically to put it, to put it straight uh, in, in a few words, I would say. So inshallah, you know, uh, we try our best uh, in terms of the da'wah we give. Uh, may Allah give hidayah to even our enemies, you know. We pray for them as well. Do not underestimate the power of your du'a. Your du'a for, for a Muslim, for a mu'min, is your most powerful weapon. So please make use of it. When you go in sujood, make du'a for the people who have been victimized in these atrocities. Those people who have who had to leave their homes 
You know, just like the way the Prophet ﷺ had to leave his home behind and migrate to Medina when he and his companions were getting um, the same kind of treatment or even worse, I would say. You know, they were being oppressed and they dealt with it with patience um, and they kept the deen intact, even in those kind of situations. So yeah, please, brothers and sisters, make dua for the victims of these atrocities. May Allah make it easy for them and grant them justice in dunya and in akhirah, inshallah. Inshallah ta'ala, inna Allah ma'as sabirin, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Allahu Akbar. Jazakallah khair. Wa yaakum, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Allah Allah. Sorry, Mansu, you want to say something? No? That's fine, okay. Right. Um, so this brother, is, this guy's been waiting for a while now. Simple being, are you there? Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for your patience for waiting for so long. Uh, uh, apologies, we just um, had to had to deal with others uh, before we brought you in. So thanks for that. Uh, okay, sir. And congratulations on your 100k subscribes first. Thank you. Uh, All right. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from India, sir. Right. Okay. And uh, what shall we call you? Uh, you can call me Kiran. Kiran. All right, Kiran. Yeah. So, yeah. what's what's your background? Well, are you like I don't know, a Hindu, non-Hindu? What are you? Uh, uh, born in a Hindu family. Right. You can say, but uh, I'm kind of uh, what do you say, agnostic. You can say. Okay. So. Um, why is that? Why do you not believe in God? Uh, uh, not believing, uh, not exactly believing, uh, not believing, uh, I can say, but uh, I'm moving here and there. I'm searching which will okay. be what will be and like that. Well, you're, you're like any other Hindu. They are all seekers, aren't they? Yeah, kind of. Okay, you can say that also. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no problem. Right, so you got a question for us. What brings you to the panel? Uh, yes, sir. One question, actually. And th yeah. There were so many prophets, right, uh, for Islam or uh, Abrahamic religions, huh? right? messengers. Yeah. So oh, why God is sending these many prophets? So, brother, b b before we go there, brother. Uh, b yes, sir. Right. But, but we haven't established whether you believe in, you believe in God yet. Okay. So let's start there. What is stopping you from believing in that there is an ultimate, all-powerful creator that created all of existence? Do you believe that is illogical, or do you believe that that is something reasonable? Uh, what is your position? Uh, it, it can be reasonable. Uh, I'll say it has 50-50 chances. He can be and he cannot be. So there are two options, okay. and right now I'm not picking any of those options, sir. I'm open to both options. Okay, so do you believe all of creation came from nothing then? Uh, nothing as per my human understanding. Uh, something cannot be created by nothing, from nothing. You're absolutely right, exactly. So therefore, there must have been something at least, yes? Okay, something. Uh, Something, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't know what it is, but I think logically yeah. there must have been yeah. something that gave yeah. rise to everything. Yes. Yeah. Does that? I mean, so far, does that make sense? Yes. Yes. yes Good. Yes. Oh. So, so one of the questions we can ask then is, whatever this something is, what must it possess in order to give rise to everything? One of the obvious answers immediately is we see all around us enormous amounts of energy, you know, in the sun, in the stars, when we split atoms in nuclear re reactors. So therefore, whatever this thing is, must at least be the source of all of this power and must have even more power than at least all of this, yes? That must be at least yes. one basic assumption we can make. Yes. Does yes. that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. So... The other thing is, you and I are having a quite an intelligent conversation at the moment. You understand my words, I understand your words, okay? Oh. So, we have been blessed with intellect. Where did that intellect come from? It must have come from a source that could give us intellect, 
or at least endow us with intellect. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, sir. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So yes, sir. one of the other things, one of the other assumptions we can make about this something is it is very, very powerful and it is at least intelligent. Right? I mean, there's two basic things we can assume. Okay. Then the next thing is when we see the world around us, you, me, the planets, the stars, um, you know, various forces of nature, all of these things have limits, right? You know, yes. the, the, the gravitational pull, the electromagnetic force, all of these things have limits and they're very, very well balanced in order to allow things to coexist, right? Yeah. Now, for anything to be bounded, controlled, measured, there must be something that is controlling it, measuring it, managing it, right? Something must have decided that the weight of an electron is what it is. The weight of a proton is what it is, right? Because it could have been a billion, zillion other weights. Yes, it's this one. So the question is, is who or what decided that? If, if, if we go by God is there as per our human analogies, we can consider that God is there. Uh, God is managing all these things. Well, we haven't said God yet. What we're saying is whatever that thing is must at least have the ability to measure these things out appropriately for creation. Okay. Okay. Right. I mean, I mean, let's because the, the the leap to theology is actually quite a big leap, and I need to make sure that you understand where we're going with this. So, so far we have something that is very, very powerful, that at least has intellect and has the ability to decide to make this creation one way versus another way. That means it has the ability to choose choice because you know i could you know i could have had three arms but i have two arms you know human beings could have had four heads but we have one head so these are decisions that were taken by something so there's at least four attributes that we can say that this source has without the need to appeal to god yet mm. do we make sense so far does that make sense so far yes sir absolutely okay so the next step now is if this thing exists and it created all of us and it is all-powerful, intelligent, has the ability to choose, i.e. has a will, do you think it would create us and not tell us why it created us? Uh, I, I didn't get you, sir, last thing. He can create okay. us and he can okay, tell so us. Okay, so let me give you, let me give, let me give you you a, let me give you a worldly example let's say you are i mean you may be i don't know but may, let's say you are I, i'll assume let's say you are one of the world's smartest inventors right no there's no been no inventor smarter than you you create a new piece of technology that nobody has created ever before okay do you release this technology on the market and don't tell anybody how to use it and hope people figure it out or do you release it on the market with a guidebook and say, hey, be careful, use it like this, and if you have any problems, come back to me? Which is the better option? Uh, second one is the better option. Of course. Now, mm. this source, who is even more powerful, has even greater intellect than we have because it's the one that endowed us with all intellect. Do you think this source would do the similar thing, which is give us at least some intuition or guidance that that we could follow. Yes, yes. Does Definitely. it make sense? Logi logically, does it make sense? Right. Okay, yes, good. So once we receive, once once we know what this guidance is, and we have verified this guidance as being from that source, only then can we establish other things about the source because you would then expect it to tell us in this guidance as to who that source is just like in your guidebook you would say inventor invented by your name 
You would say why you invented it, what the purpose was. You would sort of list out all your reasons for creating it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, you would do that as a normal inventor. So, what we say in Islam is that guidance, that source, is the Quran. And so, what we have to say now is when we look at the Quran, we have very, and this is a, this is a big step now. So, I, I, a big step because you need to do this research yourself. We can establish without doubt that the Quran is from God. Without doubt. There is no doubt there. And in the Quran, it tells us who God is, what is our purpose, why we exist, and why he sent prophets. Your original question. All of those answers are in the revelation which you would expect a the source of all intelligence to give to you. So, so far, does does all of that make sense? Yes, sir. This is completely making sense. Okay, good. Uh, brother Adnan, do you want to come in with anything else? Any other questions for the brother here? No, no. That's it. You're doing perfectly fine. I would say that if the brother accepts everything, then he should should acknowledge that he he believes in this. Do you believe in all of this? Does that make sense? Uh, I I believe in this, but then I've got some doubts. Sir. So that is why actually doubts doubts are there due to Good. lack of knowledge. What? Just like go go, go ahead. So yeah, um, please. Carry on. Sh shall I yeah. continue? So, or, uh, yes. So, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, of course, yeah. But please continue. What would be the doubts that you have around around what we've arrived logically concluded? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, till now, what we have discussed is that supreme being is super intellectual, and that super intellectual being has created us, which we are also super intellectual things. Sir. So then God gave a manual or messengers uh, in a messenger's way. No, we are God not. Said, no, 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 no. Sorry. No, no, no. No, no, no. I did not say that. I said, I said the supreme being is the source of all intelligence. And we have been endowed with some intelligence. It's not the okay, same. Uh, it's not the same thing. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. We, 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 are, we, are, we are much inferior to the supreme being. Uh, so, so then... God yes. is sending messengers yes. Uh, yes. by periodically. God is sending messengers. Let's take, uh, I have just Googled like that mm -hmm. only. So, Adam will be the first messenger, probably. Mm -hmm. Prophet, I'm, uh, prophet, yes. prophet, yes, first prophet. Prophet, then, first uh, prophet, yes. uh, somewhere in the line, Moses will be coming, yes, and then again, uh, Jesus mm -hmm. will be coming, and then Prophet Muhammad. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, so, so, why? Yes. God miscalculated the human invention that they won't be following my instructions at the first time. Brother Adnan, do you want to take it from here, please? Yes, uh, look, God did not miscalculate. <laughs> In fact, God was preparing humanity gradually, sequentially, because he has created us with our weaknesses. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses because of his supreme intelligence. His supreme power, which we have already acknowledged, he created us with our weaknesses. And he tells us this in the Quran repeatedly that we have made man weak. Now, with our weaknesses, he has also given us the option to make choices. And for that reason, he bestows his mercy upon us because he knows we are weak and he has made us with these weaknesses. He has given us an option of acquiring or attaining his mercy. And it's like a child receiving love from the mother. The mother knows the child has very limited intellect. The child is still learning, still growing. Okay. Therefore, when the child does something stupid, when the child makes a mistake, the mother doesn't go immediately and start striking the child okay, with a, with a sledgehammer. No, the mother uh, disciplines the child gradually sequentially and the child grows into a man or a woman to play their part in the society just like that allah the creator he gradually sequentially prepared us okay that's why you see human civilization from uh you know from being a primitive civilization it became very very sophisticated to, to where we are today right so this was a gradual process but in this gradual process, he sent guidance to us 
depending on our changes. As and when we were changing, he kept sending new regulations with new prophets, with new messengers, with updated information that was needed for the time uh, due to their gradual increase in knowledge and, uh, and, and, and experience. Does that make sense? Okay, sir. I'm uh, okay. Uh, you continue, sir. Later, I'll ask the question. And 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 eventually was sent by uh, sent the last prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who came with the Quran. The Quran came as the final warning, the final message, the final glad tiding to humanity. It has good news for those who live moral lives, who live upright lives, who worship Him alone. Do not start worshipping other things beside him, re recognize him, acknowledging him and, and bow to him, not only uh, uh, bowing on the floor, but bow to him in will. You know, follow his instructions. Be kind to parents. Be kind to or orphans. Be kind to your families. Be kind to your neighbors. Be kind to the world at large. Be kind to even animals. All these instructions are there. So we follow his instructions. We prosper. If we don't, then there is a warning for those who don't. That if you don't follow, you will not only harm yourself, but you will harm others, and your abode will be uh, in the day, on the day of judgment, torment, punishment, justice. Okay, yeah, so it, the, the whole thing makes perfect sense. It's very straightforward, very simple to follow. Yes, sir. It's very linear. Uh, the, the the only thing is, sir, uh, fear of hell. Uh, th th that comes to my mind next thing. Sir. So let's take I'm 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 uh, I'm, I'm non-religious uh, as of now. I won't make any prayer to God. So if I'm not making any prayer to God, but I'm being good as prescribed in scriptures, but as as with my own uh, human intelligence or empathy, I was I am being good. Will I be going to hell? OK, let me answer that question very quickly. Hmm. Do you work? Yeah. And do you follow the instructions of your boss? Yes, yes. Why? Or else I lose the job. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is a consequence that you can see immediately and that makes you act. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But God tells us that I am the one who created you. Do you Have you already followed us, our argument? Do you believe there is a God who created us? Uh, I oh, have an idea. Let's, let's not call him God. Call him mm -hmm. a power. I'm okay with God, sir. No problem. I'm okay with okay. God. Okay, we we call him God. We call him mm. Allah. We call him, you know, the Creator. Mm. Let's call him the Creator. Okay, as yes. Brother Muhammad highlighted earlier, there is very very consistent case for us to believe in a supreme power who made all of this. Now, if that's clear, then it's also clear that we were not made in vain. There is a purpose to this life. Just like there is a purpose to your job, you work for a boss, you follow instructions, there is a bigger boss above your human boss or your worldly, your, 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 your material boss. You know, there is someone beyond that who has given us instructions to aim towards the ultimate success. You may succeed in making some money from your job in this world and have uh, comfort temporarily in this world. But there is an ultimate comfort that awaits you if you follow the ultimate boss. Okay, so the same logic follows. But if you don't follow the boss, then you lose your job. Then you lose your reward. And on top of that, if you are a rebellious worker, you go and start causing problems at the workplace. You start uh, fighting people. You start stealing from people. You start cheating. You start lying. You start, you know, all these things. Do you think your boss has the right to call the police and get you arrested? Yes, yes, definitely. Just like that in this world, if you mm. disobey the ultimate boss and steal from people, kill people, hurt, hurt them, harm them, not live by his rules and abuse your your body by using drugs and alcohol and, and live, you know, and, and you can say, I don't harm anyone. I'm just doing it to myself. Even even this is bad because your body is more precious uh, 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 to you than other people are. Your body has rights over you. So all of these arguments can be made to convince you to believe in this ultimate supreme being, to surrender to him, to bow to him, to follow his way, his instructions. It's not going to come uh, in, in one conversation. It may take a while for you to 
internalize all these thoughts, all these uh, points we have raised. But for some people, it's immediate. They understand, they acknowledge and they say, okay, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely, you're making perfect sense. There is no, nothing else to life. And if there is no supreme being, if there is no purpose, if there's no ultimate purpose to life, then life is depressing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I, I just want so to... Sorry, sir. one thing, Karan, I noticed you said that you will be doing good according to the scriptures. Which scriptures did you mean? No, 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 sir. Not scriptures, sir. Uh, let's say I'll be doing good, which might be good or to, uh, according to the all scriptures, sir. No, but good is subjective. It can't be same. For example, so I'm, uh, in I'm Hinduism, not... you have polytheism. In Islam, mm. you have monotheism. Mm. So in the Hindus might consider polytheism to be good. And the Muslims but, do not consider that to the be scriptures, good. The scriptures, you may, yeah. be, you may be thinking they are scriptures. They're actually not scriptures. These are, these are works written by human beings and attributed to God. They don't, uh, they don't stand the test of scrutiny. None of them, unfortunately. No. Okay, yeah. sir. Uh, no, uh, regarding the scriptures, means ab about only about human interaction. What mm. I'm saying is, not uh, just minding myself and not disturbing others, oh. uh, living a peaceful life. Uh. Mm. That's what I meant. Uh. So, so I have uh, a so question, so Kieran, uh, so Kieran, so okay. Uh, ahead, I, I have a question. You, you, uh, actually, you may be a very I, good person. Uh, I, 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 I wanted to ask you one question, sir. Just, yeah, just uh, yeah. Let Let me quickly make this point, and we can, we'll go to your question. Okay, uh, Karan, you, let's say you have a mother who lives Kiran, at home. Kiran, sir. Kiran, sorry, Kiran. Uh -huh. Sorry, Kiran. Uh, Kiran. You have a mother. Kiran. You have a mother uh -huh. and she's she's a good woman. She raised you. She gave you birth. She gave you food. She she she, she took care of you. And then you turn, you come, you, 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 you grow up to be a very moral person, a good person. You don't harm others. You don't insult others. You don't do anything bad to anyone. Right? Uh -huh. But then your mother gets sick. Oh, uh -huh. then your mother basically she wants your attention when you grow up she wants yes. your attention she wants you to love her to respect her to take care of her but what you do is you say i'm a good person mm. i'm going to be nice to everyone but i'm not going to acknowledge my mother i'm not going to take care of her i'm not going to pay attention to her but i'm a good person mm. i'm a good person i'm going to go out i'm going to feed the orphans i'm going to take care of the poor the needy and i'm going to make sure the neighborhood is clean and all that but my mother at home who gave me everything, I am not going to do anything for her. And and you are genuinely a good person who is trying to help people. But are you a good person is the question. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you understand my question? Yes, yes, sir. I understand your question. So, so are you a good person? The person I described? I'm a good person. I'm a reasonable person. I can no, no, oh, not no. you. Not you. My question yeah. was about... Based on the analogy person. that Brother Atman analogy. gave you, yeah. Okay, Do okay. You, uh, would you be a good person if you were showing ingratitude to the mother who gave birth to you and showed mm. kindness and good treatment to everybody else except your mother? Uh, holistically, not a good person. Okay. Well, that's it. That's mm. the answer to your question. You may be a very good person. You may be a very kind, compassionate. Mm. You're good to everyone. But if you mm. don't acknowledge your creator, the one who mm. made you, the one who gave you everything, mm. then ultimately, are you a good person? Okay. Uh, I will not be a good person in the eyes of creator. So whom are you pleasing, trying to please? Are you pleasing the creation or the creator? Uh, in, in this scenario, creator will be the uh, person. No, but you said you won't be good in the eyes of the creator. So you're clearly not pleasing the creator. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm saying that I, I, I don't want to be good in the eyes of the creator. I'll just you don't want good. to be good or you want to be good? Uh, uh, sorry, sir. I didn't get you. Do you want to be good in the eyes of the creator or you don't want to be good in the eyes of the creator? Uh in my current situation, I am not bothered about uh, whether God God thinks about me as I'm a good person or not. I'll be good. I just wanted to be good. Okay, so, but not in the eyes of the creator. In your so you're no. going by your own whims and desires, what yes. you consider to be good. Yes. But what yes. God tells you to, mm -hmm. for example, what is prohibited or what mm -hmm. is permitted, you are least bothered about that. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That is my position. So who is your God ultimately? Yourself or the creator mm -hmm. of the heavens and the earth? I'm not the God. 
Uh, that's well, sure. you have made your desires your God, isn't it? From what you said. You said you want to please yourself. If pleasing myself will make me God. Huh? So well, no, no. Please, no, no. Pleasing yourself in the sense that uh, ultimately it is your own whims and desires that mm. you consider to take as the moral high ground. What God tells you is irrelevant. Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah. So mm. once again, whom are you submitting to? Your own nafs, your own self, or to God Almighty? Uh, to my own self. Okay. So you have made yourself as God in a way. Have you not? Because you okay. live by that rule no, which you no, made. Not, not literally. What Hashim means it. Yeah. Uh, mm. it what Hashim means is that that's the consequence. Yes, yes, I understand. I understand. The, I got the it. way you're living is basically you have chosen yourself to be your own God. You have chosen, you made yourself your own philosophy of life to lead your life rather than the one who created you. This is the point. This is the difference. Yeah. So yes. it's, it's basically, uh, it's, uh, it's an intellectual battle between your own philosophy, which is definitely flawed, limited by experience, limited by knowledge, limited by your social conditioning against or vis-a-vis -vis the philosophy of God who is ultimately wise, ultimately powerful, who made everything and he gives you a philosophy through scriptures, like the Quran, for example. So yes. which choice would be better, in your opinion? Uh, if, 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 we, if we strategically see the second point which you said, following the guiding person will be the best one, best choice. Yes, so God God is the best, best, uh, uh, you know, best being to be followed. He gives God the best of the, guidance, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's that's log, that's the most logical position. If there is a God, and there is no doubt there is a God, because no one can come and tell us that all of this came by accident. All of this was just an accident. It occurred out of chance. Okay. Any human being who has basic intellect will laugh at you. And if there is a God, and there is a God, then he must be followed and worshipped. And he is alone. He's only one. It is not divided into persons. He's not divided by inferior gods or demiurgs or demigods. He is alone deserving of worship, worship because he alone is the most high, the most powerful, the most wise. Does that make sense, Kiran? Yes, sir. That, that makes sense. Then, so. then Kiran, you, you are already a believer. You just need to make baby steps into islam that's all that's all there is okay you are already by nature by your intellect intellectual convictions you are already a muslim okay and a muslim doesn't mean that you have to become an arab or you have to become like those guys in india you see maybe you know you had a muslim is by conviction by intellectual conviction you are already intellectually a muslim it's just you need to find the courage to acknowledge that and say, yes, you know what? I believe in Islam. If this is Islam, believing in God and following his philosophy of life, which he, which he has given us through his scriptures and by prophets he sent, then I am a Muslim. Would you agree? Uh, I slightly disagree, sir. Uh, one thing I, I'll tell you, sir. I, I just wanted to ask you one question I told you. Na, or else mm -hmm. I, I wanted to tell you my idea. Okay. okay Go uh, ahead. We are uh, open. God, uh, God is very wise and God has created us. And the only curse God gave to us is free will. So, and he, again, he is asking us to be submissive. So, my my dejection with God comes there. Why he has given, a, given me a free will if he doesn't want me to use my free will? He wants you to use your free will. Yeah. How is it a curse? How is free will a curse? It, it, he wants it's a blessing. Uh, sir, I, I wanted to continue. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's take, uh, I, I'm li I'm little exposed to Christianity. I'm little exposed to Hinduism, and I'm little exposed to Islam. Only these three religions I know. Uh, other religions I don't know. In all these three religions, God at least God asks to pray. To pray. Why? Why should I pray? That's the thing. Okay. Let's ask yourself uh. this question. Do you think the prayer is for yourself or for God? Uh, uh, for me, for my desires, as per no, no. my. Uh, Who, when you say God is asking for prayers, uh, whom is prayers benefiting? Yourself or is it benefiting God in any way? Benefiting for for me only. Exactly. 
So mm. God is asking you, and He's basically doing you a favor, how mm. you can achieve reward from Him by praying. So you see, if the entire universe stops praying to God, it won't make an iota of a difference to the majesty and the might and glory of God Almighty. He's not in need of anything, but we are. We are His creation. We are in need. So prayer is one form of showing gratitude to Him. And to, for guidance as well. Because when you pray, he guides you. Just like when you need some help, you go to, I don't know, whoever you go to, you know, to seek help. So this is, a, in a way, you're seeking help from God. The prayer doesn't benefit anyone except yourself. Okay? Uh -huh. Unless you're praying for somebody else, that's different. But when you pray earnestly and sincerely to Almighty God, then God will re respond in kind. He can either grant you that prayer right away, or he can delay it when he thinks it'll be best for you to be granted. Or he can give you the reward in the hereafter for that. So anything you do is for your, for example, many people, they say, oh, why does Allah need to sound the, uh, uh, the Muazzin to sound the Adhan, you know, the call to prayer for the Muslims from the minarets or from the mosques. This is again to call the Muslims to prayer. Because in the Quran, Allah says, uh, sorry, uh, the part of the Adhan is, Come to pray, okay, and come to success. Because this grants you success, the prayer itself. So again, it's benefiting the people. It's not calling out, the Adhan is not calling out to Allah. It's calling out to the people to come to pray and come to success by praying. Do you see my friend? Uh, may, I, may I, sir? Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how uh, Muslims will pray, but normally what Christians, Christian, I, I, I'm little exposed to Christians actually. They will be asking some favors, or they they'll be asking to do this thing, like that. You can pray. You can pray to God. Anything, my friend. Uh, and, and you can seek. Can you can seek any reward. You can uh, seek any help. Whatever. So prayer is in a way you're communicating to God. Uh, so, yeah. how did how did humans came to know that they can pray that uh, is very, given in, uh, it's that a very is good given, question yeah uh, that is given in the scriptures or word from the god yeah god so you see when god when god sir, created you uh, yeah. shall i continue or yeah yeah continue? sure go ahead yeah finish your point uh, yeah go on. Uh, uh, so what said god gave us the manual that you should pray to me then i will grant then then i will grant you the desires to you or else what you ask Okay, so uh, God, you know, when he created you, he did yeah. not just leave you to fend for yourself. Like the yeah. way you're saying, you know, I feel this way, so I will do this. I feel this is good, so I'll do this. I feel this is bad. He didn't just give you the free will and let you wander around the world all by yourself, unguided. He gave you the guidance through the prophets and messengers, which you spoke about earlier. Yeah. And this is a reason, because in order for you to communicate to God, there is a medium, and this medium was the prophets and the messengers of God. So they told you how to what God wants of you. Just like you know, when you buy a new product, for example, a new phone or a new I don't know, um, some sort of a PlayStation or something, it comes with a manual, right? And yes. this tells you what the do's and the don'ts of that particular product. So if you abide by the dues, then you will hopefully see that the product that you bought, it works properly and it's going to last. But if you misuse it, for example, it says the phone is not waterproof and you take it for a swim along with you, then surely you're not following the instruction that were given along with the phone. Who knows what is best in terms of using the phone, the manufacturer or yourself? The manufacturer. Exactly. So if God is your creator, he knows what is best for you and he knows what is harmful for you. He tells you who your enemies are in this world. He tells you the do's and the don'ts that you have to go in order to lead a, a life which is not only fulfilling for yourself uh, and wholesome, but also something that is you're being um, obedient to God Almighty. Uh, one thing, sir, here. Yeah, go on. Uh, you said that uh, uh, enemies also... Uh, one yeah. point you said right so who will be the enemies here the shaitan allah says shaitan? in the quran in the shaitan he's your greatest enemy 
But then there are other enemies as well, you know, the foot soldiers of the shaitan. There are many people who want to take you away from the truth that God has guided you or will guide you. That when, for example, when people tell you the truth about God, there are people who would want you or put hindrance in your way. And these are the foot soldiers of the shaitan. They are doing their bidding the work for the shaitan. And so, yeah, your, your enemies could be your friends, for example, could even be your family. Could be your best friend. Could be your parents, even. Yes. Uh, uh, could be this, someone this, on the internet. Th these are all. These are also the creation of God. Yes. And God so, led them sway. No, no. The creation of God. Remember the free will you spoke about earlier. Yes, yes. So the uh, free will allows you to obey or disobey God. So those people who put hindrances in your path are actually mm. being misguided by the shaitan, and in turn they want to misguide you as well. So, so right they are the right. enemies of yours. So by their free will, they chose to disobey God and they want to take you away from God. Mm, so, so right now, I'm, I'm not uh, influencing any other person to move away from other religion. Right. So I'm being myself. Yeah. Still, will I be the foot soldier of the shaitan? No, if you're no. not disobeying God. No, no, let me explain very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me, uh, just like Brother Hashim gave this example of the manufacturer. Okay. Let's, let's see how you can become a problem. The manufacturer gives you a manual instructions to drive the car, let's say. Okay? Mm. What you do is, you, you say, I know what I'm doing. I don't need this manual. You rip it away and you throw it away. And then you drive the car without basic knowledge about it. What are you going to do? Mm, uh, I might end up with some accident. Some you might end up in accident and you mm. might kill other people, right? Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay. This is how when you don't follow the manufacturer, when you don't follow the instructions, you mess up the gadget or you completely destroy the product and you destroy yourself. Oh. Oh. Nice there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I received a call. So these are some of the things you keep. You need to keep in mind. So if you go by your own philosophy, your own, um, let's say, way of doing things, you may not see the harm immediately, but you will eventually end up causing some harm in the society somewhere. Okay. So so this is why, you know, being being a soldier of shaitan, something people choose to do. It's not the choice necessarily. This can some, sometimes happen without you realizing it, that you're playing into the hands of shaitan. Yeah. You actually have, you have been uh, for shaitan. Uh, can you, you hear me? You, uh, yes, no, no, no. Your, your last part is cut. Uh, last part is yes, little. You can, you can actually, without knowing, you can yeah. be a tool in the hands of shaitan without you realizing it. Yeah. Not deliberately. Because be because because yeah. because there's nothing after the truth once the truth is clear once god uh is 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 believed in and you know that he is the most powerful the most wise and he has sent scriptures you put the scriptures aside you ignore god and you do your own thing then directly or indirectly somehow you're gonna you're gonna fall victim to the the plan of shaitan the devil mm. That, that is a chance, right? No, it's definite. It's definite. As I said, that, you know, um, you may not know this and you may not want to do this, but because you're ignoring God, your creator and his instructions, you will end up doing something that may harm others, if not you. Okay, mm -hmm. so so it's it it could it could be anything. It could be, for example, I'll give you a I'll give you a good example. You're from India, right? Yes, sir. In India, non-religious people have relationships. Non-religious people will have. Will we can easily have a girlfriend boyfriend relationship, right? Yeah, extramarital yeah. affairs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, oh. is that is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um. So you, you don't mean to harm anyone. You just like a woman and you go out with her. Mm. Okay? And you, you, you are a perfectly harmless person. You don't want to harm her. 
She doesn't mm. want to harm you. You're two innocent people who ignore God and don't mm. get married, don't formalize your relationship. You fall into a relationship. Yes? Okay. 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 And then you end up having a child. Okay. And because you're not married, it is easier for you to walk away um, from that responsibility. You can leave the child with the mother and the, the child grows up fatherless. And now we have a problem in the society. Yes. I'm not saying all fatherless children are, are a problem, but this is a huge problem. I mean, we are facing it, we are facing it in the UK. In the UK, uh, many children who are committing crimes, street crimes, okay, stabbings, uh, they have missing fathers. Okay. Mm. Okay. So it could be a perfectly harmless situation mm. where two innocent people don't get along anymore. They walk away from each other, but the society has to pay the price. So, so look, there is a poet, there is a poet who said, uh, do you understand Hindi and Urdu? Uh, Hindi a little bit. I'm a South Indian. Okay. So, thoda thoda yeah. Aata hai. Uh. yeah, so it's, it might be difficult for you to understand, but I'll say, say, say it in Malayalam, he'll understand it, man. Magas ko baag me jane na do ke na hak ko ek parwane ka hoga. Do not allow the bee to go into the garden because a moth will die in vain. So what the poet is saying, if the, if the bee will go to the garden, it will take juice from flowers, it will come back to hive, it will produce honey, there will be wax, the wax will produce candles, the candle will burn, a moth will come and burn on the candle and die. So there is a process. So the poet is saying, stop the bee from going to the garden if you want to save a moth. So... Mm. The philosophy of Islam, which comes from Allah, is basically about prevention. Following God, not necessarily for immediate results that you can see with your eyes, but rather it saves you from pitfalls ultimately. Does that make oh. sense? Yes, yes. So it's, it's, it's a very powerful philosophy. Yeah, when we profound. scrutinize it, when we think about the rules and regulations of Islam, instructions that came from Allah, from God, we come to realize... Absolutely. They, they save us from many pitfalls. They save us from many challenges. Okay? Uh, yes, sir. So this is why Islamic societies, as bad as they may be, as weak as they may be, they have some virtues that other societies don't have in the world. You may be able to tell me about some of them. What, sir? I, I didn't get you. I'm saying Muslim societies, Muslim communities around the world, as bad as they may be, as weak as they may be, okay, as challenged as they may be, they have certain virtues that other communities in the world don't have. Virtues? I don't know the meaning of virtues. Actually. Virtues mean uh, characteristics. Certain characteristics. So being rigid. Yeah. I, I see. I see. Uh, being rigid as one of the characteristic of Islam. Being rigid for what? Being rigid in not uh, drinking alcohol or taking intoxicants. Being rigid in taking care of orphans and your families. Being rigid in uh, in clean, no, being no, no, clean. No. I, I I didn't say in a negative way. Let, let's yeah. take the word as a word itself. Rigid in in in, in holistically, they, they, they will be rigid. Let's take even in the dressing sense. They they, they, they will make it clear that uh, we are Muslims. Yeah, okay. yeah. and 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 the, and the idea behind it is a way of life. You live mm. a way of life. Mm. Follow following God's instructions and you live a moral life. Now, there are exceptions. There are people who do bad things. They look, re they look religious, but they're not actually following the religion. Okay? Mm. Uh, those, those people exist in all communities. But predominantly speaking, Muslims, those who follow the religion, they live relatively happy lives. Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, one thing, sir. Uh, right now, yeah. le le let's accept that I'm a Muslim. Huh? Then... Mm. If I, if I if I don't do the prayers five times, namaz five times, uh, will I be a non-Muslim? Okay. If you don't pray at all, Kiran. Yes, if pray you at don't all. Pray at all. You don't pray yes. Juma. You don't pray even one prayer a day. Then you're yeah. just a Muslim by name. You're just claiming to be. It's like being an engineer and having a badge on your clothes that mm. I am an engineer and you don't you don't do any engineering. You don't practice it. So you're just an engineer by badge, engineer by name. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, 
this is what making me dejecting god so i have to follow certain uh, certain rules which uh, i am not comfortable with that okay then then, then uh, the choice is an intellectual choice you have to make is it your philosophy your comfort yes, over yes. Uh, over over what god wants from you and if you especially when you believe in god if you believe in god if you believe there is a creator then what you're doing is you're keeping him aside as a you know like you know sometimes you have <laughs> this is a bad example you know what a no, side sir. chick is sir you know what a side chick is side chick side chick uh, side kick or side chick no no side chick. you know like you have your wife and then you mistress have... call it mistress atnan okay okay, okay yeah okay. like a mistress you know yeah. so okay. so no mistress is a more polite word <laughs> that's what i was hoping for <laughs> you're just using side chick is you're just using on the side oh, and, i see okay. and you don't care about her you don't pay any attention to her you don't take care of her it's yeah. like you you treat god as a side thing you know yeah, yeah. god is there i believe yeah. in him but he doesn't really have any role in my life it doesn't work like that yeah yeah you know, so, exactly. kiran let me ask you you know islam has made many things haram and most of this people like you will agree for example brother adnan already mentioned about alcohol intoxicants you know adultery fornication stealing gambling you name it you know all these things are negative in the society are they not uh, everything that islam I, has prohibited these are the uh, things which are negative have negative impact on your life in the society so I've what been, is it that you would disagree with from islam from the prohibitions which islam has made for example no, uh, uh, prohibitions i don't have anything the okay. only thing is uh, uh, following certain algorithm algorithmic way of life is yeah. very difficult for me so give me an example what is it that will be difficult because you know the five pillars of islam they are not that difficult and one of no, them no, is I, uh, i don't know much about islam uh, what thing yeah. is I I know only thing is that I have to pray five times a day and uh, I have to wear certain clothes and uh, I have to be uh, reflective as a Muslim in the society. No, but what do you mean? For, uh, praying five times a day, it's not that big a deal, you know. It's not taking out a lot of your time. Each prayer maybe lasts ten minutes. So you're talking about five times ten, like fifty less than an hour. a day uh, from 24 hours that. how is I'm that difficult saying, i am not saying that i don't have time huh? right. i don't want to do it i don't want to do it repetitively yeah but why the question is why why would you not want to pray or connect with god for 10 minutes five times a day okay pr- pr- praying itself uh, let let me ask you sir it's a personal thing i'm asking you mm-hmm. what will you be praying uh, in in namaz what will you be doing actually i don't know because that's why uh, I mean it's it's uh, injunction from uh, Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala that you pray and the mm. prophet peace be upon him has shown us how to pray so you must mm. have seen the muslims pray yeah yes, either yes, on tv yeah. or something yes, and yes. these are particular actions and you re- uh, you mention uh, you say uh, you recite the quran in your prayers and mm. certain uh, prayers and this is a ritual prayer So the five times prayer, which we call the salah, is mm. this ritual prayers. But then in the term English also the prayer also means the dua or the supplication to God Almighty, which you can supplicate to God any time, at any place, in any situation. Uh, no, Do you understand? No, my... So there's a difference between prayer and supplication to God. So uh, we need to the, the salah yeah. and the supplication, yeah, or the salah uh. and the dua. Yeah. Ah uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, let's say if if I'm being almost not not only those five times, uh, let's yeah. say if I if I'm continuously talking to God within my mind, saying that I'm being okay, God. I'm being okay, God. Like that, if I'm being saying in my mind throughout the day, will it not be sufficient? Should I have to do the what you said that process? Yeah. So in order to benefit yourself, uh, you need to do it in the way which has been prescribed. not the way you just feel like so in terms of supplication you can do it like i said you can say it in your language you mm. can pray for things which are good obviously pray for your family your friends your your relatives so on there's nothing wrong in that you can do it in the way you want it as long as you don't ask for something which is 
prohibited, for example. Mm. Do you understand? So you can't yes. just pray, oh, I have X number of girlfriends. So please grant this to me, God Almighty, because you are asking for something which is prohibited. Okay. So once again, the question is, what is it from the things which have been permitted that you think you'll find it difficult um, in order to be a Muslim? Uh, that's what, sir. Uh, algorithmic way of living, uh, doing that uh, five times, uh, not from the uh, personal prayer, but I have to follow certain prayers, uh, certain methods to to make that prayer beneficial. These all things I find well, it a little difficult. Uh, why is it uh, difficult? Mm. If I asked you, uh, mm. do you find it difficult to go to work daily and wake up at a particular time and mm. do your work for X number of hours? and you cannot do anything other than what your boss instructs you or your company expects of you. Is that ritualistic? Is that something that you find to be cumbersome because you're getting paid? Actually, I feel the same way. But only thing is, I don't have another job or I don't have another means of to earn money. So I'm exactly. going Exactly. So it is a money factor, right? If, yes. I, if I said, I, can, you, can you do the same? Mm. Okay. And, and, you the, don't and your boss doesn't pay you anything. No, would you do the same just thing? Like, you just, you just, just like you don't have another job, another, mm. <laughs> and another boss. Just like that, you don't have another God. There is only one God. <laughs> there is only one God, and that that God mm. alone deserves to be worshipped. But but but, look, but my but I still curse my boss for making me to do the work. Yeah, but but with God you cannot do that because ah, God, that's what limits me when no, I'm no, getting because, frustrated. Uh, yeah, because with God, mm. with your parents. With your prophet, with God, you cannot do this. These are red lines. You know why? Because their majesty, their great status is so high that you have no right to curse them because they gave you everything. So I, I want to very quickly, Kiran, put, put the prayers aside for a second. Prayers mm -hmm. are an advanced stage. Put prayers aside. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't, if it, let's, 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 let's assume that prayers don't exist for a second. Mm -hmm. Do you consider your, yourself a Muslim otherwise? For example, you believe there is a God. He alone deserves to be worshipped. He sent down scriptures. The Quran is from him. And Muhammad is indeed his prophet. Do you believe in these things? Uh, only worshipping thing I alter. Remaining everything is good. No, that's fine. Put worshipping aside. I have uh. already clarified. Put worshipping aside for a second. Okay, mm. first thing is first. First thing is acknowledgement. Do you acknowledge there is a creator, there is a God? There has to be. Yeah. Okay, so you acknowledge yeah. there is a God, basically. Because because logic doesn't make sense otherwise. Logic <laughs> yes. Okay. My human my human uh, what do you say experience says that there should be something starting point, and that starting point should be the ultimate thing. Mm. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. So yeah. let's call him God for now. So you believe yes, there is someone, yes? Yes, yes, yes. And this someone has to be one. We cannot have two or three who are ultimately powerful, ultimately independent, with ultimately independent wills. Do you agree? I agree, sir, but uh, one, one, just a comical thing. Okay, I, I'll tell you later. Yes, yes, tell, sir. Okay, so let's continue. Let's go with sequence. Do yes, you sir. agree that there is, there is a God and mm. he alone deserves to be called God because he alone is God. Because we cannot have two or three who are ultimately independent, ultimately powerful, and they mm. won't clash. Yes, yes, definitely yes. that conflict will happen. Uh. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Now mm. we know, and their conflict wouldn't be your conflict and my conflict. Their conflict is cosmic. That yes. means the universe would not exist. It would not mm. exist. It would be destroyed long time ago because mm. of the cosmic clashes. Okay, uh, so mm. we know because there is harmony in the universe, there is mm. only one who is mm. ultimately powerful, ult ultimately wise. Agreed? Mm. Mm. Agreed? Agreed, sir. Okay, let's move on. Now, because we know this ultimately powerful being is ultimately wise, his mm. wisdom requires that he doesn't just give birth to us and leave us like mm. a careless mother. Because his wisdom would require of him to create us with a purpose. Would you agree? Okay, but what will be the purpose, sir? I agree. Yeah, I agree we're, that we're, uh, we're, we're coming to that. We're coming yeah. to that. Now, because we have already established that this being is ultimately wise, 
and ultimately powerful. His wisdom requires that he creates things with a purpose. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the purpose is the question. The purpose is, is what he tells us. The purpose is what he tells us, not what we think. Because we are intellectually inferior. We are inferior in knowledge. We are inferior in experience. We are oh. inferior because of our uh, circumstantial uh, or regional conditioning. Mm. Okay, mm. because we are in planet Earth. We are basically confined to this planet. We mm. cannot escape this planet. We have to breathe oxygen. If there is the ox no oxygen, we would die. Okay, if there was no sunshine, we would die. If there was no heat or cold, we would die. Okay, if there was no rain, we would die. All of this depends on a system that sustains our life. Agreed? Yeah, agreed, sir. Okay, for what purpose? So that he has created us and he has communicated with us through scriptures sent with prophets. Okay, so he okay. sent agents. He sent his agents who came and spoke his name in his name. How do we know they spoke in his name? Because all of them spoke with one voice. From Adam to Muhammad, all of them spoke with one voice. They said there is only one God and he alone deserves to be worshipped. Don't worship anyone else. Don't worship anything else. Now, this much I believe you are already in agreement with, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let's stop there for a second. Forget about the instructions and restrictions and, and limitations and worship. Forget about that for a second. We already agree on these points. Yes? Yes, sir. So, technically, technically up to this point, you're a Muslim. Technically. Okay, sir. Okay, okay? Sir. up mm. to this point, you're a Muslim. Now, what comes after is basically built and developed. Your knowledge, your conviction... The strength mm. of your faith is built from time to time, gradually, sequentially. You will learn. You will learn more and more. You will get to know your creator. Just like you get to know your mother as you grow. The child grows into loving his mother. Would you agree? Yes, yes. I agree. The first thing a child realizes uh, when a, a child gains consciousness and inter intellectual ability is that who is the mother? The first person mm. the child recognizes is the mother. And then the child grows into loving the mother and understanding the mother and, and, and you know, appreciating the mother because the child knows this is the person, this is the woman who did everything for me. The love you have for your mother is basically unmatched. You cannot love anyone more than your mother. Okay, if you're a normal human being. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Just like that, when you get to know your creator, having acknowledged him, when you start to grow, when you start to learn about him, through authentic mm. means, through scriptures, he has sent yeah. down and you can authenticate them. Then your love for him, your appreciation for him and mm. your your dedication to him grows and then follows worship, then follows obedience, then follows love. So, so the stage you are at right now is acknowledgement. You are at the acknowledgement state. And afterwards, as you grow in knowledge, as you grow in awareness of your creator, okay, mm. you will start to love him, you'll start to obey him, and you will start to worship him eventually because you will realize how uh, you have been missing such important part of your life. Does that make sense, Kiran? Uh, oh, oh, only thing is the manual part, sir. Don't, don't, again, don't worry about the manual. We can get to that. But do you, do you, I mean, everything I've said, is it logical? Is it following logically? Yeah, I already acknowledge God is there. Okay, so Kiran, Kiran, just stop there for a second. Mm. Accept and acknowledge and then mm. grow. And grow by learning. Acknowledge that you believe in God and you want to uh, appreciate his power and his wisdom and you want to follow. Okay, you have a desire to follow. You can't just ignore you can't just ignore a supreme being who exists and say, okay, okay, fine, you're there, but I'm not going to think about you. I'm not going to pay attention to you. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to find you or look into your, your instructions. This is a later stage. First thing is acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. And then once you acknowledge, you believe. You say, I believe in you. Now I want to know you. So the knowing stage will follow soon after. 
So I would say, at least you acknowledge that you, you're a Muslim. Would you agree? Uh, uh, let me complete me, sir. Okay, I, 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 I'm a Muslim. The thing is, uh, the, the idea in my mind that uh, there, there, there is some hindrance to my free will. I have to follow some algorithmic way of living. Stops me stops me there that uh, okay god again, uh, so again, uh, let me complete sir let me complete sir yeah, yeah. please uh, please go ahead please go ahead okay god uh, okay god you are invading into my personal space uh, now so god uh, i'm not that much bothered because in my daily life uh, uh, nothing much happens if i remember you if i don't remember you if i pray to you if i don't pray to you nothing much difference happening to me so i i i i i, I, I let you be there only and if I, if I have to do something to get a benefit of our, our going to heaven, you are giving me a treat and asking to throw my free will and follow follow you. So that's not for me. Look, that is look, my position. Okay. Look, how much you follow God and his instructions mm. is a separate issue. Mm. Kiran, mm. the fact that you acknowledge him and that you know he exists and you have no doubt that he exists, that alone makes you Muslim. Okay, that's the beginning of the journey, Kiran. Try to understand. That's the beginning of your journey. It's, this is a new thing for you. This is not something you have had all your life, okay? Because the conversation we had today has been nearly one hour, okay? Maybe yes, yes. you've never had man. this conversation before, right? Uh, no, not much. Never had. Okay, okay. So this is only the beginning, Kiran. This is the beginning of the opening of the doors of your mind towards an entity towards a reality towards a phenomenon that you have not given attention to, to before so we don't expect you to start you know or, or even god doesn't expect you to to become a saint overnight or you're going to change your life completely in in a in a, in a in a in a stroke no it doesn't work like that even allah even god knows that the first thing is first the first thing kiran is acknowledgement which you have done you already acknowledge that you are a Muslim in beliefs. You are already a Muslim in beliefs. What you need to do now is start reading about God. What does he want from you? Have you read the Quran? Uh, I just had some uh, audio audio in YouTube for around two to three three verses. Sir. Okay, okay. No, uh, you, need, you need to get a translation. You need to get the translation of the Quran and English translation. We can even send you one, Kiran. It's not a problem, okay? Okay. Um, if you leave your address uh, uh, later on and we can send you a copy of the English translation of the Quran, you will receive it within a week. Okay. And start reading. First thing is you acknowledge, which you have done. Okay. Then what you do is start reading the Quran and start uh, try to understand your creator. Tr try to understand what he wants from you. Okay. Once you start reading, you will start to see why it will start to make sense more and more slowly. So long as you are sincerely seeking, you have to be a seeker, okay? You can't be careless, Kiran. You can't just be careless and find a job. I mean, if you were looking for a job, uh, does that require dedication or not? Yeah, education. Okay, education. so just like with God, you need to be dedicated. So you need to seek God. And how you do that? By start reading the scriptures that, at, that, that are basically attributed to him, the Quran. The Quran is the strongest <laughs> candidate. The Quran is the strongest candidate. Start with the Quran. So, shall we send you a copy of the Quran? Uh, I'll buy myself, sir. Okay. Then mm. I would advise you that you mm. take the acknowledgement that you are a Muslim. Take the acknowledgement. Make that acknowledgement. Call yourself a Muslim. Okay? So, you're asking me to say that I am a Muslim, huh? right yes. now? Yes. Uh, that's what. Uh, I can be a Muslim. I don't have any problem. Okay, mm. so, so so let's do that. Let's do that. So Means, what you do uh, is you 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 identify yourself as a Muslim by the beliefs we have already explained to you, and then you build on your knowledge. You start reading about Islam. You start reading the Quran, and you will see light. I can guarantee you, Kiran, come back to me in two months or three months, having read books on Islam, having read the Quran and the life of the Prophet, you will be a different Kiran. <laughs> okay, okay, sir. I can. Uh, I, can I mean, I am so confident. I have no <coughs> doubt that's that's going to yeah. be the case. Not different Kiran in that we're going to have a an alien, an alien Kiran, but we're going to have we're going to have a much more informed Kiran on Islam, and then you will understand what God is and what God wants from you more. 
Okay. Can I can I ask, ask some questions um, if I may very quickly? Yeah, one second. Do you want to make the acknowledgement, Kiran? Uh, acknowledgement means a pledge. Uh, should, should I have to take a pledge? Yes, a pledge that you're a Muslim. That's it. And it's like saying my mother is my mother. My God is my God. That's all you're saying. My God is my God and Prophet Muhammad is his prophet. Like all other prophets. So uh, then what will happen, sir, after that? After that, you learn, you read, you build your knowledge. Without you... doing that, without doing that uh, can I learn? Yes. I mean, uh -huh. you can still learn without uh -huh. taking that. But you are already, I'm saying you are already a Muslim in beliefs, uh -huh. in, in conviction. You just have to say you are. It's like you are already qualified on something. It's just claiming that qualification that, okay, you know what? I am this and I'm going to acknowledge that I'm this. And then after that, you know, you, you're going to start learning about your identity, what you what you, you're going to build on your knowledge. Does that make sense? Uh, not so, sir, because I'm not that comfortable saying that. Uh, no problem. Pledge. Mm. No problem. You don't have mm. to do it. There's no mm. pressure. There's no pressure. Mm. And I, I really, I really mm. admire the fact that you're very open and very honest. Okay. Uh, yes, you're not yeah. you're not being pressurized and we're not pressurizing you this is your mm. life this is your yes, decision yes. Uh, okay yes. so you uh. you do it when you are ready but don't mm. sit on it brother you are already a muslim i believe you're a, you're already a muslim by conviction you just need to you just need to acknowledge that and build mm. upon the knowledge so you need to, need to need to go and read the quran and basic islamic literature okay uh, yes sir inshallah so you have questions guys Mansoor, uh, yeah, I just because I missed uh, a, a good portion of your discussion here because I was just outside. If I may just ask you, Kiran, a very simple question What do you want from your life? I just want to have a peaceful life, sir, comfortable life without any problems. Sure, do you think it's if possible? Eternal, to have... if eternal, if eternal, eternal, sure. So you think it's possible to have a life peaceful, comfortable, without any problems? Or there's going to be problems in the way anyway? Yes, yes. Pro problems will be there. That's why I wanted. I, that's a wish. Sure. Mm. So you mentioned about your personal understanding and the following of the mechanics of how you will live your life to make that life of mm. comfort and happiness there are lots of different ideas out there ideologies systems codes beliefs um religions you know if you want to you know categorize them in different ways each claiming to give you this particular way of living which will give you this comfort and happiness there are many competitors right mm. you have your own so you can look into each one and see which one seems to be the most effective in terms of giving you the comfort and happiness. How would you know which one to follow? Because we talked about from the Islamic perspective, and you had your particular understanding and objections maybe to this particular way of life. How would you know what's the best way of living? Is it something that makes you happy? Uh, uh, sorry, I, I didn't get you. I what, didn't get you. Uh -huh. What are the ways of knowing how to live our life in the best possible ways so we can be happy and comfortable and peaceful in which this life is not going to be one of problems and sufferings and so on. How would you establish that particular way of life? Because you may eventually realize, for example, actually communism is a way of life and then people realize that it doesn't work after killing and murdering hundreds and thousands of people in that experiment. They ah. thought they were clever. They thought they were cleverer than you and I. And they went through this experiment of making people live under a particular way of life to make things happier, comfort, more comfortable, more prosperous and joyous and so on. And we know that they failed, right? So that commu communism project is something like people are not going to. It's only a certain amount of people who wants to believe in this kind of socialism, communism ideas. More and more people are going to say, we want to go back to some ideas of democracy and so on, right? 
So how would you know which one is better? Because Islam provides, even if you didn't believe in God, even if you didn't believe in the Islamic system, Islam provides an alternative system to all of those beliefs and ideologies out there. And we can argue that it is the best form of living in which you will have what you seek for. Not only in this life, in the hereafter as well. And what we give is, we give importance and priority to the next life. Because the next life is an eternal life, either in joy and happiness and bliss and tranquility and contentment, or in one in which someone suffers eternally. They are in pain, in, in sorrow, they are in, 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 in real torment. There is no happiness whatsoever. So if you really want to be happy, you need to think about both the worlds. Because you did not give yourself life, neither are you the owner of taking your own life. Because you can't just say, I'm, I'm going to just be dead tomorrow. I mean, even if you threw yourself from a building, you might still be alive and, and be, you know, maybe disabled, but you're still alive. Life and death seems to be a thing that is beyond our control. You did not choose to be born or to be given this life. And it's not in your hands that you will die like I'm going to die tomorrow and so on. There are many, many examples where people try to commit suicide by all different ways and it doesn't work. They don't die. They end up in, in a hospital, for example, and they stay all their life and so on. So what I'm saying is, have you looked into Islam and its systems of living, which gives you comfort and joy, and it gives you that, that not only this hope, but it's a guaranteed promise in which success will be based on your understanding of happiness and joy and peace and, 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 and what you talked about, comfort. Guarantee of that comfort in the next life. So this is something that you should not gamble and say, you know what, I come from a Hindu family. I've seen how Hinduism, with all this polytheistic understanding, they have this belief. It may be plausible, may not be plausible because it's so much confusion in the Puranas and, and, and the Upanishads and, and, and you know, which one to follow. What we are saying, Islam is one particular way of living in which you can see it in action and you can see the history where people looked and practiced the belief system. There were prosperity, there was comfort, there was happiness, there was tranquility. People had that tranquility in their heart. And what Ustad Adnan Rashid was trying to make you understand is the contentment on the heart only comes after this recognition of the truth and affirming this truth. And then as you more and more practice, you will see the fruits of this contentment and the serenity and the joy that you have in your heart. You can only realize this once you have that affirmation and, and, and conviction. But that's another thing. But I want to know from you, is which system yeah. of life gives you that comfort and joy and happiness? May, may I speak, sir? Yes. Uh, uh, the physical, uh, physical materialistic things which I get approved, which I, which, which I, which I want, if, if I get that one, I'll be pleased and my mind will get peace. That's the one thing. Next thing is, uh, I wanted to say that these materialistic things and pleasures are in, in this life are making me happy now. But if I say that I don't bother about the afterlife, I'm having the other picture. If I'm going to afterlife and then God showing me this part of my life, showing that in this, in this section, you said that you don't bother about the afterlife. So you go to hell. That's what God might say that that my uh, that idea is also I'm having that. But still, I'm bothered about this life mostly. Yeah, sure. So mm -hmm. what, what I wanted to understand is this. Mm -hmm. If this life, I'm not sure whether the brothers have explained to you already, is a transition to the next life. Mm -hmm. And in this transition, you have to demonstrate to yourself whether you're worthy to be in one of those two places. It's easy to be in the wrong place of suffering. It's easy. You just have to do all these bad things. Even your heart knows it's bad. Killing people, raping people. And I, if I were to just name some of these vices, you would appreciate that, yes, indeed, these are worse things. These are not virtuous things. So it's easier to go to the wrong place in the hereafter. You would not automatically assume that the, in this transition to the next place, you don't need to do anything. You just simply say, you know what? I will go to the next place. I deserve 
to go to a place of happiness. I mean, why do we have in all these places and exams and everything, you know, in, in, in our life, tests in our life? Because these ensures whether we are actually worthy of moving into the next stage. So in our system of understanding of our life, the human project, if you want to think about it, this is a transitionary state in which we have to make sure that we are deserving of going to the next state. And we have the appropriate tools given. I mean, you and I, we are speaking with the faculty of intellect and choice and volition. And if we don't use it appropriately and we only use it for our material happiness, as you said, then, then you basically already lost in moving to the next step of your transition. Why would you stop yourself from raping the most beautiful woman that you see in the street? What's because stopping people, you? Because people uh, before you speak, I want to just explore something. Say, people will, you know... People will kill me if I do that. Go if people could not kill you, if you, had the, if you had enough money, just let me sit, set the scene and I want to see what your response is. Mm. Imagine now you have your own army, right? There are many Brazilian drug lords that used to be like that. You have your own army, you have the wealth, and then the next person you see, the most beautiful woman, you just grab her with your you know, army people, whatever they are, and they bring it to you and you rape her. And you do these things every day, you know, people you like, whether it's a man or woman, depending what your desires are, right? And then... Mm. Whatever pleases you. You see some, some persons, you know, um, you don't like them. What makes you happy? Because this person is speaking against you. You just kill them. You murder them, butcher them, whatever that you want. Whatever you, makes you happy and, and comfortable in terms of your, you know, what your heart's desire. So what's stopping you in taking, for example, heroin, ganja, hashish, marijuana, LSD, all these things that give people euphoria. They give happiness. Have you tried them? Have you tried... All of these narcotics and, you know, the psychedelics, magic mushrooms, these will give you more comfort in a certain way where your mind will open up to other worlds of, you know, you know, magic mushrooms, right? It will give you a lot of euphoric happiness. So if, you, if it's all about happiness, what is stopping you from doing that? What is stopping you from eliminating, say, for example, say that you don't like the white people, you kill them all. You don't like the black people, you kill them all. Because you don't like them, because they have become a, a nuisance, an obstacle for your happiness. You don't like the strong people who are stronger than you. So you just totally uh, annihilate them from existence with your, with your machines and whatever you've got in, in artillery and so on and so forth. If this was all about your joy and happiness, it seems like you're not getting the most of it out of it. There's more potential of doing that, but you are afraid that you're going to get caught. So I want to know, for example, if you had the opportunity and not going to get caught and punished and imprisoned or killed to rape people on the street, rape you know, the beautiful women out there, would you do it? Because it will make you happy. If, 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 if I am the most powerful person, powerful person on earth, I will definitely do it. And if, if, if my upbringing is like that... No, no, no. Not a, forget our upbringing is like that. We're not talking about hypothetical. As, okay, you are, so as you are, Kiran, as you are no. now, uh. if now somebody gives you all this power and authority, money, uh. wealth, resources, right? Makes you a, a drug lord and you are in, 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 say, South America somewhere, okay? Now you have all these opportunities in front of you. People come, you know, take the example of you know, rape, for example. You find if in that particular community... All these women, you just say, tomorrow I want this girl. The next day I want this girl. And they bring it to you and you rape them. Uh, you would do uh, it? I, I'll answer you, sir. Uh, yeah. With the current situation, uh, outright, if, 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 I be, if I'll be the drug lord, uh, if, I, if I given a chance that I'll be the drug lord or any, any, anybody, without considering my past experience or past accumulated uh, whatever experience I have, uh, without considering them, if I become a drug lord, then... Uh, wh what would stop me doing all this what you have mentioned? <laughs> definitely I'll be doing. So you would definitely but, go and rape someone, right? Uh, because it will make you happy. Is, just a second, sir. First thing is, I will not choose to be a drug lord with all my experience. No, 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 no. You missed. It, Kieran, see, can I, can listen, I can listen, clarify listen, something? Listen, listen. Can sir, I clarify listen. something before you proceed? I will let you speak. I just want to clarify something. Mm. I'm not asking your theoretical past life. You are now as you are with all your baggage of past life in terms of how many years you have lived your life, 10, 20, 30 years, I don't know how old you are. So whatever you've got, your accumulated 
experience, knowledge, and whatever you've got in terms of your moral virtues and vices, whatever that might be. Uh -huh. If given the opportunity now to make you a powerful, wealthy, rich individual like a Brazilian drug lord, I'm not, I'm not asking you to do opiums and all this business, drug uh -huh. trafficking, whatever. I'm saying you are giving this opportunity. Now, uh -huh. would you go, because you have in your means now to rape anyone, that will make you happy. Would you go and rape them? As of now, my conscience won't allow me to do that. Hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm totally lost now. What? Where does this conscious comes in? Mm. Why do you even bring conscious? What is your conscious? Where do you get the sir, idea of good sir, and bad from uh, in the first place? Sir, 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 you said that you'll, you'll let me answer. The thing yeah, is, go ahead. You have given me a hypothetical situation. In that hypothetical situation, you're not allowing me to use my experience. And then again, you're saying that you, you you are as if right now and you are given all the power so what what is stopping you to rape the uh, rape uh, uh, let's say rape, uh, raping a girl raping a woman what yeah. is stopping you to rape the woman my conscience will stop me if 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 my experiences are like that nothing matters much only thing i matters is uh, how how can i enjoy means i will definitely rape that girl well, well i i'm i'm not entirely sure what your answers are are actually what do you mean by your conscious? If that makes you happy, what mm. is it your conscious tells you that's something right or wrong? Are you saying you know something what is right or wrong? Mm. What is it grounded on? What is your right and wrong idea in your conscious grounded in? In myself, not disturbing others' life. Not disturbing others' life. Mm. So you're saying if someone, if they want to make their life happier by raping someone, you disagree with them? Yeah, I'll disagree with them. Why? Without without their consent, without their consent, if the raping itself is not consent, so it makes them I happy. Huh? It makes them happy. That's the purpose of their life. They don't care about God and the uh -huh. reason why they're created here, human beings are created here. All uh -huh. they're doing this hedonistic pleasure of their own ego, their soul, their, their, their own body. So if it makes it happy, it doesn't matter if it's going against someone's consent, someone's will, someone's volition. They will take the opportunity to make them happy. Why are you against that? It makes them happy. That's their way of life. That's the life they're living. Are you saying this is not a wo life worth living like that? I'm not saying that this is the life worth living like that, but you're disturbing their life. So what? It makes the person it, who it is raping happy. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter to them what I preach to them. What they will do, they will do. No, no, no. If it makes a rapist happy, uh. they are fulfilling their objective of life, correct? Yes, yes, correct. Yeah. So if that is the case, why would you even disagree? Because it makes them happy by fulfilling their objective of life. What, what, what we call the hedonism. Uh, uh, sir, you, uh, what you're saying is that I'm I'm not stopping him to do that one. Only thing is I'm I, I'm uh, against that uh, raping. That's it. What I'm saying. Why that. would you be against rape? Because uh, I don't. Uh, what what you can say is uh, disturbing others' life without their consent. Okay. So, mm. do you eat animals? Yeah. Do you take their consent? No. So you have no problem in even harming, killing animals without mm. taking their consent? Yes, yes. I'm sadistic in that way. I'm killing the animals for my purpose. Yeah. So why would you disagree with someone if they rape another woman without their consent? Be consistent. That's my limitation, sir. No, I don't understand your limitation. You I want, want you, you to... Uh, if you want to me, me to be consistent all the way, I cannot... So now you realize the mm. life you're living is mm. full of contradictions and inconsistencies in your ideology. If you lived a life as a Muslim, they will be throughout consistency. They will not be this kind of... Same way, just, a second, sir, just a second, sir. If the same way, uh, you, are, you will be eating non-veg, right? You're not taking any consent of the animal. Ah, God has given us the consent. Uh -huh. God has given us the permission already. Then... I, uh, okay, that answer means then I, I, I'll I give myself uh, the consent. To well, kill you the don't animal. have the power to give consent because you did not create them. God did. 
Do you see the difference? God is the owner, creator of animals. He has mm. given us the permission to consume them, not to abuse them and make them suffer. There's a whole way of just, you know, how consuming animals only as much as we need rather than just killing them for fun, like some people do in certain countries like in England. You know, they, they hunt with their foxes and so on, right? You, you, Kiran, you are not, you are not the creator of animals, so you cannot give consent. Ah, sir, 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 listen, listen. Even then, we are on the same bench. Even I accept that God is there. Even I accept that God has given me the consent. Where did God give you consent? Where? To kill the animal. Where? Which God? Huh? Huh? Where? Which God? God the, God, the creator. No. God, the creator, did not tell you in your hmm. book called the Book of Kiran. God hmm. has given books like the Quran and is specifically mentioned do's and don'ts. Permissions and impermiss impermissibilities. You don't follow that, as you've established earlier on. You don't care about God's do's and don'ts. You have your own book, which is the book of Kiran. Now, mm. not having difficulty in a consistent life of living, you are now resorting back to the book of the Quran, for example. You can't have both ways. You either live your life giving the full submission and gratitude to God, or you just live your life accordingly, which you have devised, and you face the consequence in the hereafter. I mean, you seem to be quite happy to be burning in hell in the hereafter. That's your choice. I mean, we can just tell you that it's not a good one to make, but if you want to make a choice in which you know that the consequences are there clearly, hell for eternal lifetime, no death, no coming back, you will be punished and you'll be suffering. But you're willingly embracing that. If you're willingly embracing that, that's your choice, your consequences. I am not going to be responsible or blameworthy for anything like that. In fact, you know, I will be a witness against you in the day of judgment that we tried our best for the last one and a half hour or more, but yet you persisted on in your satisfying of your own ego, knowing that it didn't make sense, it was contradictory, inconsistent, and so on. So, you know, the stake is on your court. I mean, if the consequences is like this, you know, you have to be ready for it. But are you going to be ready for it? Are you really going to be ready for burning in for one second in hellfire? And we are talking about eternity. As often as your skin are roasted through in hellfire, whoever goes there, God will create, recreate rather, fresh skin so that they can feel the pain. And you and I didn't know before at one point why this is the case. We understand now the mechanism because our pain receptors are underneath the skin. So if your skin were burnt, you would not feel pain anymore. But God ensures that these people, they suffer injustice. Yeah, Justice is, is done to them and they have now a fresh layer of skin every time they are burnt so they can feel the pain. That is the justice of God because of their persistent, arrogant, stubborn disbelief in this life. I mean, we can go through to establish why the Quran is from God and cannot be any from anyone else other than God. We can establish why Prophet Muhammad is from, you know, from God, a prophet and messenger. But it seems like you are not willing to even think about this idea that, okay, okay, I need to submit to God. Instead, you have your own ego, which drives you to make into a belief system. I mean, if you're happy with that, you know, let's be it like that. That's it. Just leave it. There's no need to say, you know, you know what, I, I need to become a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew, whatever. The life is yours. Here and in the hereafter, and you make the transition based on what you choose here. Yes, yes. Uh, just let me speak for one minute, sir. May I? Yeah, go, uh, ahead. go, Kiran. Yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, uh, so the thing is, you're saying that all the skin is peeling off and then getting is uh, getting new skin and uh, and anything, anything that that is a torture. Normally, who does the torture in, in our present life? Do you know what justice is? Justice. A, a psychopath. A psychopath does that. Just one second, one second, one second. Kieran, so, so Kieran, want, we have to, God, God, do you understand the concept Kieran. of justice? We, 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 just to see, just, uh, just yeah. see, the just, uh, see sir, 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 sorry, sir, I'm, uh, I just said that. Because I think we need to clarify that point. What is justice uh, to you? Yes, yes. So what is, what is the justice we are speaking? First you tell that, sir. Sure. Let me give you an example. Someone mm. rapes your family member. Mm. You would expect justice to happen, right? Mm. The criminal shouldn't be paid with chocolates and flowers, would you? 
you don't consider like, oh, people now they bring all these chocolates and flowers and monies and gifts because they raped your family member. Would you do the same? Like, okay, oh, thank you so much. You've raped my family member. We're not going to mention the names of the family members or, or relationship. I don't want to make it too personal. Just say family member. Would you go and say, oh, there you go. Here's my other family member. And there you go, the oldest gifts for you. Or would you want this criminal to be somehow justice to be served on by some kind of punitive measure? Punitive measure. Yes, yes, definitely. But then I'll give you the situation this way. One second, okay. one second. When okay. you do punitive measure, uh, it's an inflictment of what? Joy or pain? Suffer pain. pain. Right. Pain. So do you agree in this case, this suffering, this pain is justified or is it unjustified? It's completely justified. Kalas, that's it. I don't have to say anything else. God's okay. punishment. Then, uh, just a second. God, just one a second. second. You will explain. Uh. But what I'm saying, uh, my conclusion is this. Uh. God's punishment in the hereafter is mm. fully justified. Okay. You, you're done, sir? Yeah. Uh, so the thing is, uh, now for me, being justice uh, for uh, peeling of the skin and all for what what am i doing i am doing not just i'm i'm just not obeying him let's take if a person if, if in this human world if i'm not obeying a person and if i'm getting that that kind of punishment what would you say to the person who is giving the judgment can't you say that he is a sadist no just for not obeying just for not obeying so, him you, you don't not obeying so, him, referring so, to just, he's just being a very peaceful i listen I wait, listen wait, wait, everything, wait. sir. So, so, I listen Kieran, everything. Kieran, 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 calm down. Compl just Kieran, let me Kieran calm, calm down. Calm, Kieran, calm. Kieran, brother Kieran, calm down, please. Kieran, please uh, calm down. I, I was just... We're, we're not here I to argue just, with you. Okay, so calm down. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I know. Uh, look, look, look well, one moment, one moment. One moment. Let's take a deep breath because we've been on for almost 90 minutes. I, I know it gets stressful. Uh, we're not here one, to stress each other out. Okay, 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 okay. I answer. No, no, just give me a second. Just give, give us a second. To, I, I want to make a point first. Huh? Let me complete my point, sir. I, okay, I, I'll speak point. very slowly and I'll tell you, sir. Okay, thank if you. If I'm not thank obeying, you. Yeah, please, please, not, please don't get stressed. Yeah. Uh, if I'm Go not, ahead. if I'm not obeying a person, and then I'm getting punished for just not being obeyed, and that punishment is very brutal. Means, what kind of person is that person just for not obeying him? Rest okay, everything but... is good. Sure. Let me take your example and explain. So God says, do not rape. And somebody raped. And God yeah. punishes them with some pain. You're saying, why am I getting punished? Because I disobeyed God. When God says, do not rape, and I raped. And why am I getting punished? Do you want to explain that? I, I can't explain that because he, he, he did some crime. I, did any, I didn't do any crime. What, 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 one second, one second. He, he, you are objecting to the idea... <laughs> That God, um, God just says, do something, don't do something. It's about all about obeying God and not disobeying. Obeying and not disobeying. I'm saying God says, this is his command for us to obey. Do not rape. So someone starts raping. And then God says, because you disobeyed my command, I told you not to do that. Now you're going to be punished. Here it's the punishment. Pain. No. You are no, what, saying, what? you are saying, you are saying, Kiran, no, how can it be? Because this is unjust. No, Isn't no, no, that what you're saying? What uh, Kiran is saying, let, no, let me explain. What Kiran is saying, that he is not doing any of this. He's simply not following God's instructions. Okay? So he's not raping, he's not committing crimes, but he's just living his life. He's not following God. He uh, And he doesn't basically... Uh, obey God's instructions. So now, now, God commands, Kiran, God commands to help the poor and the needy. Yes? Yes. And if you don't follow, if you don't follow, you don't help the poor and the needy, then you're saying you don't deserve punishment, correct? No, that's not the thing what I'm saying is. Okay, what, what are I'm you saying, saying is, yeah. I, I I don't have any. Uh, let's say let's take Quran this one. I I, ha I have not been introduced Quran till my 25, uh, 25th year. But okay. even before that one, when I got a job, I was doing the service. Okay. Hmm. I'm helping the poor. Okay. 
So what change does it make? What change does it make? No, as as I said, look, remember mm. I gave you the example earlier that you are doing all the good things. Mm. You're helping the poor, you're helping the needy, but you just don't want to say that you're following God. You just you 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 want to do it because you feel like doing it, correct? Yes, because okay. I'm doing okay. it before the introduction of God to me. Oh, okay, but why would you not acknowledge God? Is it because of arrogance, negligence, or just selfish behavior? Which which one is because there's there's I mean it has to be one of these. Which one which one which one is it? If God exists, which you have mm. already acknowledged, you mm. made very you made it very clear that you're convinced that God exists. is all powerful mm. all wise but you're saying you will do all the good things but you won't acknowledge that god commands to do these things that's why you're doing them you you will do them out of your own desire your own uh, you know your good character let's say right yes but yes you won't acknowledge god you won't follow god's instructions specifically is it because of negligence is it because of ignorance or arrogance which one is it yeah. is it because i was doing it since the introduction of god to me so that, so maybe you don't have a good introduction of god maybe you need to learn you need, maybe need to, you need to know god more would you agree that's what sir even without the knowledge of god and what god is saying i was doing this so what's yeah, wrong now to acknowledge you? why why to it, acknowledge now no because god deserves mm. the acknowledgement it's like it's not it's like you know when you know someone has done you favors and you don't acknowledge them it's like if i help you if i help you and you turn mm. around and say you don't even say thank you to me is that a good person no it's a bad person that's a bad person now mm. stay with that stick to that if that's a bad person someone mm. who gave you life your parents your children your education someone who gave you oxygen to breathe forget about everything else someone mm. who gives you life every day mm. the sunshine the wind the the climate the fact that you can do all these things someone and you don't thank them is that a good person will my thank matter to them matter it doesn't matter it doesn't it doesn't matter it does, right it does, mm. it doesn't it doesn't matter it it's mm. it's what you are as a person what do your principles tell you do your principles tell you teach you to thank someone who has done you favors or just ignore them and walk away like like a rude person probably i am being rude to god but uh, i've been habituated no, to that, that it's way. not probably it's definitely because this yes, yes. okay okay uh, i i'm being rude to god and this has to change if you can mm. be kind to human beings you can say thank you to them if someone gives you a cup of coffee you say thank you someone brings food to you say thank you someone gives you way on the road uh, you say thank you someone helps you cross the road you say thank you okay but when it comes to the creator who gives you who, who gives you everything on daily basis you wouldn't be walking you wouldn't be talking you wouldn't be eating if it wasn't for the creator for your god the one who created you how can you not thank him how does that make sense and thanking him is believing in him and worshiping him that's it that's it that's all it is he doesn't thanking want him, he thanking doesn't him want is him. not just acknowledging him huh? no thanking him acknowledging him that you are my god i love you for the fact that you have created me you have given me all this and i will respect you and i will follow you that's it a simple and, thank you wouldn't be enough huh? and a, a simple look a simple how how do you how do you thank how do you thank people god god teaches us how to thank him god mm. teaches us he wants us to take care of poor the needy you're thanking god by the way when you are taking care of the poor the needy the animals the environment you're not harming others you're being a good person you are thanking god by this these are all forms of worship you just need to acknowledge that you're doing this because you want to thank god you want to please god you want to worship him these are all forms of worship maybe you have a conception in your mind that worshiping is only bowing to god five times a day worshiping is only going to makkah and fasting in the month of ramadan no 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 worshiping is even smiling our prophet said prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la tahkiranna min al ma'ruf shay'a walaw an talqa akhaka bi wajhin taliq don't belittle any of your good deeds even smiling at your brother so in islam even smiling is a is an act of worship 
In Islam, removing something harmful from the road is, a, is an act of worship. In Islam, giving water to a thirsty dog is an act of worship. Is In Islam, giving orphan food, clothing an orphan, educating an orphan is, a, is an act of worship. So we are all in a state of worship. Now, then I've you been are already, doing that. Yeah, and, you, and you're doing that. What you need to do is, you need to mm -hmm. say, I am doing it because I love God and I'm thanking God like this. That's all you need to do. You're already <laughs> doing it. You just need to, uh, because I asked you earlier, why would you not acknowledge God and thank Him by doing these things? Is it arrogance? Is it ignorance or negligence? Which one, which one is it? It's, it's one of the three. Which, what do you think is your problem? Arrogance, ignorance or negligence? Which one is it? First will be, uh, what you say, ignorance. I don't know about God, but still I am doing oh, it. Okay, brilliant. And then, and then uh, after some time, when I got introduced to God, then uh, probably it will, probably not. Definitely it is negligence. Anyway, nothing matters. So, so, so why, it's, why it's not arrogance. In your case, it's not arrogance. It's not arrogance. Very good. Now, you see, we uh, ignorance and negligence can be treated. It can be dealt with. So what you do is your ignorance is removed by reading more about your God, by getting to know him. Read the Quran, as I advised earlier. Read the Quran. And once your ignorance is removed, your negligence will also be removed. As a consequence, your increase in knowledge, your negligence will be removed. You will become more and more dedicated to God because he's the one you will acknowledge and, and then you will thank him for everything once you understand him and know him. So that's the solution. So as I said earlier, Kiran, you're already a Muslim by conviction. You already believe in Islam when it comes to beliefs uh, and, uh, and, and the philosophy. You just need to learn. You need to, need to grow in knowledge. Maybe read the Quran and once your knowledge of God grows, once you understand and uh, learn about Allah, your creator, God, then you will start worshipping him as well, inshallah. Th that's a natural process. Does that make sense? Okay, I mm -hmm. I'll try to find what Quran so, is Kir saying. Yeah, so, so Kiran, going back to the earlier example, let me, so remember, remember your... Ex re Sorry, Kiran, there's a bit of a delay, I think. Um, Yes. Going back to the earlier example, remember when we talked about you being an em employed and you were working for your worker? Imagine you're doing all of this hard work, but nobody has employed you, right? You're, you're, you're turning up at the office every day. You're, you're supposedly sitting at a desk and you do all this every single day, but nobody has employed you. You're not doing it for any employer. Will you get paid? If there is no employer, how will I get paid? I will not be getting any payment. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, so right, just like that. So mm. doing good actions without recognizing Allah means means you will not the afterlife. You will not get any reward. So it's yeah. just like working, busy working with no employer, expecting to get paid, and you will receive nothing. A complete waste of your life and a complete waste of your efforts. So we are saying to you, nobody's forcing you. We are saying, don't waste your life. Don't waste the strength and the intellect and the and all of these skills that Allah has given you. Use them, recognize Allah, and then you will get paid in this life and you will get paid in the afterlife, inshallah. Yes, sir. God willing. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, then, sir. Only thing is, I differ with afterlife. And that's it. Apart from that one, we are on the same page. That's okay, a payday. So we can... So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, payday. that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's a payday. payday. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that's not a payday. Well, how do afterlife, you know that? Afterlife is the main life. This life is just temporary, my friend. It's like when, you're preparing when you die, for... What happens to you? When you die, yeah. what happens to you? What, sir? When you and I die, what happens to us? I don't know. Right. Are you going to gamble in this ignorance? Like, I don't know. What if? The reality is what we what we've described. Then in when that judgment day, who will be no, at a loss? You I will be at a loss. Kiran already acknowledges that. Kiran already acknowledges there is a God. He alone deserves to be worshipped. He alone deserves the respect and honor because he is one. Okay, and he already acknowledges that uh, he has communicated with us. He just needs to go and find that communication, learn from it, and see what this God wants from us. Once he establishes that relationship, I believe Kiran will make 
good progress, inshallah. Yes. And, and by the okay, way, Kiran, so... once you establish this, in that mm -hmm. guidance, the only reason we believe there is an afterlife is because in the revelation, which we believe to be true, it tells us. So once you establish what Brother uh, Ustad Adnan said, it is almost without exception, you have to then believe in all these unseen things because we haven't seen the afterlife. We haven't seen heaven or hell. We believe yeah. them by virtue of the fact that we know the revelation is 100% the word of God. That's why. So, so you do exactly what Ustad Adnan has said, then your doubts about the afterlife will be removed, God willing. Okay, okay. That was well, a wonderful not... conversation, Kiran. Uh, by yeah, by all means, yeah. I too, had a great time. I too had a great time with you guys. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, look, uh, if you have I any know. questions, feel free to email us. Feel free to drop us an email or join on the next stream. God willing, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You take care. And, and promise me you will start reading the Quran, Kiran. Ah, I'll start reading the Quran, sir. And say from now on that you're a Muslim. If anyone asks you but... who you are, just that, to, I you already can, said just to yourself. Yeah. You can say it to yourself. You don't need to tell anybody. You can say it to yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he no, is no, saying no. he's a Muslim. <laughs> Kiran, no. Kiran is saying he just needs conviction and knowledge and, and some, some confidence. Yeah. So you'll Absolutely. get that from the Quran. You'll get that from oh. the Quran. Okay, okay. Bye. Bye, people. Yeah, Kiran, very nice. All right. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for joining. Great conversation. God thank you. Bless. God bless you. you Have a great day. Allah thank guide you and Allah take you. I mean, I mean. Thank you. Right. You that was a long conversation. I thought we had a limit of 20 minutes. <laughs> well, we are, was, but I, just so everybody knows, we seem to have, be having some technical problems uh, in the background. Yeah. So our live <laughs> chat, for <laughs> some reason, has been frozen. Great so that's the reason we cannot highlight your, your comments on the live chat, unfortunately. But uh, we do read them when we are not... Uh, you know, having a conversation here. So, inshallah, not that we're ignoring you. Just off Look, there, there are many people like Kiran in India and in other parts of the world who are mm. basically Muslim. They are intellectually, rationally, they are Muslim. They believe in these yeah. concepts. They just, someone needs to break them down and explain to them logically and they will accept like Kiran accepted. So, so many people, even though the conversation was very long, I'm pretty sure... Many people will watch and inshallah learn from it. And you don't know what, what works for what works for who. You don't know. So there might be something someone may be struggling with and they get an answer, inshallah, from this conversation. Hopefully, inshallah. I mean. Yeah. So there are some people in the back chat, uh, Raghav and Moses. You need to verify your ID using your camera. So just switch it on a few seconds in the back chat and then switch it off again. All right. Thanks, mm -hmm. Moses. Uh, Raghav, I can't see you. It's still coming white screen. So you need to verify. I'm going to let the others in in the meantime. Uh, yeah. This guy, Jacob, Jacob, has been waiting. Yeah, for a long time. Hi, Jacob. Are you there? Awake? Asleep? Assalamualaikum. Oh, <laughs> uh, you, got, you guys can hear me on my audible because I'm driving right now. Yes, we can't hear you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Alhamdulillah. How are you guys doing? We can hear you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Yeah. How are you? All right. Uh, I'll start off like with a quick introduction, just real quick, and then I'll ask my questions. They're very short ones, so they won't even exceed 20 minutes, inshallah. Uh, okay. Uh, Adnan, uh, I want to say that for me, you have been a extremely large inspiration, and I've tried to cover every inch of information that you would let out and download all sorts of different platforms just to get that one extra quote that you would get from one book but because of you i inshallah i'm trying to pursue learning german and learning french so i can have access to different historical resources is because regarding the history of Islam, a lot of the literature is uh, primarily I ended up indulging a lot and studying Arabic. So you've always said about uh, uh, 
and you is it me or is it Jacob that's cutting off a little bit? Yeah, he's uh, he's got a connection yeah. issue. Yeah. We can't we can't hear Jacob. I think it's because he's driving. Come on. And also the connection's oh, Jacob. Oh. Yeah. Jacob, you seem to be losing connection. Okay. So 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 what was so the last while, thing? While um while he's doing this, let me just speak. Okay, Jacob, thank go, you. So go ahead, Jacob. We didn't hear you. Thank you so yeah, much. Well, what was the last thing you heard? <laughs> we heard yeah. that you were pursuing some French and German. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? It stopped up there. Wow. Yeah. So I said, I'm pursuing learning French and German because a lot of the literature about the history of Islam is covered by Orientalists. And a lot of the manuscripts, for example, for Tariq al-Tabari, or Makrizi, or Idrisi, all of these things have been done by the likes of French Rosenthal, and yeah. Pierre Durim and all, all these figures. And so uh, you've always said, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, which is that we have plenty of surgeons, we have plenty of doctors, we have plenty of engineers, but we barely have any historians. And I just wanted to say thank you, alhamdulillah, because that's the path that I wish to pursue, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, and Allah bless you, and Allah give you strength and courage Amen. and reward for your efforts. And believe me, we need more and more historians uh, because our history is really miskeen. It is miskeen on so many levels that I just can't describe uh, all all those all those areas and levels uh, in a short uh, sitting like this. But we really need more and more historians, people studying our history, specializing in different uh, dynasties, different kings, different cultures. Different. There are so many ways to study. So may Allah bless you. May Allah give you strength and keep going. Keep going. It's really encouraging to hear from you thank you so much allah bless you i mean i mean inshallah so my, my my questions were regarding history right so uh i tried sifting through a lot of uh, materials and usually what what i saw the pattern was the earlier the book or i guess the older the book the better if it's written somewhere around the 1800s or very early 1900s it tends to be more truthful and it quotes far more primary sources than it does secondary sources unlike many books today so i wanted to ask if there are any books on uh that you would uh recommend and it doesn't matter how advanced it is uh regarding primarily first the ottoman empire and then the second one is regarding the medieval european age because sorry i'm like walking over water right now Maybe there's background noise, sorry. Yeah, and the second one is primarily like the state of medieval Europe. I tried reading uh, The History of the Intellectual Development by John William Draper. I looked at Samuel P. Scott's History of the Moorish Empire in Europe, uh, but I couldn't really find anything else that's in detail. And then the last thing I would ask is, uh, what, what is it uh, or what, why is it that you think the Pact of Omar is a forgery in some sense or pseudonymous? Okay, so let's take them one by one very quickly. Uh, the Pact of Umar, basically, uh, is it comes in two forms. One is called Shurutul Umariya, and one is called Ahd al Umariya. Okay, Shurutul Umariya are basically attributed uh, to Umar the Second, Umar bin Abdulaziz, whereby Christians had written a letter imposing restrictions on themselves, which is why many scholars. Uh, Western and Islamic, they question the, the authenticity of that particular pact, which has been used by many uh, academics and anti-Islam activists to claim that this, this was the norm, which, which isn't the case. That wasn't the norm. The Pact of Umar or Shurut al-Umariya do not actually come from Umar bin Khattab, number one. They, are, they don't come from Sharia. and They're not even authentic. What we do have, however, on the other hand, is the the uh, the the agreement Omar uh, of Omar the agreement Omar between Patriarch Sophronius of Jerusalem and Omar bin Khattab radiallahu an and this agreement was uh, struck or agreed upon in the year 637 CE 15 Hijri and the text can be found entirely in the history of Imam Ibn Jarir al Tabari okay so that is the authentic text that can be attributed to Umar bin Khattab with some confidence. Okay, I don't even know if it, if it stands the test of scrutiny when it comes to the science of Hadith, 
or uh, like we scrutinize hadith literature i don't know if it stands that scrutiny but uh, it is there it is uh, in imam ibn jarir al-tabari's history it is called the agreement of jerusalem or the pact of omar uh, uh, in jerusalem so that's that's a more accurate one vis-a-vis uh, shurut al-umariya or the pact of omar later on used by academics and scholars to claim that this was the norm which isn't the case and it doesn't make sense for christians to write a letter imposing uh, uh, imposing restrictions on themselves and then agreeing uh, to them so this is the first uh, response to your question secondly with regards to medieval europe there is this is a huge topic uh, medieval europe has many many branches this this is a huge discipline um and in some universities you have departments called medieval europe okay so it depends which part of medieval europe you want to study or which particular aspect of medieval europe you want to study then i can recommend books on that not that i'm an expert or an authority on that but i have i, I my i did my studies on medieval europe for my my bachelor's and my masters so i am aware of basic sources uh, on medieval europe the first point you raised was uh, about uh, i forgot the the first point you raised yeah uh yeah so the first one was about uh the ottomans books on that and oh the, the ottomans one is uh, the medieval you, are, europe and i said uh, I prefer primary, books that are are you asking about primary, primary sources, sources. Are, or a good treatment of ottoman history are you, are you asking about primary sources or secondary sources Uh, okay, I just realized there was a delay from my side. My apologies. Yeah. You no, know, so I, I was just pointing out a critique, which is a lot of modern day academics. They quote like, "This scholar said, this scholar said, this scholar said," and they barely go into like the Latin text, the Armenian text, the, the Gregorian text. So I'd prefer like a very academic work that deals with just the Ottomans and likewise for medieval Europe. It's not one book for both of them at the same time. And you can give me as many, many of them as you want, and as advanced as it can be. It doesn't matter to me. You see, the the benefit of reading uh, modern scholars is that they save you from a lot of, um, a lot of uh, hard work in looking for primary sources uh, from different periods. So, if someone's done a PhD uh, on Ottoman history, uh, then you have to give them some respect. They may have biases, they may have prejudice, they may, they may be even spin doctors. okay but if they demonstrate knowledge it is always worth reading them as 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 an advanced student of history not for basic learners i would never advise academic works for basic learners for basic learners i would advise simpler books like small narratives basic uh narrative histories rather than going into academic books academic is academic books are for specialists so a basic work i always recommend is caroline finkel uh osman's dream um okay there's another one called uh, 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 uh sorry lord of the horizons uh, lords of horizons i don't know if you've seen these ones okay so these are basic treatments uh then there is there are works of halil and analsik who is a turkish who was a turkish historian uh pretty secular but he did a good job in telling the history of the ottomans halil analsik some of these histories can be boring because of the detail and the technicalities they discuss so they can be boring for the first first uh, f- first time learner but then you have to be patient if you want to be advanced i hope i'm making sense so there is, there, there are two different categories yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so for uh, beginners uh, uh, my, uh... yeah for beginners i wouldn't recommend big books or academic books for beginners i would advise basic narrative histories uh like 100 or 200 pages on ottoman empire like introduction to the ottoman empire there are plenty of books uh with simple basic details okay but for for academics people who, who wish to pursue uh advanced studies in ottomans that they, they, that's a different league then you have oxford cambridge scholars who have published on different aspects of the ottomans uh so those are the works you need to consult and i have a huge section of ottoman history in my library my personal library so maybe one day i can go through that and introduce that section yeah, so start, start ex- uh, i don't mean to interrupt you because there's like a delay from yeah on my side uh yeah i just noticed there 
So also with regards to other, uh, you know, periods of history, the same goes for them as well. Because there are basic. I have them. Sorry, uh, we, we can't hear you. Okay, we've lost Jacob. I ho Jacob, I hope I have answered your questions. And inshallah, continue, pursue. Uh, you're doing well, and uh, you've read some good books. John William Draper, by the way, I would like to mention, it, he wrote this excellent work on the history of the intellectual development of Europe in two volumes. Uh, I have quoted from it uh, in many of my talks and lectures. It's an excellent work. He has written another book on... Uh, uh, the notion of conflict between uh, reason and religion uh, or science and religion for that matter. Uh, so he was a 19th century um, historian who did an excellent job in documenting the intellectual history of Europe. In this book, he states that the Europeans deliberately hide the Islamic element in the development of European intellect. Okay. So he actually highlights specifically in specific words that the Europeans hide deliberately uh, information that gives us the Islamic element, the Islamic uh, influence on European mind. Okay, so he, he highlighted this in the 19th century, in the mid 19th century. It's an excellent book, but many more books have been written uh, since then, of course. Um, and again, I can do some book recommendations on this, inshallah, in the future, if Allah permits. Yeah, hello, can you guys uh, hear me? I disconnected for a second. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I, I couldn't hear uh, some parts of what you said. But Jazakallah khair. Yeah, so for me, uh, I, like I said, I don't want to sound arrogant. I think that's the last thing I said and I cut off. Uh, I've, the, uh, the ones you mentioned that are introductory, uh, I've already read them and I've come across them. Uh, for me, I'm trying to get something more advanced and to, to give an idea, uh, like I've, I've I have and I've read uh, multiple uh, primary accounts such as the Bidayah and Nihaya, or I bought Tariq al Tabari, or for the Crusade, something like Ibn al Athir or Sabah bin Muqtiv. And for me, I always try to get the best of the best editions. So I look at Philip Hittai's, uh, you know, investigations of the manuscripts for Sabah bin Muqtiv, or Franz Rosenthal's for uh, Tariq al Tabari. So for me, I, I don't mind, like I said, how voluminous and large the book is. Uh, <laughs> Keep going, brother. You're doing as, well. As big as you want, like I said. You're, you're doing better than me. Keep going, please. Mashallah. What do you mean? Okay, we lost you again, Jacob. Jacob yeah, yeah. Uh, hello? Yeah, I've said a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, I, I said, what do you mean? Why, why am I doing better? <laughs> oh, you're doing better because you're dealing with the, the big boys. You're dealing with the big boys, Tabari and uh, Ibn Kathir, al Bidawa and Nihaya, and even Ibn Khuldun and Ibn Lathir, you know, uh, Al-Kamil, the Tariq. Uh, once you have gone through these works, you're a giant on Islamic history. So let me let me make then, uh, uh, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if, I, if I got the green light then from a uh, I'd not get some uh, going on this path then. <laughs> because for me, my, my, my ultimatum goal uh, is to make like a mark and an imprint on this earth. And inshallah, I, I'm already working on a YouTube video. Uh, you might hear about my name uh, one week or two weeks from now, inshallah, but I'll remain anonymous until then. Uh, but for, for me, like I really, really want to engage in history. It's a passion for me. And, uh, you know, when, when you said we, uh, Islamic history is just being treated very poorly. And when I, I remember when you recommended the Hidden Depth and I read that and uh, Jazari said that there is about 10 million manuscripts uncovered. That's when... I felt sorrow for, for, I think, a good few days. So and there I got up and said, all right, I'm going to get things into my own hands. I, I think I got what Jacob is saying. And he, he you know, Jacob, wallahi, you, you are an exception. Uh, and the depth you have already gone into is absolutely amazing. The, the names you are mentioning, the books 
are absolutely amazing. They're encyclopedic. In particular, Hidden Debt to the Islamic Civilization is, is an ex excellent book. It's an absolute uh, encyclopedia of information on the development of Muslim civilization and how facts about it were suppressed throughout uh, European history. So absolutely amazing uh, works you have mentioned. And Wallahi, may Allah bless you. And I look forward to hearing back from you very, very soon. You may not be able to hear me right now because your internet is weak, but hear me out afterwards. Uh, you can watch this recording later on. And let's get in touch and work together if we can, inshallah. May Allah bless you. Would love to know you and know more about you, inshallah, because uh, you, you, you seem pretty serious about history. May Allah bless you. And this is what we need, brothers and sisters. It really brings joy to me when I hear from people like Jacob who have been moved by some of the... Some yeah, of yeah, the... Fun. I'm, I'm disconnecting. I just... I want to say I love you all. Jazakallah khair, Ustaz Adnan. And assalamu alaikum because I'm disconnecting a lot and I got to get going. Uh, but I'll, sure. I'll be listening to this, inshallah, after I uh, leave. So Jazakallah al khair and assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wallahi, very inspirational hearing back from brothers like Jacob who are seriously pursuing history. And this is my one of my missions in life to inspire the Muslim youth about the history, the magnificent history of Islam, uh, the great uh, history of Islam, so that we can start studying it, start owning it, start teaching it, rather than leaving it to uh, hostile entities or not so sympathetic entities. We should teach our own history and treat it well. And the best way to do that is to start reading, start studying. Some of the things, some of the sources Brother Jacob mentioned, they are absolutely are absolute must uh, for any basic Muslim historian to read uh, the history of Imam Ibn Jarid al-Tabri, the history of Islam, uh, Tariq al-Umam, uh, Tariq al-Umam al muluk it's called, then uh, the history of Imam Ibn Kathir al-Bidaab al nihaya al-Kamil fit-Tariq, al-Kamil fit-Tariq by uh, Imam Ibn Lathir, then Ibn Khuldun's history, we have Masudi, Yaqubi, who had Tashayyo, by the way, both of them, Yaqubi and Masudi had Tashayyo, but they wrote amazing histories, and there are many, many more, like Futuhul Buldan by Imam al Baladuri. Then we have Tariqul Khulafa by Imam al Sayyuti. These are some basic works we should look, look into to have some appreciation of the early history, history of Islam and the, the Umayyad Empire and the Abbasids. And then later on, we can study the Ottomans, the Mughals, the Ubids, the Mamluks, and all of those, inshallah. And Al Andalus, of course. Oh, right, who do we have next? Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Jazakallah uh, for taking me. Uh, I've been patiently waiting for about, I think, two hours or so. Uh, yeah, thanks for your patience, brother. Yes, uh, I specifically want to speak to Adnan Rashid Sahib. Um, uh, I am an Ahmadi Muslim. I had listened to his debate recently with, I think, with, he was referring to it as a discussion, but his, his tone was of a debate. <laughs> Let's be very honest about it. Um, so there's a few questions that, that, that I wanted to ask. I mean, the conversation so far, it was wonderful that how you spoke to, you gave so much time to an atheist there, and he was explaining the concept of ibadah, that it doesn't, it doesn't simply relate to us worshipping Allah, five daily prayers, but it goes beyond that, right? So, so and, and, and a question came to my mind then that, you know, in Surah Hajj al-Mati says, Fajdani bu rijsa min al-awfani, wajdani bi qawla zur. Yeah, that shun therefore the abomination of idols and shun all words of untruth. And our Rasulullah yeah. sallam, has also told us that kafabil mar'i ithman an yuhaditha bi kulli ma samia. That it is enough for a person to be considered a liar if he states whatever he hears. Okay. Yes. So yeah. I was listening to that, that discussion of yours with uh, Imam Noonan. And you, you mentioned something with regards to, because I've been, a, I've been an Ahmadi Muslim all my life. I've okay. studied the works of uh, Hazrat Mizah Ghulam Ahmad, who we consider the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Okay. And where you specifically mentioned with regards to a reference and you said, um, uh, uh, apologies, uh, you know, I'm only quoting what you were saying, right? Uh, because uh, as, 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 as you probably know. Now, I want to ask you, where is this reference from? So that I can, because when I've gone back to that, that, that statement, that reference is nowhere to be found <coughs> in Urdu language, first of all, right? The word that's used there is, what is that word? I want to ask you first, please. Okay. You know the word in Arabic language, what the word is used there? Dhurriyatul Bagaya, right? Okay, Dhurriyatul Bagaya is, is the word that is used. And do you know that the Promised Messiah has used this word for someone else as well? Elsewhere? Okay. He's, yeah. called, he's called someone Ibn Bagha. 
and he okay. has translated as you know how he has translated that word as okay i'm okay. asking you a question please let, yeah yeah i will i will let's take please. it step by step first thing please. is first uh, okay. you you said kanjri ka bachcha yes what do you what do you understand from it uh son of an adulterer as you were saying you know what 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 whatever you were saying there is, is that is that a correct uh, is that a correct understanding of the term the term kanjri ka bachcha but that's so you say that again in english yes it, that's the no, correct it, that it would be in, in english no. would that be would that be a would be, would would that be a correct rendition of the term or terminology um, uh, from from arabic or from son, urdu son, english son of a prophet no oh, we lost adnan there you know, brother uh, brother adnan i hope we can okay. take him back because i've been waiting for 2 hours because this will really help me as well learn yeah 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 i mean this will help you improve your patience as well i mean think about that i'm waiting for 2 hours <laughs> patiently waiting for 2 hours yeah, you know what i'm saying no, no i'm so, saying if, if this is a lesson for patience as well so if you yeah. now impatient then there's a lot, lot more to learn i mean i think I it's a connection it's a connection I, issue bro have patience yeah but so two just, hours he didn't have no connection issue i mean why is it happen now i mean what i'm saying is yes, since yes. as we waiting for him to join Yeah. Take this as an example of patience, you know, example of patience. We need to learn as Muslims to be patient. And if you just absolutely, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Brother, brother Mansur, sure. can I ask you something as well? Can I ask you a question? Brother, yeah, so sure. you, you, you both of you guys are very learned, brother Hashim, brother Mansur. We, we see you guys on YouTube debating Christians and all of these things, okay? Ahmed, where are, where are you calling from? I'm calling from London. Okay. okay. And yes, are you are you Ahmadi? Yes, I said very clearly at the beginning. I'm an Ahmadi. Okay, I, no because I was uh, You know, yes, like yes. chatting to someone in the back chat. That's why I must yeah. have missed it. Yeah, can I? So, 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 my question is, and and you know, the old discussion that you have with 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 all of these different people, Christians, all of these things, Allah the Almighty tells us tells us, "Wajadil hum billati hi ahsan." Okay, why is it when it comes to Ahmadi Muslims that you have this approach of of just reviling their founder, right? Where you know, in the Holy Quran, Allah the Almighty says, "O tulin ba da dalika zanim." There's a specific, and that specific word, zanim. has been used and the translation done in urdu is walad haram okay so my question to you is is there any per- permissibility in islam for the use of harsh words do we find which, harsh words in the quran which which conversation are you referring to yeah, in regards that's... to the qadianis that we have no, 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 to... this is this is uh, this, this is the conversation by the um, what's his name oh, adnan he was having recently and, and right at the beginning okay, why don't you ask adnan directly so, instead of sorry sorry addressing sorry guys, that sorry, guys. Guys. Assalamu alaikum my, my, my phone died yeah. so So I just, just, just before you continue, uh, Ustad yes, Abdan yes, and yes, Ahmed, yes, yes, the yes. way you phrase the question to me personally, and to me. why do you, and you just asked your question, that was really inappropriate because it was not of my conversation, but you asking me. I will explain why. Why no, I said no, you. Back, one back. second. Ustad Abdan, one I'll, moment. I'll, I'll, I'll Ahmed, you. just just I'll one you. moment. You need to let the person just finish before you speak. One moment. Please. Please, right. Bismillah. Bismillah. So go you on. wanted to ask me a question. I said, "Yeah, go ahead." And then you asked, yeah. "Why yeah. do you?" And you continued. When yeah. it appears that yeah. this has nothing to do with me and my conversation, I was. By I was you, I mean, I, 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 by you. Okay, sorry. Please continue. No, 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 you finish. By, it and so I am not responsible for every single Qadiani when they do bad things, and I'm not going to somehow respond. on their yeah. behalf to defend them or whatever okay, can, so this was totally inappropriate now, one second i'm not brother. finished i'm not what? finished yeah, right yeah, yeah. so when you come on and you ask a question to someone like myself here yes asking to defend or justify the actions of some others this is inappropriate i don't yeah. speak for them so if you no. wanted to if you wanted to i have ask, seen your video you interrupting when i'm I... speaking you're interrupting okay, again No, no, you need a lot I'm, more. You need a lot more lesson in patience, clearly. No, so I'm it's saying, not football, isn't it? it's not I am not finished. You're, 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 I am not finished. Minutes, If you keep on interrupting while I'm speaking, I will kick please. you out. Do you no, understand? No, don't, don't kick him out. No, 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 don't. Please. No, no, no. He needs to apologize. The way he's behaving here is not appropriate. Okay, Ahmed. We we but, said, Ustad Abdan, with all respect, yeah, I yes. was going to give you the chance to speak. Yeah. When you asked me. he wanted yes. to ask me a question and then you went and saying oh why do you i do not speak for the brothers or sisters out there who okay. defile your prophet or whatever okay. so can it I, was inappropriate this is what you were speaking on again interrupting when i'm speaking so this is one <coughs> lesson number two. when someone yeah. speaking between muslims 
try to let them finish the conversation, what the statement is. I'm not going to carry on for one hour just to give you a point in, in, in this conversation. Yeah. Have the patience to listen because you seem yes. to be very argumentative. That's all you're trying That's to respond back to someone That's like you're intention. doing it again. You're doing it again. <laughs> you are not. In fact, why don't you mute yourself, self-muting? Mute yourself until okay. I say I'm done. That will be probably the best thing to do because I want this conversation with you and not none. So the piece of advice is this. Don't go along to platform like here or elsewhere. Why do you Muslims say X, Y, and Z when they are not speaking on their behalf? If I have made a video against Ahmadis and said X, Y, and Z, you can ask me about it. If Hashim has done something like that, you can ask him about it rather than going to a platform here and there and generally asking everyone. Does that sound reasonable? Uh, it is reasonable, but there was uh, by you. I didn't mean just you specifically. I, I well, meant uh, you mentioned our names, man, Ahmed. You <laughs> clearly because, mentioned our names. Okay, can I say, brother Hashim? What I meant was because I I've seen your video with speaking to uh, an Ahmadi brother who's not a scholar or anyone. He just he, yes. he, he just went there, right? Yes. And and again, you mentioned all of those things which relate to the personality. You don't speak. No, no, no. I, I never mentioned I the say, personality. You did. You should watch you the video again. Okay, okay, whatever the case is, can we move on to the I'm, conversation? No, no, hold okay. on, hold on. You made an allegation. Can I say you something? You should you should own up to it, man. Can when I say you're something? wrong. Can At I say least something? be man enough. It's not about me. I'm not here for myself, Yani. <laughs> well I'm then don't pra me. then don't yeah, preach you what on? you can't practice. What what okay, okay. So the advice for all of us is the advice was to okay. preach with wisdom. You don't exactly. show That's wisdom. What I said. That's what I said. You show That's arrogance when you're owned, you don't acknowledge it. You should no, apologize, no, no, man. The least okay. you could do is apologize for the yeah. allegations you made, which still reflect what we were doing in Speaker's um, Corner. Not, not an allegation. Uh, if that has come yes. across as an allegation, I, 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 I sincerely apologize. I have no, no okay. issue of apologizing for. Right. But, Let's but, not but, waste I, any more time of yeah, yours. Can I speak to Adnan? Yes. Yeah, speak, speak to Adnan, Adnan because Adnan is waiting for you. Adnan, Adnan is still there. I think Adnan's going to have his dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, he's there. Morning, Sultan. Salamu. Are you, you on your phone, Adnan? You're muted. You're muted, Adnan. But Adnan, you're muted. Sorry, 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 guys. Please, please, okay. My please. my battery, my battery was dying, and as soon yeah. as uh, my conversation with Brother Ahmed, uh, it started, uh, yeah. my phone died, and I really wanted to come back very, very quickly <laughs> because some Ahmadi friends, not Ahmed, some Ahmadi friends have this habit of, uh, you know, celebration, celebrating. Oh, he he ran away. He disappeared. That's that's, that's, He's not, that's, he ran away from the, the Ahmadi guy. So I really, I was panicking. So I came yeah. back very quickly. I, actually, Hello, Ahmad is in brother London. Man. You should come brother, to Speaker's Corner brother, on yeah, Sunday and have we, a face to face. But, brother yeah, Man, before we continue, we, in, 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 can I say wait, something but, just quickly? A small, small yeah. thing, very small. I want to acknowledge here, in front of everyone, that out of all of the people that have listened and people who have engaged with Ahmadis, I have found Brother Nan to be the most respectful. I have okay. to say this. I have Thank to you. acknowledge this. Because, but, but then there are things which we don't agree with and we're going to yep. discuss them, no doubt. I think that, that should be the case. But I, ha I have to admit that, you know, that, that you haven't used any foul language. You haven't used any, uh, any, any, anything to mock, but you have been emotional or, you know, a bit charged here and there, but that's going to be the case with, with both, both of us. So please continue. I think the question I asked was, I think you were responding. You began by saying, uh, what, is, what is the translation of that in English? I think this is where you cut off. Let's continue yeah. from there. Sure. So, so very quickly, I will ask. Uh, my phone is charging, and Did I'll you? ask brother, uh, brother Hashim, can you let me in from my laptop? I'm trying to enter. Yeah, just, just. Uh, oh, yeah. Somebody's. Uh... I think it's saying a studio is full. So okay. If you, I'll... If you, keep I'm... your keep, keep your finger ready. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Uh, Come in now. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Maybe I think I'm coming in. So let me very quickly <clears throat> drop my phone. Yeah, continues with non Rashid. One second. I, yeah, yeah, you're, you're in. in. You're I, in. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. Meet so I'm gonna, one I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you need to meet one of, one of your. Yeah, you can leave one. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so here we are. Sorry if the if the camera quality is not as good. It's apologize. terrible. <laughs> but it was definitely me. Okay, Adnan, so, are you sure? Okay. You need to. Yeah. So, oh, that's so like Brother Ahmed. 240. Brother Ahmed. Okay. Yes, Sorry, please. Let's, let's continue, please. Yes. Your audio is also not good, Adnan. It's Can you hear me? 
Can you hear yeah, me? We can it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's all right. Fine. Okay, brother Ahmed. It's good uh, enough. It's good enough. It's good enough. Yeah, it's good I asked you a question. Yes. Whether you accept that uh, a good rendition of Kanjrika Bacha in the English language would be son of a prostitute, correct? Uh, yes, yes, it would be. That would be the translation in English if you're translating okay. literally Kanjrika Bacha. Now, you, 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 accept, you accept that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani used the term Zurriyatul Bagaya in Arabic for his opponents, correct? Yes, and uh, but, this, but but you know the point is, and 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 only step by step, step no, no, by brother step, Nan, because so that we have everything clear before we move yes, on. Yes, 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 because brother Nan, you interjected, uh, brother Nuran, on every point. I have to interject because why, why this, and I'll tell you why this is important. When you say when you say he is used Zuratul Bagaya for his opponents, you have to. There's a whole context behind it. So when we when we say Abu Bakr Siddiq, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the context. Listen, listen, can I say something? So let me take a small point, please. I know you're. I'm mean, very patient, please. I hope you will agree with me. Uh, when 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 Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu said Um Sus Badlalat to Urwa bin Masood uh, not radiallahu anhu, but you know he was he was, he was an opponent at, at at that time. There is a whole context behind it. Okay, so you can't just leave the context out of the window and you say, oh, did he not say this? Okay, step up, move up, move up, move up. How can okay. you accept him as a prophet? You know, okay, this is not the right way of argumentation. Uh, do you know in which book you, he used you that? You are the gun. Brother, brother Ahmed, brother Ahmed, brother in humanity, by the way, I don't consider, yeah. you, I don't consider you to be a Muslim. Just like uh, you don't. I, like, likewise, I mean, if you don't consider yeah. me to be a Muslim. So, so no problem with that. With the Absolutely hadith of the Holy Prophet, وسلم, who says, if you consider a Muslim a non-believer, the kufr returns. Absolutely. So, 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 Absolutely. so with that, I, I whatever you consider me, I consider you. Okay, no brother, problem. Brother, brother, try to understand my spirit in this. I'm not insulting you. I'm but not you didn't have to say this. I'm not, Why I'm did not you have to say you this? Are deserving, you are deserving of no sympathy. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying technically, mm -hmm. uh, according to my understanding of Sharia, okay, I don't consider anyone blue, green, yellow, what, what are we discussing? Wait, what are we discussing right now? Ahmed, wait, wait, please. What are we Don't discussing right now? Don't make more frustrating I know than it has to be. No, wait. no, no, because you're very... Wait, I know wait, you, brother I know Ahmed, wait. Mansoor was telling you to be silent when someone's speaking. We'll let you speak. You okay. have open platform here. There is okay. no censoring okay. here. No censoring. Okay. Okay. okay? We are so confident about our position that we will never censor you. Okay? Likewise. So, Likewise. so let me speak, please. Let me speak. Okay? okay. When I say you are, you are a non-Muslim to me, that okay. is not an insult. I'm okay. Note, that okay. means I'm stating a fact according to mm -hmm. my understanding of Sharia. I understand mm -hmm. in Sharia that anyone who believes in another prophet, whether that mm -hmm. prophet is a uh, uh, Ummati prophet or a prophet in, uh, in, in a blue gown or a green shirt or, or, or a long hat or a short hat, it doesn't make a difference to me. Anyone who believes in another prophet after Muhammad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is a disbeliever to me. That's it. That's it. And and I understand your position is that anyone who doesn't believe in Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani as a prophet is a disbeliever. And I have no problem with that. No problem. That's not an insult against me. Actually, if anything, that's that's something for me to be proud of. That I don't believe in in uh, in another person as a prophet after Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu because my understanding of Sharia is correct. Now, the issue of um, the issue of abusive language and vulgar language and accusation of unchastity against chaste women. This is the topic we are discussing, okay? Because this okay. is the topic you brought up. So let's yes. go step by step. The yes. first question I ask you. But I, I need to respond to what you just said. I use the term kanjriyon ka bacha in yes. the discussion. Uh -huh. You said you said Mirza Ghulam <clears throat> didn't say this. He said durriyatul bagaya. Correct. Yes. yes. In what and book? You, in and what you book? acknowledge. You acknowledge that. Do you, do, you, do you know in what book? Do you know in what book? I'm just asking. Do you know in what book he said this? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Uh, can Can you hear me now? Uh, your vo Your voice is very very dim. But khair, inshallah. He's saying in which now. book is this from? Sorry. Bagaya, which book is this from? I, I'm gonna give the references. Don't worry. Yes. First, I'm, I'm I'm gonna go step by step. So no, no, no. do you acknowledge, Allah, Allah, Brother Ahmed? Yes, please. Brother please, Ahmed, you. do you acknowledge when I say brother, I mean brother in humanity, the son of Adam. Okay. Uh, brother Ahmed, do you acknowledge that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani 
used this term dhurriyatul bagaya against his opponents do you acknowledge okay can, now i need to answer this it's not a yes or no thing no, right so no. so please give me some time first establish facts yes yes do he you did. acknowledge he used this against his opponents for specific opponents yes yes specific, specific or general yes yes he used this term against his opponents yes you are saying he did not mean kanjri kavacha he meant something else correct yes correct yes i am going to show you now firstly you have acknowledged already so you can't track back back on this you can't go back yes. on this yes. that mirza ghulam ahmed qadiani used this term durriyatul bagaya although he used waladul haram in urdu works in other places which means the same thing yes. waladul haram for yes. example let me yes. read the quote let me read the very quote so that you you don't but, but brother man you're not giving me the opportunity you're giving a sermon here you will bro. you will you're giving uh, a sermon you though. It's, it's been three minutes it's been three four minutes okay. i need to speak as well because you you're building an argument which is on false grounds and it's going to end up no else. wait brother you are brother, the, you are the scholar you should have more patience than me let me say let me answer i, I am not a scholar i'm not okay. a scholar i'm no, only no. a student but i, okay. I, I let, let me explain something to you yeah, can yeah, i read on. ruhani khazain yes volume nine page 31 which is in urdu published by the ahmadis no you should read aina kamalat islam with the prophet sai you your zuriyatul bagaya we will we will we will no no because that's the, that's the discussion we're having isn't it that's the discussion okay. we're having well, we can't okay, jump wait. the gun we can't look because uh, right, uh, give me two minutes and then i i would be silent i've, I've been okay. silent for please look, give me look, two minutes look. please give me two look. minutes okay because are you in london are you in london uh, i'm in london but uh, my schedule is such that i you know it's I I, I, you know, I will I will I welcome you. I'll buy you coffee. I'll buy you coffee. I'll buy you uh, lunch or will, dinner, yes, and I will treat well, you no with problem. utmost respect, as I did with uh, Ibrahim. Yes. Come to the park. Bring your books, the original yes. book where you want to explain the context to me. Yes. And yes. I will be more than happy to indulge with you. You want to bring your scholar with you. You want to bring an imam with you. You want to bring a murabi with you. You are Thank most you. welcome. I will yes. welcome you all with yes. open arms, with sympathy, with compassion. Can and I speak now? sorry, please. can I please speak now? Can I please speak? Yes, you can. You can. Exactly. But, yes. But you're making you're making it very difficult to have a conversation. Okay, because the issue is. You're triggered. Now, you're, you're triggered. You're, I'm not triggered. Wallahi, I'm not triggered. I'll tell you why. Okay, then. Because then let me. I'll tell let you me why. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because look, uh, uh, it's been about three minutes. I've just been listening. Look, you gotta look, let me look, speak. What, what, first of because all, the Ahmed, issue is. I'll tell you what the issue is. One second. One second. What was my claim? In that what? conversation, can I say one thing? Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani Akhi, is you got to let me speak because people are not seeing this thing. I know Sorry. you're used to this. I know you're used to this that people always listen to you. But let me speak. You gotta give me a minute at least to speak. Yeah. Okay. Bismillah. Let me speak. So first of all, there was no need for you to mention the fact that your brother in faith and all of that. That's not needed. Okay. Yeah, because according to me. Or according, it's, it's not for you to decide who's a Muslim and who's not a Muslim. That, that's another discussion. I, I, I don't want to go into this. We, we, we're we're going to speak about Zuriyatul Bagaya. Okay? That specific reference that you've used. Now, the first thing that we need to establish is whether in Islam or in, in, in the religion that we claim to follow, is there any room of using a harsh language in any circumstance or not? If you say no, I will take you back to chapter 68, verse 14, where Allah Almighty says, Urtullin ba'da zalika zaneen. And that word what is what is the point of the as, First of all, we need, to, haram. We need haram. to establish. Yes, yes, please. We need to establish the point of discussion. What is the point of discussion here? The what point is the of topic? What is I'll the topic? You. Yeah, I'll tell you what the topic is. The topic is that you have you have blatantly lied about the promised Messiah, salatu wasalam. How? Let, let, let me complete. Is by by quickly typing on Google. Mirza ke kazibat ya Mirza ki galiya. You've come up with references and you put on your YouTube channel that you've seen these references yourself, their original references and stuff we're, like that. We're losing you. Ahmad, we're losing you. Your internet is bad. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. So my point, I said, the, the point of discussion is this, that in that, in that discussion with uh, Brother Ibrahim, you mentioned plethora of uh, references, which each reference relates to a different issue. So when a Christian comes to you and he mentions 10 different allegations, you tell him, brother, if you're speaking about the age of Aisha radiallahu anha, let me explain that first, and then we move to second, third, and fourth. You can't say Zuriyat Your voice, Zuriyat, your voice is you... being lost, brother Ahmad. Uh, brother Mansoor, can you hear me? Actually, I can hear Ahmad quite well. So, so I think it's, it's much with you, brother. Your connection, Adnan. Okay. 
Okay, keep, keep let, speaking. Let, let me complete. So what I'm saying is, uh, when you speak to Ahmadis or anyone, you have to have the same criteria that you have when you speak to people that come to you with allegations about the Holy Prophet So when people come to you and state numerous Fair allegations enough. about Islam, yeah. you can't Fair you enough. can't mention, okay, Mirza said this there, this there, this there, and now you put it on Ibrahim Noonan, who's a very very uh, Brother Ahmed, a very humble person. Brother Ahmed, fair enough. Brother Ahmed, yes. fair enough. What yes. was my allegation against Mirza? Sahab? Your allegation was specific that Mirza Ghulam Muhammad said Kanjrika Bacha to Muslims. That's what okay. that's what you said, and you lied okay. there because the Prophet Muhammad okay. used this for Christians. Because okay, in okay. Kitabul Bariya, let, let me complete. In Kitabul Bariya, Prophet Muhammad gives a list of thirty plus Christians who were using foul languages against the Prophet uh, against the Holy Prophet ﷺ and his wives, right? And then the Prophet Muhammad says. That we will have peace with the snakes of jungle, with the beasts of jungle, but we will never have peace with these these uh, these priests because they abuse our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When Le Karam said salam to him, he said, "I will not reply his salam back because of the love for the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So when you when you stand there and blatantly, you know, uh, accuse this man, you know, of of saying things which he ha he hasn't said about. A specific party. So, when Allah the Almighty is saying Utulin ba dalika zanim about a disbeliever in the Quran, okay, which which translates to walade haram, okay, which is uh, of a doubtful birth, is that a point of allegation? Is that a point of allegation upon the Holy Quran? Can I, can I respond now? Yes, please. Okay. okay. Firstly, my allegation against Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani in that conversation was, if you were listening carefully, I was Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani used yeah. foul language against his opponents okay uh that's the first that's this is how the point was raised okay okay i said he used foul language against his opponents he was not mm -hmm. even a gentleman let alone a prophet of islam do you remember that part yes i remember but but okay. follow me follow me follow me follow me okay keep okay. following me so when i mentioned that ibrahim basically uh went hysteric and he started to say, no, this was against uh, those people who were abusing the Prophet. This was against those people who were abusing uh, the Prophet of Allah. So then yeah. I counted him with quotes. I read a number of quotes from a number of different books, correct? You read not from books, but you read from an online source. Uh, yes. Can you, and, and can, then, you say, then, can, can you say wait, by Allah wait, that you were, you were using me, original references? Ahmed, Ahmed, follow me. That yes. conversation is online. It's on my YouTube channel. Anyone can go and watch that conversation. I've seen it right twice. now. And, and, and can talk about the thing. Wait, wait. Yes. So I read a number of quotes from a number of sources. And then I okay. gave page numbers and book names. Correct? Uh, you copied and pasted page number and, and wait, names. No, yes, no, no. Ahmad, Ahmad. Just, just yes. establishing facts. Basic facts. Yes. Correct, yes. Or, correct or incorrect? You did paste, yes. You you, you did paste references okay. on your YouTube. I, yes, read, you I read a number of quotes to make my point that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani used foul, vulgar language against his opponents. Okay. So the language he used is not even a gentleman's language, let alone a prophet, a prophet of Allah. Well, that's Correct? a false criterion, though, isn't it? Oh, oh, no, no, wait, wait. We'll, is get, get, criterion? To, we'll get to the criterion. Let me explain okay. what I am where I'm going with this. Correct Please, or yes. not? Correct. That's what you said. Yes, that's what you said. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Then I read a number of quotes, of of which you choose only one to indulge in. One, only one. You ignore yeah. all others. You ignore. No. I mean, okay. There, there, there's a reason for this. There's okay. a reason okay. for this. Wait. So, so because you, because wait. you wait. mentioned wait. this, wait. I tell you because you know what it is when when someone comes to see speaker's corner and speaks wait. to you and he lies from the very beginning, brother, you grab him by brother, the neck brother, and you say, "Look, brother, brother, you're lying." Let people you know? decide if I lied. Let's let's have a conversation. You will see where I'm where, where. Okay. Do you I... recognize the quote from Rouhani Khazain? Yes. Here I have the actual scan from the very book published by the Ahmadis. It's the, I'm okay. reading from the original scan here. Rouhani mm -hmm. Khazain. Anyone mm -hmm. who wants to see, the name is there. Rouhani Khazain, yeah. Jild 9, Chapter 9. There. I'm going to read it. Page number discuss... 31. Yes, please, Page number please. 31. Wait. Yes. Page number 31. And I'm going to read from the bottom of it. This is one of the quotes I read from. Okay. What is the quote? Okay. Or hamari fata ka kail nahi hoga to saaf samja javega ke isko waladul haram banne ka shok hai or halal zada nahi. Yeah. Isko waladul haram banne ka shok hai or halal zada nahi. 
Do okay. you stand by these words of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani? Can you read the whole page from the beginning to end and the next page? I, I can. I can. Bismillah. But, Let's go. Okay. Can you okay. tell me the reference? I'm going to open it right now. Ruhani Khazain. Yes. Ruhani Khazain, volume yes. 9, page 31, the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. One second, one second. I'm just opening it. You've got to give me a second, okay? Oh, by, by the way, can I ask you what is it, uh, what what is this about? Do you, do you know the this context is about of it? this is about my point that he used volume nine. Yes, volume wait, wait, nine. Is it volume you asked me a question. No, 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 I'm, I'm trying to open a book. Sorry, I'm trying to see the reference. Okay, what, what, okay. What, sorry, this is about. Book? I'm making a point from it that Mirza yes. Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani used mm. vulgar language, mm. street language, dirty language to describe his opponents. This is the point I'm making. Correct. That's what you're saying. I'm opening the reference. Where's the, re okay. you the reference? So, so I read, I read from Rouhani Khazain. Yes. I've, I've got the very scan in front, in front of me. Here is the reference. You can see Rouhani Khazain. I'm opening, I'm opening it. I'm opening nine, it. Page 30. Sorry. Uh, volume 9. Volume 9, page 31. Rouhani Khazain. By the way, those who don't know, Rouhani Khazain is a collection of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani's put together. All his books. Uh, a collection of his works a collection of his works it's an anth uh, anthology basically it's uh, it's uh, it's all his works put together in multiple volumes and this collection is called Rohani Khazain in other words uh, literally translated as spiritual treasures spiritual treasures this yes. is can what I, it means yes okay. can I read can we uh, which, which page are you reading page 31 can you read? Okay, so can you? Volume nine. Volume yes, can nine. You read, read, can the, you read? Read, the, read first. First, read the quote. First, read the <laughs> second last line and the last line. Yes, 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 yes. I'm reading. But this is, you know, who this is about? It's about Atom, right? You know, you know the background. Before you, before you tell us, before you tell us who this is about, I have a yes. problem with this. Even if it's about Shaitan, don't yes. worry about that. Yes. Even if it's about Shaitan, yes. I have a problem with this. I'll tell you yes. why. I'll explain to you why. Yes. Just read the second last line and the last line, and then we will talk about it, whether it matters who it is about. Let's, okay. let's talk. Okay. 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 Can, let, 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 let me read it out to you. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. So where do you want me to read it from? Second last line and the okay. last line. Okay. Okay. As Muslim Masih Salaam says, the Prophet says, and our faith will not be able to get rid of it, then we will understand that it is not a shock of being a haram, and it is not a shock of being a haram. But for being a haram, it was the fact that کہ اگر وہ مجھے جھوٹا جانتا ہے اور عیسائیوں کو غالب اور فتح یاب قرار دیتا ہے تو میری اس حجت کو واقعی طور پر رفع کرے جو میں نے پیش کی پس اس پر کھانا پینا حرام ہے اگر وہ اس اشتہار کو پڑھے اور مستر عبداللہ آتم کے پاس نہ جائے اور اگر خداوند تعالیٰ کے خوف سے نہیں تو اس گندے لقب کے خوف سے بہت زور لگاوے کہ تا وہ کلمات مذکورہ کا اقرار کر دے اور تین ہزار روپے لے لے اور یہ کاروائی کر کر دکھاوے جنو وہ دس اس وہ چیز ٹوکن اب do you know the background yes. to this? What is yes. he saying? What is yes. he saying? This can I can I explain about... in English? Wait, 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 wait. Firstly, okay. firstly, firstly, before we get to what this about and yes. who it is about, I know exactly who it's about and what it's about. Don't worry about that. I am asking you. Yes, I'm yes, asking yes. you. Let is me this the language? Oh wait, I'm asking you. Is this the language of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani? Is it confirmed? Yes, it is. It's yes. Confirmed. You, you're not writing. disputing it. You're not disputing it. I don't know why you're going on about it. It's, it's in his writing. Well, brother, yes. brother I'm, I'm, I'm doing it for a reason. You're not disputing okay. it. Yes? No, I'm not just disputing it. Yes. Okay, now. Can, so can you complete the calling, quote? Can I, can, can I complete the quote? Brother, complete brother, the quote? Ahmed, Ahmed, he is He's calling right. Mr. X a bastard child. Correct? Waladul Haram is not used here in a, in a little, little sense. And I, and I will explain why. Okay. What is Walad? What is Walad in Arabic? Oh. Huh? What is the meaning of Walad? Okay. What is the meaning of Walad in Arabic? No, but it's for the person to decide what in what one what understanding he's used that word. Brother for. Ahmed, stop playing if games. I, if I say, if I say, brother, Bro Adnan, so, so, brother, I'm, brother Ahmed, brother please, Ahmed. If I say Zuriya, my, 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 my brother say, in humanity. Say, can I my, say something? My, I'm answering you. I'm answering. You. If I say Zuriya to Shaitan, okay, in in the Arabic language. My, what is the trans my, to? my, my brother in humanity. Look, I'm, I'm calling you with respect and honor. I'm also. Okay, I'm even also. though I believe, even though I believe you're upon disbelief, you're upon kufr, I'm calling you with respect. Same, 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 honor. brother, same. Yes. yes, same, same. No problem. Then why do you have to repeat we're it? <laughs> we're, <laughs> why do you have to repeat to, it? We're talking to each other with respect. So please, 
please honor my respect. I am yes, asking, asking you, your what is the meaning of walad in Arabic? What is the meaning of walad in Arabic? It, the, the, the thing is, uh, the sentence is, or the word is walad al-haram. It's not just walad. Okay. So when we you, say you said, you said walad al-haram is not used in, 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 the, in, in, the, in, the, in that sense, bastard child. You, you just said that. You just said that and you were about to dispute. So I'm disproving you before you waste mm -hmm. our time. What Akhi, is the meaning of walad in, what in is, Arabic? What is the what meaning is the, of walad? What is the meaning of riya in Arabic? Oh, and I'll not, answer brother, your question. Don't, answer don't, your hop, question. don't hop to another topic. What not, is the I'm meaning not. of walad? What is the walad, meaning of walad? Son. Son. Yes. Walad means child. Yes. Child. Yes. 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 Can, 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 let's continue. I mean, I don't know and why. why child, we... And haram. What is haram? Illegitimate. Or let's say haram is. Uh, okay. Okay. Privilege. Good. Good. So now. Okay. Now. Now we're getting there. So, so you're saying it's means, literal? That Are you means saying it's literal? Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani hmm. called Mr. X or Miss Y Waladul yeah. Haram. Correct? That's, we haven't finished the, we, we haven't finished the paragraph. Bro, Brother Ahmad first establish facts. Basic facts. Did he call Mr. X, whoever, whoever? Brother, we're not in, we're not in prep or something. We're not in prep or people that are listening, the educated people. You're, 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 you're but, teaching like but it is important. It, it, it is important <laughs> for me to do this so that you understand no. and the and the listeners and viewers understand yes. what I was doing. So understand yes. now. Can you is, answer my question? Is Mirza, wait, is Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani calling yes. Mr. X a bastard child? He hasn't said bastard child. Waladul Haram. He says Waladul Haram. Said, but he, Waladul he Haram said, means illegitimate what, child. What does Zuriyatul Shaitan mean? What does Zuriyatul Shaitan mean? Waladul Haram. You know, Waladul, I'm, huh? I'm telling you the, the, the idiom in which is used, my brother. So when we say Zuriyatul Shaitan, what does it mean? What does Zuriyatul mean? We're not discussing Zuriyatul Shaitan. <laughs> we're discussing no. Waladul Haram. Stop hopping. Stop you hopping. Know, stay, no, stay we're not hopping. You're not hopping. To the topic. I'm not going to. I'm not going to let you do this until we okay, establish this. Waladul okay. Haram. Does it mean yes. bastard child or not? Say that again. Does it mean a bastard child or not? Waladul in a literal, in a literal sense, yes. Does it have any other meaning in the Arabic language? Okay. Okay. That's okay. what I'm asking him. You, you, That's you what I'm asking easily, him. You can easily save us all this time and say yes. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani called a certain person Waladul Haram. Yes or no? I've answered like 10 times. I don't know where we're going with this. He's so used he called, Walad al-Haram. He, he called a certain person a bastard child. No. Because you're no. translating as a bastard child. That's your problem. What is the meaning of Walad al-Haram? What is the meaning of Zurat al-Shaitan? Tell me. Okay. If I call you Zurat al-Shaitan. You, you, um, Ahmed, Ahmed, just, just one you, second. Sorry. Because both of you are speaking. Yeah. It is not fair to compare with another phrase in an idiom. If Walad al-Haram does not mean an illegitimate child, Ahmed, you need to provide from classical Arabic dictionaries or literature that Walad al-Haram can mean something other than a bastard child in a praiseworthy, positive way. So why don't you bring that point on the table? Hmm. Okay, okay. Yes, so uh, what, what I'm saying to Adnan Rashid is there, there is a rule in the Arabic language and he's, if, he, if, he, if he's a scholar, he knows that. That the person who writes something is for him to explain what it means. You can't have another person coming to you and explaining to you what it means. So if the Promised Messiah Islam himself explains this in uh, what it means, then he can't come up with another meaning. So let's continue and see what he has written. Okay. Okay. Let's stick to let's, this page. Let's, let's okay. stick to this page. I'm gonna I'm Can gonna explain to... what he means. I'm gonna explain what he means. What no. I understand from this very quote, your no, prophet, you... your prophet is saying your prophet yeah. is saying that. Those who do not accept our conquest or our victory, okay, okay. Yes. are basically they want to be or they yes. have a desire to be Waladul Haram, a legitimate child or a bastard child. And, That's your translation. And, and, and this person is not a halal zada. Okay. Halal zada means a legitimate child. Halal means halal, legitimate. Zada yes. means child. Yes. Because yes. the opposite of halal zada is haram zada. Hmm. In the Urdu language, in the Persian language, okay, it's Haram Zada and Halal Zada. Haram Zada means a bastard child, which means in the Arabic language, Waladul okay. Haram. Okay. okay. So in, 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 in the first so, part of the sentence, he calls a person who doesn't accept his victory uh, a, a bastard child. And hmm. then he explains what he means by that. 
by yeah. saying such a person is not yeah. a halal zada. Can, not, can, I, can I respond? Can I respond? Can means, I respond? No, wait, you can respond. You can respond. Okay, okay. Can you you're finish playing these games. You're making, a, you're making a mockery of your faith. No, I'm not. And your people. You're making a mockery just by denying these basic facts. Can you finish? Just trying to spin them, just trying to deny them, just to save your skin. Brother I mean, Zanan, it's all emotion. Wallahi, it's all emotion. People are seeing this. Can you just finish and let me respond? Of course, I'm happy people are seeing this. I'm, I'm that, happy you, it's live. Let me respond. I'm happy You're, it's live. Let me respond. Let me respond. Yeah. Then. Have yes. some patience. So, so firstly, before so you do, respond, yes, do you please. acknowledge that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani called a certain person a bastard child? Yes or no? Not a certain person, but a, but but anyone who denies but, that. Do you know what a certain person this, means? Do you know what a certain person means? A certain person, anybody. Did okay, yes, 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 go on. Child? Not a bastard child, but Waladul Haram. And I'm going to explain this. Okay, so you, okay. You, you Waladul Haram. Okay, listen brothers to, and sisters, those let of the you person who are right now, because you Ahmad open, is not listening, you open page those, number 31. those of you who are Ahmadis in particular, me, and Muslims in general, okay, okay. go no, and let me check speak. in any dictionary what mm -hmm. Waladul Haram means the promise and what Allah means. Okay, let, okay, okay go okay. and check, and then you let, see what games Ahmad is playing. Okay, Let, let's see who's playing the games. The Prophet Messiah says on page 32, the very page that he mentioned, the next page, line number four. People should open this up. He said, If Abdullah Abdullah Atam Miyad, Miyad, Karar Dada se bat jaye, to beshak tamam dunia mein mashhoor kar de ke isayon ki fatah hoi. Varna haram zada ki yehi nishani hai ke sidi ra ikhtiyar na kare aur zulm aur na insafi ki rahon se piyar karta rahe. So he's explaining, okay. listen, listen, he's saying haram zada, he's defining it, is one who does not take the right path second who is upon transgression and who is who doesn't do insaf meaning who okay. who is not true okay so, so this is very this good. is a definition that given by the promise very, very, very good very good i'm not complete yeah. i'm not finished okay. i'm not finished i'll let you speak please let me finish Wallahi, I'll, I'll, I'll stay quiet now the most important point in all of this and for all of the listeners is brother adnan what he's defending is because if you know the context of this it's about a Christian padri, Abdullah Atam, who called uh, Rasulullah sallallahu uh, alayhi wa sallam a dajjal. He called Rasulullah a dajjal and you're defending this person? You have no shame. You're, you're defending Abdullah Atam here? Okay. Have you got no shame? Did, did, did he call Rasulullah the dajjal or not? Uh, Ahmed, 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 before you get into that, before you get into that, Ahmed, first thing is first, we need to acknowledge and establish what we are dealing with. What was my claim? Your claim was he before, said before, well, we haram. Get, we, before we get to uh we, before we get to the reason why he called what he called and who he called okay before we get to that we need mm -hmm. to understand what is the issue at hand what my claim was my yes. claim was that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani called his opponents bastard children that's what the Quran did Quran did the same okay so, so you so you're acknowledging okay, so, no, 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 no. so, so you're so acknowledging what? Okay, You're acknowledging, so right? I'm Wait, answering in two before ways. Before we get to the Quran. Yes, you, the Quran again, speaks man, the same word. The problem is, how do, you, how do I talk to people like you? That's why I want to talk to face. I want when you when you're in the park, you would never be able to do this. No, I would no. never allow you to do this in the park. Okay? okay. I would never allow you to do this to to me in the park because now you're taking advantage of an online stream, hiding your face. Ah. Okay, you, we don't even know what you look like, and you. I'm ah. sure you're not gonna come I'm see quite, me in the park or I'm any of this. I'm quite handsome. Don't worry. Okay, sure. so now, 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 the question stands again. Did Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani call anyone a bastard child? Mm -hmm. No, he didn't. He, he didn't say bastard child. He did. He Haram, didn't, he Zada didn't Haram, Haram Zada is a bastard child. You just helped me. You just mm -hmm. helped me by actually explaining on page Can I tell 32. you what your original claim was? When you read from page 32. Yes. He clearly uses the term haram zada. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna now use Google Dictionary. Watch. Watch. Okay. I'm going so to Google. So you 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 wait, consider brother, Google brother, Dictionary. Brother, 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 you, wait, brother. Is this wait, your level, brother? brother. Be honest. Brother, with brother, 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 Be honest. brother, brother, once Do we again. use for so, I, so Arabic idioms are limited to Google Dictionary? Is that what you're saying? No, no, wait. Is that what you're wait. Saying? I'm just gonna use Google Dictionary here. Yeah, exactly. Haram Zada. One second. Haram Zada. Okay. We will see what the dictionary tells us. It's not my... I didn't I, I didn't even know you're coming to this conversation. Okay. Well, well, well nobody... Now, of course, of course, you're, you're okay. saying online. 
I mean, you, you, if you make a claim, you can't just lie about a person. That, that's what I'm okay. saying. You can't just lie, you know? Like, okay. I mean, you've got to be better than that, to be honest. One second, be brother. That. You said Zuriyatul Baghaya, now you jump to another reference, and you've been proven and false there as well, because the Messiah himself explains that Waladul Haram means a person who does not take the right path, and okay. who knowingly, knowingly brother, denies brother. the truth. This is, what, this is what the disbelievers of Makkah did when this verse was revealed. Brother, <laughs> brother, <laughs> Ahmed, 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 I just took out a dictionary in yes. Urdu. Yes. Or Haram Zada means Zina Zada. Zina Zada. The mm. child of Zina. Okay? Mm. Then it okay. says Waldu Zina. Waldu Zina. But, but, but the, you know, the Google literally says uh, Tawafa means death. Brother Tawafa. Ahmed, you're making it more difficult right, right, than it right, has Tawafa. to be. Write Tawafa in Google Dictionary. It would mean death. So what? Uh, Sorry? If you write Tawafa in Google Dictionary, what, what, what okay. does it say? It explains, Wo shucks, jo nikah, wo ho. Wait, wait. Brother, this is Urdu Dictionary online. Okay, this is the dictionary. Urdu. Okay. Uh, Urduinc.com. Here. Here it is. Urduinc.com. Here is uh -huh. the reading. Okay. It says, Haram Zada. The meaning is, Wo shucks, jo be nikah, paida hua ho. Okay. The person who is so, uh, born so, so. out of nikah. The person who is born out of nikah. Haram zada. This is the meaning of haram zada. So now don't make it more painful than it has to be, Ahmed. Don't okay. look like a fool in front of thousands of people. So <laughs> now I'm going to ask you again. So you're, you're ask you again, Ahmed. Give Mr. Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani call any of his opponents bastard children. Any. Did he call them? Say that again, sorry. You're not listening, are you? No, no, I'm listening, but 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 you're Did, you're, you're Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, did yes. your prophet call any of his opponents, any, any of his opponents, Haram Zada, bastard children, children born of Zina, or children out born outside of Nikah? Can I ask you a question? That's then? the meaning of Haram Zada. That's no, the I meaning said, of Haram Zada. He used Waladul Haram, okay? You went to Google and you wrote you didn't write you wrote you wrote Haram Zada. Haram and Haram Zada, according to you. From he page he you said, Waladul Haram, you went to Google and wrote Urdu. Then you wrote Urdu haram Can you go to Google and write Tawafa? It would take you there. Okay, okay. So okay, okay. Gonna say, I'm going to let you do it. Finish. I'm going to let you do it. Google in Urdu Haram Zada, meaning Ma'ana, right? Ma'ana Haram Zada. My point right? is, Google is not, Google's not going to decide this conversation. If you write a book and, and you explain what you mean the idiom to be, then I should accept that. I don't, I don't go elsewhere. See, this, I don't is go why, else. this is why this is why a lot of people get angry with Qadianis and Ahmadis because mm -hmm. Ahmadis are spin doctors. Generally, not everyone, not everyone. Generally, most Ahmadi Rabbi the and trained trained dais of the Ahmadis are a bunch of Christian missionaries. They behave just Bro, like Christian you're lying, missionaries. You're lying. They will not have a straight conversation. The man with you. who slapped simple Christian terms, missionaries was the Prophet. Simple terms, they will start playing games. When your with, elders were sleeping, you know, when your elders were sleeping, they didn't know what to do. You know, when this we, man. When we show, he was the general of Islam. I will prove to you right now. If you have the when courage, we show, when if you we have show the courage, just debate this. Verses Allah, from the Bible. If you that, have the courage, God, God, said God is one. They will start playing games. If you have the courage, let's debate this. It was the promised Messiah when when Henry Martin Clark. When they asked Muslim people to come forward, none came forward. He don't, accepted don't it. Get these Christian, don't these get, Christian don't Muslim get emotional. societies don't have preaching. letters that I have we're in front gonna, of me. We're not going to allow you to preach. Just tell me, That's did your prophet though. call any of his opponents bastard children? No, he didn't say bastard children. He, he, he said Haram. He haram said Haram Zada. Haram. And, 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 and he explained what that means. He explained what that means. He, he called them Haram Zada, right? He said, he explained what that means. Okay. Did he call them Haram Zada? I I I I've already answered this question. I don't know where you're going. Did he call? Did he call them Haram Zada? Have I answered your question before? Sorry. Have I answered this question this before? Because if he meant this literally, no, he no. would not say. I'm asking you. He would not say. From, he would not say. Listen. Page thirty-two. Yes. And you said you said he he said Haram Zadon ki nishani ye hai Haram yes. Zadon ki. So before yes. he explains before he explains the nishani. Yes. The sign. The definition. He calls them Haram Zada. Okay. Yes. Please, Ahmed. He calls them Haram Zada, right? Yes. Yes, he's there. Yeah. And so I am what? questioning you. I'm questioning you. What is the meaning of Haram Zada? Mm -hmm. The word, the terminology, Haram yes. Zada. What does it mean? We don't need his his description. 
what what I'm Why asking not? you. Why not? That's a wrong Ahmed, criteria. Ahmed, Ahmed, That's a wrong criteria. Ahmed, in the Urdu language, is he gone? He, he left by himself. He left this by, is, this by is, show. This is, this is how, you know, incapable of defend the, defending, you so, know, the... So topic. now that, now so, that he's uh, gone... No, no, he probably, let, let's give him some minutes um, and I need to see he comes yeah, back. Yeah, so, because, please, no, no, he's, please, he's yeah. here. He's here. So, apologies, I, I, he's here. Okay, I back. Ahmed got, is back. Got, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so the, the, the connection the dropped. Okay, so we, so we did not drop him and we, we did not lose him. Okay, yeah, he yeah, dropped no, 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 no. I'll, I'll confirm this. I'll confirm this. There was a connection. Ahmed, Ahmed, I'm making a case. Let me, let Thank me you. establish basic facts. So can I make it easier? Explain. You speak for a minute, you say what you want, and then you got to let me speak. Because no, no, I'm not going to let you speak, people. and I'm not going to let you digress. The issue I'm not is, digress. I'm not digress. we're not going anywhere. Because when you came in, you made an <laughs> allegation, you called me a liar, you made yes. an allegation, yes. and you accused me of lying against your prophet. I yes. pulled out a quote. What was that I lie? What was that lie? I showed you the exact words. We call okay. them Kanjriyo Ka Kanjriyo Ka Bacha means prostitutes children. Where is that? That means, Where that is means Ka Bacha? children Where born is Ka Bacha? You're lying. of the you're lying live now. He said Zuriyatul Bagaya. He never said continue but I didn't write in Urdu, my man. Okay. You're lying again, though. Again, because because, I, because the game because you I know the games in your... you play. Okay, because Bishallah. you're already Go playing on. games on Haram Zada. How well, would not... how would I how would I you establish? gave ten different references when you know that allegations of this kind, each of them need a long time to respond. So you did a Christian tactic as they do. Oh, oh uh, 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 Aisha was married at this age. Uh, uh, Holy Prophet did this, he cured the Jews. 10 things throw at them and then let's see what sticks and then exactly what you did. So you mentioned, you said you translated Zurraytul Bagaya and, and you tried to show the people wrongly that Prophet Messiah used this, these words for Muslims when he didn't okay. in Islam. Okay. He used for okay, Christians wait. who are abusing the Holy Prophet Sallallahu So you lied there or accept that you were wait. wrong. Okay, let's, let's, let Did let the Prophet Messiah use these words for Muslims? Zurraytul Bagaya. Let decide. Let did decide. the Prophet Messiah Simple question. You're, Simple question. You're claiming one simple second. question, Akhi. Simple one question. Second. Simple question. Sim I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to move from this because you're very good at this. One, one did the promised Messiah, Alayhi Salam, <laughs> did the <laughs> promised Messiah, Alayhi Salam, use Zuriyatul Bagaya for Muslims, yes or no? Who? Did the promised Messiah, Alayhi Salam, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, use Zuriyatul Bagaya for Muslims, yes or no? He's not a prophet to me. Look, you're digressing now. Okay. Did Mirza Ghulam Ahmad use Zuriyatul Bagaya for Muslims, yes or no? Okay, I'm going to answer your question right now. Yes or yes. no? Yes or no? Please. Yes, yes, yes. you did. Yes, yes. You yes, lied. Yes. You just lied. Yes. You just huh? lied. How? Explain how. Okay, I'll explain. Do you know the Will background of this? Okay, please continue. Check this. Check this. Wait. Now, now, when I was telling you that he used the term Waladul Haram, and then you went on page 32 of Rohani Khazain, volume 9, page 32, to explain from his own writings yes. what he meant by Waladul Haram. And he explains what is a haram zada. What is yes. the sign of a haram zada? Correct? Yes. 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 I'm going to do the same thing to you now. I'm going to take you to his own writings, Mirza mm -hmm. Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, where he uses the term Zurriyatul Bagaya and explains what he means by that. Mm -hmm. Explains so that you can't run from it. So you okay. can't play these games anymore. You, Ahmad no you can't play these games anymore. There's no can games. This? Can you see this? What is this? There's no, there's no games. Can, can you, you read it? This? You can't see it properly. Okay, I it. want you to take out Rohani you're, you're jumping references now. Okay, okay. Am I here no, no, to no, no, answer? no. I'm going to show you where, Am I just here to answer your allegation? Show you, wait, Am wait. I here to answer I'm just your allegation? I'm going to show you what he means by Zuriyatul Bagaya so that the, we can nail it. The very first reference. Okay, okay. Uh, okay what's, what's the reference? Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me Rohani Khazain, volume 8. But why not using Aina uh, Kamalat Islam? That, that's what you mentioned. Yes. Why are you going elsewhere now? volume 8. One second. So you're claiming Zuriyatul Bagaya means the children of transgression or children of transgressors because yeah. you have to play these games. But no, you it's can't not speak because you Mirza Saab Mirza Saab was did, obsessed, did obsessed the with Messiah, the word bastard. Did the promised Messiah Mirza use this Saab, word for Mirza Saab Saab was obsessed with the word did, bastard, let, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. It answers yes. your question. Did the promised Messiah, oh, didn't did, did the promised Messiah wasalam, use this word Ibn Baga for Sadullah Ludhianavi? Did he use this word for him? 
Firstly, did first, he use this word for him? Answer, answer his question. Just first, speak to Duryatul Bagaya. Are we discussing Duryatul Bagaya or not? Are we discussing? I'm not going to hop. I am not going to hop. What's Ibn Bagha? 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 Okay, what does wait. Ibn Bagha mean? Are we, I'm asking you a question. Have, do you have Rohani Kazain, volume yes, eight? Uh, yes, I'm opening it now. One sixty-three, page one sixty-three. While he's opening, I just want to make a quick point. Imagine someone calls Ahmed a bastard and says, oh, actually, what I mean by bastard is you are a very slow person in speaking. No, would that be that acceptable? That's, that's incorrect. That's incorrect. No, would, would that be, no, hang because, on. Would that be acceptable? Someone uses... Let, let, no, let me finish. Let me finish, Ahmed. Ahmed, let me finish. You keep Adnan, cutting off in. someone when they're speaking. Please don't I'm come saying, in. Please listen, don't come Ahmed. In. I'm to Adnan. Please don't come in. No, please I'm, don't come I'm in. just making a point. No, because it's the wrong if point. Someone wrong calls point. you. Look, I'm not going to okay. let you make this point. It's the wrong point. Um, I'm going to mute you for a second. I'm, I'm you have to understand. Mansoor, Adnan. They, you have Adnan. to understand their frustration. So they are stuck. This is a yeah, very yeah. bad yeah, yeah. So I have to make a point. This is this is our platform, and you can't tell me how. You can't, Ahmed, tell me how to how to run this platform. I've just given an example while you're looking for the reference. So make sure when I'm finished, your reference is ready what Adnan is trying to prove. If somebody calls you a bastard and then says, what I mean by bastard is you're a slow person in speaking. For example, he redefines the meaning. You'd say, oh, yeah, that's fine. I'm a bastard. According to your understanding. I, I, dare, I dare Ahmed to call anyone Haramzada in Pakistan. I dare him. Can I respond? Oh, no, 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 go to East London. Go to East London or go anywhere where you find Bradford. Go to Bradford. Stop any odd uh, Pakistani uh, uncle or uh, auntie. Call them Haram Zada and then tell them, let me explain what I mean. Then exactly. see what happens to you. Then see what can happens we, to you. Call them Haram Zada and you will know what it means. Call anyone Haram Zada, any Pakistani, anywhere in the world. Call them Haram Zada can and then you, you will find out what it means. Can, 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 find can, out within can, can 30 I respond? Seconds. Within 30 can. seconds, you will know. What it means. So, so <laughs> stop playing games. Is, is this is this is this before or after they give you a bloody nose, Adnan? No, no, yeah. seriously, these guys are. I mean, I, I, I mean, why, you you won't be able to finish why. that sentence. They will knock you out. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. they will. Well, I mean, you know our people. Yeah. yeah. Without explaining what it means, you won't even the, the, get time the, to explain. You won't get time. Exactly. To explain what, what <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But exactly, so but the Quran said, exactly. I think What's the, what's I think the he, meaning of what the word Zanim? I think, Adnan, Adnan, just one second, one second. What's the meaning of Zanim in the classical Arabic dictionaries? What, what, wala, wala dul haram. No, what exactly is the what? meaning, what, what is, is the is, meaning of the word Zanim no, no. in exactly the classical Arabic dictionaries? You're telling me not to do. You're Sorry? You're doing exactly what you told me not to do. What? You t you said you said to me you said if you call someone a bastard which we which you didn't use and then you say it means someone someone who doesn't think properly, right? Mm -hmm. you, you 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 think that's a good example that you just gave? It makes no sense at all. What I what I was saying is this: if somebody uses a word which is well known in its meaning and then redefines the word, say it doesn't mean what I mean to say; it means something else, like "oh, you're beautiful." It's not going to work because it's a meaning. It's a Mansoor, word that Mansoor, has a precise Mansoor meaning. Mansoor is buying time. Mansoor is buying time to devise a response to okay. what I have already asked. I'll keep out of it. I want to know. I'm volume I'm eight, to get to the volume eight exactly. Rahani Khazain, volume eight, page 163. Yes. Pull it out. It doesn't take that long. It doesn't take that long. You're already devising a response. Maybe you have a group of people around you. So you, you are God, yeah? You can see from, uh, from above what's happening. Is okay. that what you're claiming Have now? you found page 163? <laughs> have no. you found it? No, I'm going to it now. Why does it take so long? You've been oh, at it for five minutes. What is it? 163, you said? Page number? Yeah, volume 8. 163. Yes. You found it? I'm going to it now. I'm scrolling down. Have some patience. Akhi, I waited for two, two hours for you. Two hours. Okay, do you, do so you have, have the patience. physical copy? Do you have the physical copy? Sorry? Yes, I do have the physical copy. I've so got why it is it yeah. taking so long? Yes, go on. Go on, continue. Do you have the page? Yes. Go on. I'm re uh, yeah. I can read it out to you if you want. Can you hear me? Ahmed. Yes, do yes. you have the page? Yes, I have the page. Yes.
Adnan, I think. Ahmed, do you have the page? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Can Volume you... 8. This is going to bury you once and for all, spiritually. This is going to bury you and all people like you who are trying to play games. Bro, nothing buried us. Bro. Deliberately like, lying us, and accusing bro, others of lying. Years. Accusing think, others of lying. This, you when think your this prophet... conversation is going to bury us, man? Come on. You're just making claims here. It's going to bury us. Don't. You're Adnan Rashid, man. you got to be better than this. This is going to bury you. Okay. Do While that. Adnan is having connection issues, you can see on the screen. Do you want to yeah. read? If you yes, know where I'll to read, read from. Yes. Oh, wait for Adnan to rejoin. Yes, I'll read it. I'll read it. It's, 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 it's in the Arabic. Okay, just 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 keep, give us a few few moments while Adnan rejoins. As you can see, he's got connection issues. So, do you understand the meaning of the word zanim in the classical Arabic dictionaries? Yes, and it has been translated by uh, many translators, which I'm not asking for a translation. Yeah. What is the meaning in the Arabic dictionaries? Give me a dictionary entry and just tell me what it means. Say that again. I'm not asking for a translation. In the Arabic language, classical Arabic dictionaries, give me the dictionary entry and which dictionary and what it means. I don't have it in front of me. I don't need to know that. Oh, and you know what it means, right? Sorry, so, I'm so, back. So, so are you saying Quranic translations are wrong? Guys, guys, it's guys. Has he work, found the page? Carry on with Adnan. Carry on with Adnan. Hmm. Has he found the Yes. Yes, go on. Where should he read from? Just tell him. Has he found the page? Yes, I found the page, my, my man. Go on, please can continue. Uh, Brother Mansoor, can you hear me? Yeah, we can, can hear you. Me? Can you hear us, though? Adnan, we can hear you. Brother Mansoor, can you hear me? We can hear you, but it looks like you cannot hear us. Okay, one second. My internet is uh, one second. Let me let me do this uh, quickly. So I'll keep on speaking let to see if you can hear part. us. Yeah, okay. So throughout, we have been able to hear you, but it looks like you couldn't hear us. So I think you can hear me. So the point I was trying to make here is... I can is hear you, Ahmed. One well. second, for, guys. For every reference that Prophet Sosai or anyone uses, you've got to understand the context in, the, in context in which that word is being used. And also, you have no ground to stand upon when you don't have the same principle for yourself. When you have the same word used in the Quran, and you have many, when you have Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anh, was saying, um, so you keep, you keep Allah. hopping, as, as Adnan was saying. Hopping. I asked you, what because does the word Zanim mean in Arabic language, and you didn't even know what it means. What does it mean? You tell me. What does it no, mean? I'm not going to tell you. No. I want you to tell me in the Arabic no, dictionaries. I, first of all, do you even know I, the Arabic dictionaries, classical ones, which they are? And I'm then from, that. You're digressing the topic. I'm not digressing. Chronic, are you saying you're you're bringing an, are you are bringing You are bringing an example to say Zanim means such and such. Are you saying your Quranic translations are wrong when they translate Zanim? I'm not well interested in translations. Then you can't play this game with in? me. Why I go to directly the Arabic words. So if, no, you, if don't. you don't know what it you means, don't stay so, out. So when you read the Quran, so when it says Alhamdulillah, you go Alhamdulillah, I'm going to go to dictionary now. Alhamd means, Rab means. Is that what you do, do you every single time? Do you, you, you want to see how time? I read my Quran? I'll show no, you. I don't want to see. I'm speaking to Brother Adnan on a specific issue. No, no, you ask me and I will show you. Look, look, you ask me a question and then you go to Adnan. Now, that's not really fair. I'll show you what, how, how I, I read my Quran. So when I go to read my Quran, yes. look, can you see this screen? Can I say something? Can I say something? This is how you, I guys, Quran you guys Quran. are defending the Christians here. I'll tell you something. No, we're not defending. You, guys you are, are unable to. You, you are, are unable to. The people who abuse the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. Wait, wait. Because Have you page, found the page? On page Have 162 page? And, and, and 16, where there's Lana, Lana, Lana. Is, Have you is, found is, the page? Yes, Ahmed. I found the page. Yes, go on. Okay. Okay. We're going we're gonna to now explain hmm. what Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani himself meant by Zurriyatul Baghaya. Okay. In his own words in Arabic. Okay. Okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Go on. C continue, please. Okay. You're not responding for some reason. No, no. I, I, can, I can hear okay. you, please. Can you see the second paragraph? Can you read mm -hmm. Arabic? Yes, I can read Arabic. Read the second paragraph. Walam anna kulla man huwa min wuldil halali wa laysa min zurriyatil baghaya wa nasli dajjal. Okay. Okay. Now, walam anna kulla man huwa min wuldil halal. What does this mean, Mansoor? You can explain to us. Walam. 
ان كل من هو من ولد من ولد الحلال نو اكشلي ام غانا ريد ام غانا ريد ذا اون ترانسليشن ذا احمد ترانسليشن فروم ذا اون بوك ام غانا ريد ات اور جاننا چاہیے کہ ہر ہر ایک شخص جو ولد حلال ہے اور خراب عورتوں اور دجال کی نسل میں سے نہیں ہے اوکے اوکے ویٹ 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 خراب عورتوں ویٹ ویٹ خراب اور ذریعت البغایا اوکے ویٹ ذریعت البغایا یو اون قادیانی احمدی ٹرانسلیشن سٹیٹس خراب عورتوں وٹ ڈز خراب عورتوں مین ان اردو وٹ ڈز خراب عورتوں یو یو میں یو ریڈنگ اردو یو سینگ خراب عورتوں یو نو وٹ ڈز خراب عورتیں مین اردو ان اردو it it means what it means what what, what you're saying brother exactly. what does it mean in urdu kharab aurtein kharab aurtein se kya matlab hai urdu mein kharab aurtein kharab aurtein who are not kharab aurtein kya kis tarah kharab kis tarah kharab unki unki taang kharab hai unka muh kharab hai baazu kharab hai kya kharab hai kharab aurtein the conduct is what does not it right mean? let me let me come back in english in english kharab i mean the qadiani the ahmadi translation states uh-huh. rotten women rotten yes. women correct yes yes Okay, yes. rotten, rotten. How? May listen. Durian, who is this about? Hey, your Ahmadi translation. The most important point. So your Ahmadi okay. translation of your own prophet. Yes. Using the word "duriyatul bagaya" translates it as rotten women, children, children of rotten women. Rotten mm-hmm. in what sense? Rotten. Where you taking from? Yeah, Karab. What is what is the meaning of Karab? What is the meaning of Karab? kharab hai doesn't mean rotten it means uh, their their conduct okay, okay. now you helping me good mashallah yeah, so, ill so, conduct ill conduct so woman yes so why you saying kharab as i don't know how, how okay, good, good, good mashallah I'm, i'm glad you helping me so uh, yeah, yeah, so this how... is so so that means that means woman, women yeah. women of ill conduct correct yeah. yes 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 one yes okay yes. women women children of women of ill conduct what does that yes. mean children it means what It children means what it means. Women of ill conduct. What does that mean, it, my brother? It means what it means. I what does it mean? I don't need to give you the seed. Do you think no, I need to give you the seed on it? Ch- okay, children of women of ill conduct, okay. as you have yourself translated the words yes. of your own prophet, false prophet, the Riyatul Bagaya. Alhamdulillah, you true are, prophet. You are translating it as two hundred plus countries, my brother. Two hundred plus countries, brother. Brother, we're establishing two hundred plus countries. Children, You so translated. You that. translated the word "zuriyatul bagaya" as yes. the children of women of ill conduct. What do you understand from that? Yes. Yes. What? Yes. What? Yes, I want what? to know what it means because It's I don't speak exactly Urdu that much. The same much. translation of "otulin bada dali ka zanim." Brother, uh, translation. Look, look, look. Now you can see everyone can see Ahmad is running away. Ahmad is right? very brave to this life, and he said, "You are a liar." You're what lying, is lying against the prophet. He used the word "duriyatul bagaya." I pulled out one of his own writings, yes. his own writings, where he explains what he means by "duriyatul bagaya," and yes. their own translation. Their okay. own translation translates it as uh, translates it at uh, as children of women of ill conduct, according to Ahmad. According to Ahmad, in Urdu it says "kharab ortein." That means bad women. That means women of bad character. women of bad character what we call prostitutes so when mm-hmm. i said in that conversation that mirza was calling others kanjriyon ke bachche which yeah. i translated as prostitutes children yeah. that's that's qualified directly by your own translation of his yeah. words zuriyatul bagaya okay now can i respond before you respond yes have i have i have i stated correctly everything no i'll tell you why Okay. Because no, no, wait. Saya, I, I tell you why. Because from Sahal Islam has not used the same translation everywhere for the word. Oh, okay, because but I here, tell you why. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me wait. tell you the here, difference. Here, let me tell you the difference. It's very here, interesting. It's, it's here, going to increase your knowledge. It's going to increase your knowledge. Ahmed, Ahmed. It's going to increase your knowledge. Trust me, please, please, please. Okay, I'm sure it's it will. It's going to help you. Trust But me. Before you increase my knowledge, yes, before yes. you increase my knowledge, here he means bastard children, correct? Yes, he. That's 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 what it says there. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So, brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. So so you brought the term the riyatul bagaya to me mm-hmm. claiming claiming yes. claiming yes. that I lied on your prophet because he uses the word in Ainai Kamalat Islam he yes. uses the word the riyatul bagaya so yes. I I translated those words 
as yes. children of prostitutes. You said you're lying because that's not what he's saying. He's saying other things in other places, translating yes. the same words in different ways. I pulled okay. out. I pulled out one of your own translations you of the same words. Five minutes, giving, bro. giving the meaning. Giving the it's meaning. Lecture, I was man. giving in my claim. So now, now okay. it is clear that your prophet, your false prophet. Okay. Was yes. calling people bastard children. The only anyone, okay. anyone. Okay. Okay. No, but the, by that virtue. Let me speak now. By that virtue, let me finish. Enough. Let me okay. finish. Can by that virtue, too by much, that please. virtue, he called multiple people this. Multiple. I have yes. multiple references. Multiple references where he's calling people waldul haram, haram zade. Okay. Haram zade nahi hai. Okay. Can I respond? Wait, wait, Can wait. I respond? He's using. Wait, brother. Yes. Let me, Ahmed. Let me finish. He's, no, you're giving a khutbah, bro. It's not a khutbah. He, like, you've no, spoken for like 15 let me, minutes. Let me finish. Your he brother is, should tell you, man. He is Please. using he is using creative language to say the same thing in different words, in different languages. He knew Persian, he knew Urdu, and he knew Arabic. And yes. he was using all three languages to, convey the, same, Arabic. to convey the same swear word, which is a bastard child. And now, because he called all these multiple people children, of prostitutes or bastard children, he did not produce any four witnesses for any of those cases to prove his case. Because in Sharia, in Islam, if you call someone a bastard child, or if you call a woman, any woman, Muslim or non-Muslim, any woman, especially when she hasn't done any crime, especially when she has, she's not the one who has hurt you, it were the children. But if you call the mother a prostitute and don't produce four witnesses, okay, you are, to say the least, a liar of the highest grade in Islam. You will be lashed 80 times, okay? okay. And your Where are the four witnesses for Otul in Bada Zali Kazani? Let me finish. Where are the four witnesses for Otul in Bada Zali Kazani? You're wrong. Your whole concept is incorrect. Let me Your whole concept is flawed, my brother. Let me finish. No, you're not finishing, though. You're taking 15 minutes. I'm finishing right now. I'm finishing. And your testimony, because you did not produce witnesses for accusing chaste women of unchastity, just because you don't like the children, you're calling them prostitutes, you have to produce four witnesses. If you don't, then you are a liar. You're a liar and your testimony will never be accepted in any Islamic court, let alone a testimony as a prophet. So Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, by that virtue, was a liar, was a liar. He was a false prophet and his testimony cannot be accepted in any basic Islamic court, let alone as a prophet of Allah. That's my case, brother. Now, okay, now don't speak. In the mess. Bismillah. Okay, so... You made a lot of points, especially the last one was the most stupid thing I've ever heard. Because if you knew the Quran says, oh, tullin zanim, Did the Quran mention four witnesses for calling whoever they were calling Zanim? Who, whoever was this word was, was, was being revealed for? First it makes of all, no sense. No, no, don't. You can't interject. Let me complete and then you can respond. So you don't even you're know. You're lying in the Quran. No, I'm not lying on the Quran. How am I lying? Is, you're lying. You're, you're lying mean? on the Quran. Huh? What, what does Zanim mean? Zanim. What does it mean? Waladul Haram. Mansoor, what is you pulled out the Arabic dictionary? What does it mean? No, I want him to pull out. I want him to pull out the dictionaries. Okay. Let's yes, not yes, give him. Just like, Mustafa, just Mustafa, like Mustafa, we, just no, like do we. Do it after. Do it after. No, 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 no. Do it after. No, 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 no. no you're I, claiming I for 15 minutes. You're claiming a meaning. For 15 minutes. You're, you're claiming a meaning. You have to qualify it like just like I did. I pulled out dictionaries. I showed you my proof, my evidence. Okay. Pull out a dictionary and show me what Zanim means. Pull out Ibn Mansoor. Lisan or Arab. Okay, okay. We'll do, we'll do it. We'll no. do it. We'll do it. Let me complete my point. Take notes, okay? okay? Take notes. Okay. So first first of all, you mentioned you, uh, your claim was in the Hyde Park when you were speaking to Imam Noonan. Your claim was that the Promised Messiah Islam has used certain words which doesn't even qualify him to be a normal human being, let alone a prophet. Not a normal, a moral human being, a okay. gentleman. Okay, yes, yes. And in that yeah. context, you gave these references from different sources Stated at different, different, different and I times. qualified all of them. No, no, no. I you can't speak. Why are you speaking? Why are you speaking? Yeah. yeah. Why are you speaking, Adnan, brother? Please. Okay. okay. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, because these, these, anything that's mentioned in the Quran or Hadith has a context. Okay. Similarly, when the Prophet Sallallahu is speaking about certain certain issues, there is a context to it. So calling, calling listen, them listen, 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 listen. Let, let me complete. There's Give me two the things. Context. There's two things. The Promised Messiah Islam, where he's used these harsh words, specifically... Uh, these are not harsh words. These are swear words. 
Come, let me complete. Swear so, words, brother. Yes, yes. Out. Go, so, so, go um, to Egypt. Go um, to Egypt. Um, and is a swear word. Go to Egypt and um, um, call someone. Umsus is a swear word. Umsus Bazralat is a swear word. Sorry. Tell me, is Umsus Bazralat a swear word? What? Can you translate this for me? Do you know what that is? When Azza Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu says Umsus Bazralat. Okay. To Urwa bin Masood. Is that a swear word? Yes or no? Like yes respond. or no? Yes or no? No, no because no. I, I need no, to. No, 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 no. You're interjecting. No. You keep no, no. on interjecting. Let me explain now. Let no, me explain need... now. You raise my the point. Time. Let me explain. It's my no, no, time. Let me, let me complete and you can Bakr, explain. Abu Bakr using yes. those words. Number one. Number one. Yes. Yes. Abu Bakr is not a prophet. Number one. That makes no sense. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's wait, false. Wait. That's false. Wait. Do you wait. believe? Okay, wait. let me ask you a question. Do you believe Hazrat Abu Bakr to be greater than the Prophet Muhammad? Do you Ahmed, believe? Wait. Listen, listen. No, 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 no. You gotta let me speak. You gotta let me speak. Ahmed, you've done wait. this with Ibrahim Noonan Sahib. Ahmed, you've done this with Ibrahim. You think I'm Ibrahim Noonan? I'm not. You're gonna let me a speak. chance. Give me a chance. You're going to, to let me. You no, haven't. Give me a chance to you haven't let me speak. You haven't let me speak. You have not let me speak. To finish my I need to. No, you're not. Because you're gonna do it after. No, no, when no. I made my points. Ahmed, you're gonna do it after. Give me a chance. You are going Ahmed, to do it give after. Give me a chance to finish my defense of Abu Bakr. You're gonna do it after. Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. Number one. Number one. Abu Bakr never claimed to be a prophet. Yes. He was not a prophet. He did did I say that? He didn't have did to have the house off. Wait. He didn't did have I to say have that? Osaf. Wait, wait. Number one. Abu number Bakr one. is the greatest person after who? I will, I will give you something who? better. The Holy Prophet oh. I'll I'm give gonna... you something better. The Prophet used words like this. Yes. The Prophet used words like this. So what yes. are you talking about? Yes. Now let me explain. So the does that make him... Does that make him... The Prophet never My God, this guy, this guy, seriously, you're making me angry now. Listen okay. to me Don't first. Angry. Don't the angry. prophet never called anyone a <coughs> bastard child. The prophet never called a, a chaste woman a prostitute. Your false prophet did. Abu Bakr never called a chaste <coughs> woman a prostitute. Let me finish. Let me finish. Abu Bakr never called a chaste woman a prostitute. The okay. prophet never called a chaste woman a prostitute. <coughs> the yeah. Quran never called any chaste woman a prostitute. Do you get my point? Do you get my point? Or you because don't get my point? Deliberately. No, because, because your point Do you don't get make my sense. Point? My point because is your calling, po your point don't calling make sense. chaste women. Your point chaste don't women. make sense. Your point don't make sense. That's what I'm telling you. I'll, I'll explain, when you how, use, it, I'll explain you, how it makes sense. If I call you someone a dog. Let, wait, wait. If I call <laughs> someone a dog. If I call someone a pig. If I yeah. tell someone to go and suck such and such. For example. Okay. If I do these things. Am I calling his mother a prostitute? Answer no, they are, no, they are equally wrong. No, they're, wrong. Not equally wrong. they're equally no, wrong. They are equally wrong. They are equally wrong. I'll tell you why. Are you one saying? Carries, are you one saying? Carries punishment in Islam. Inna kala, inna kala ala inna kala, wait, wait. Inna kala ala you're, so jahil, you say this? you're so jahil, you don't know the difference. Let me explain no, the you, difference. One carries punishment in Islam. When you call a chaste <laughs> woman a prostitute, that carries 80 lashes punishment in Islam. It is... A crime punishable by had. If you call someone a dog, if you call someone a pig, if you tell someone to go and suck such and such, yes. that carries no punishment in Islam. It's equally wrong. Sin. It is a sin. Wait. It is me... equally wrong. Wait, 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 wait. Equally abusive and foul language oh, and a swear oh, word. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're jahil about Islam. You don't know what you're talking about. Calling a chaste, it's, it's, it's in the Quran. Calling a chaste woman unchaste or calling her a prostitute carries punishment it carries had in islam it is mm -hmm. a major crime it is mm -hmm. a capital crime in islam calling a woman prostitute a chaste woman mm -hmm. i'm so i'm so who sad is this chaste to woman? This to who is this Wait. chaste woman so so so, who is so this chaste woman? mirza mirza who is this chaste woman? repeatedly used this term you're making stuff up man child, you're making stuff up so everybody can see you didn't even let me speak you have okay. to interject every so, two so seconds stop. Stop it shows your, insecurity, stop, man. Stop with your clutching on to Stop straws. being insecure. Stop with your clutching let people speak. Straws. Let them complete. Because you show all these good morals in Hyde Park. I'm going to let you speak. Let others speak. Have five minutes of silence. You're very rude. And you're listen, very rude. You don't stop. No, you because you're being rude to a founder. If someone abuses the whole person, you, you, you want me to be nice and, to you? And you're disingenuous. You're very, you're very, very, very cunning person. Trying, trying to be clever, but not with we us. We know the same about you. Wallahi, we know the same about you. Sorry? You are very cunning. When you tell, on one hand, Ibrahim, we respect you, this decide. and that. On the other hand, you let are saying you are stupid. Let yeah, then, decide. then let people decide. Don't say these things because, okay. you know, it doesn't suit you. Ahmed, okay. 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 Can you, okay, can you stop with the ad hominem attacks, please? Okay, we, we don't appreciate ad hominem attacks. If you can't address the argument...
He said he called you. You did. You're now accusing who, who called, the character. Who called, you're not oh, sorry. Muhammad. You're now accusing the character in front of you. No, no, no. That's an ad hominem attack. We don't, we don't appreciate ad hominems. Okay. That's what. what so what, what, I'm going to I'm going to step in here because it. if you can't if you can't address the argument, then you've lost the argument. Yes. Okay, no, so I, let me be clear. The argument, the argument that Sultan put forward He's is in speak. Islam. Let me speak. Let me let me let me, speak. Let, let me, re, let let me, me reiterate speak. it because because we, we went off target. Let me reiterate it one second. You know one what second, it is? Second. It clearly shows you you five. Let, let me just reiterate very quickly just for the audience because a lot of people are saying they a lot of people are saying they've they've lost the thread, brother. Listen, I'm going to go back to the argument. Brother humanity, please one moment, please one more. I'm asking you, please. I'm pleading with you. That's exactly Just what he did, down. Ibrahim Noonan. There's folks in the speak. chat that have lost the thread. Okay. Ahmed, I'm let me let me just reiterate what was said. So what was said was, what was said yes. was in Islam, if you accuse an innocent lady of this yes. act, it carries yes. a capital punishment. Do you know this? Are you aware of this? I am aware of this, yes. Okay, I'm going to respond this beautifully cool. now because so, it, I, I, I'll see what Adnan, yeah, okay, brother cool. Adnan said. Hold on. I'll see what brother Adnan says to let, let me let me just let me just finish summarizing. No, brother Muhammad, the, the thing the, is, this is for the audience, is, not for you. I, I know, I understand what he said. I'm not a stupid person. Let, I know what he means. Audience, where he's going. I know exactly Ahmed, what he means. Ahmed, calm down. Ahmed, calm down. So, if anybody makes this acquisition, uh, this accusation in any context. And they are unable to provide the evidence which Islam requires, which is four witnesses, then they are to receive capital punishment. It doesn't matter who that person is. Do you agree not, with that? It's not an allegation on their, ah, uh, on so their mothers. You don't agree it's with that? It's not an allegation okay, on their mothers. Why? It's not an allegation about their mothers. It's not why an allegation about their mothers. Explain that, please. Okay, I'll explain that to you. He's saying it's not an allegation. No contact. I'm talking about let me if somebody let me accuses this, okay. any. Okay, listen. So, so listen. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. And he this. calls them the brother Adnan says, Bro brother, I'm, I'm gonna stick to the I'm gonna stick to the conversation. 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 If you means prostitutes. If you're gonna let me stick, yes, I'm gonna answer this. I'm gonna answer this. So, okay. So, he's so when, 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 let me answer. Calling his opponents children of prostitutes. Can you be silent for two minutes? What have the mothers done? Can you? Okay. Yes. The good emotional, of the good emotional, why the mother? Uh, why the mother? Speech, good emotional speech. Now let me speak, brother Danan. Look, I, I listened to you for three to four minutes. Wallahi, you didn't let me speak for thirty seconds. It shows where you stand. You gotta let me speak and then address my points. Okay? Please okay. let me speak. Don't okay. don't make it. Okay. So you said uh, you said umsus badlalat. You said that Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiAllahu anhu did not claim to be a prophet. That is such a flawed point that you just mentioned there. And then you went to the second point. I'm, I'm gonna address that as well. When Umsus Bazalat was said, yes, Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani says, by mentioning, you know, by mentioning this, this is worse than the mother. Write this down. He said, Bazalat Ibn Hajar mentioned that it's stricter, it's stricter than dissing their mother. And if you want the reference, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Okay? So the point that's being made no, here no, no. is. Read it's it. Not in a read, literal sense. read. 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 What Ibn Hajar said. Read. Read. Don't move on. Don't I'll send you the reference. Read. Yes. Read reference. what he said in yes, Arabic. Yes. Where, it, where did he say? I'll which volume? I have. I have Fatul Bari in front of me. I'll pull it yes. out right now. Yes. Read. Read. It's in Al Juz Al Khamis Fatul Bari. Yes. It's page three hundred and forty. Okay. Now let let, let me continue. Which, your whole which, point was. No. 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 No like I did, did I do, do justice? Don't make pro you see, you're dealing with a different species here. You know, us <laughs> people from the speaker's corner, we are a different species altogether. We're not gonna let you run away with your machine. Nobody, nobody's running them. away, you just don't you let make people claims, speak. you make claims, spin them, mistranslate no them, names. misrepresent them, and move on. We're okay, not gonna let you book. do that. Read open the book while I'm just speaking, said. read, open the book, and at, at, at the end, say it, 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 it's not mentioned, they are lied. Okay, open your book. You no, 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 no. Read what he said or don't mention it. Mm -hmm. Don't mention it. Read what he said. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, Ibn yes. Hajar is not the prophet of Allah. He yes. cannot, he cannot make Sharia or break Sharia. You, you Sharia know, is very clear. You guys. You, accuse, you, guys. you accuse a chaste woman of unchastity. You call a clean woman prostitute. You have to provide four witnesses.
This is not this, this capital crime. In nobody, Islam. nobody in the, in the Amdia community has ever understood this wearing, to mean in a literal wearing, sense. Wearing, this is incorrect. This is incorrect. This is your concern and understanding. Arms does not carry capital punishment. Full stop. Yeah, yeah. Who's saying? Who's who is saying this is about that? You didn't even mention that this this word Zuriyatul Bagaya is being used for Christians who abused our beloved Prophet and his and his his wives or mothers in okay, the worst why, possible why manner. Their in the why worst their possible mothers? manner. It's the, Quran about says, the Quran says the non-Muslim women are chaste. They can be chaste. You can get married to non-Muslim chaste women. Muhsanat. The Quran yes, so. uses the term that there are muhsanat among them. Why mm -hmm. call the mothers prostitute? Ahmed, mm -hmm. why yes. call the mothers prostitute? And if he did, did he provide four witnesses? Did he it's, provide not, it's not understood. It's not, it's not understood. It's your you jahala, isn't it? 80 lashes. It's just your jahala. You don't, understand the word. you don't understand his words. You don't understand can I well. can I just make one point here before we move on? Imagine someone calls Ahmed Ibn al Bagaya, someone calls Ahmed Haram Zada, someone calls Ahmed Walad al Haram, or calls your prophet that. You'd say it's okay, it doesn't mean that, right? You'd be happy with that. You would okay. not feel offended in any way, shape, right? If somebody calls you Haram Zada, you would not feel offended. If, I call if somebody calls one shaitan, second, right? I'm not finished yet. If I call brother Adnan, I'm not finished shaitan, yet. I'm not finished yet, Ahmed. Ahmed, right. I'm if not I call, finished yet. If, I call Adran, so if somebody shaitan, call, don't speak call over me, Ahmed. Ahmed, don't speak over me. I'm not finished. I will let you respond. Yes. What I'm saying, if somebody calls your prophet Haramzada, for example, if somebody calls your prophet Ibn al Bagaya or Walad al Haram, you would not consider that it means actually a son of a bastard, right? It has a different meaning. Is that correct? I would read his words, what he has explained it to be. I'll read no. the what would you understand without the explanation first given to you? Listen, man, you're defending Christians. You're no, defending I'm asking people you who abuse the prophet. You make no sense. Excuse Adnan, me, Ahmad. Adnan, Adnan. Yeah, you don't understand that this was referred to people Ahmad. who abuse the if prophet. If somebody did your not explain was, to you what it means, he abused the Muslims. You said if someone comes says La Nabi Abadi, then the prophet Ahmad. would say, "Oh, you are the son of uh, Ibn al Baqa." This is not what he said. Can I? Can I? This just is why you know because response. it wasn't about the Muslims. When so he if somebody Ibn calls Baba, you, are you listening, he, Ahmed, or are you just talking over me again? I want to speak if to somebody Brother, calls you and your prophet by these words without explaining anything, just use those terminologies, just use it. those phrases. Yes. What you do, would you understand by that? Listen, listen, whatever the understanding was, if the Christian missionaries use these words for our prophet, oh, Jazaa why aren't you why aren't you addressing the point? If somebody, if somebody is not if somebody is not explaining to you these terminologies. You don't you know this verse? What's the understanding of this verse? These Christian missionaries abused our beloved prophet and his mothers, and you want me to hug them? You want me to I'm kiss not them? defending you or your you are, prophet you are defending or the Christians. Christians. I'm simply asking brother if somebody uses Christians. Ahmed. That's what That's he's doing. The problem. That's what he's if doing. If you keep on, this is your last warning, Ahmed. If you keep on talking over me, I will kick you out okay. with no mercy. Right. Do you understand that? If you want to take opportunity to speak in Dawawai's channel, you need to behave. I am behaving. Right. You're, you're, so I'm asking you a simple wrong, question, wrong. right? I will give yes, you yes. opportunity to respond. Do you understand? Mention it once, though. If Mention somebody it once. calls you, yes. if somebody calls you and you're a prophet, mm -hmm. Ibn al Bagaya, Yes. Ibn al Haram, Walad al Haram. Yes. Calls you Haram Zada. Yes. Without explaining anything, calls you yes. and your prophet that thing. Yes. What would you understand by it? I would understand what, what he means by it. Exactly what he means by it. What okay, does it as, mean? As it what would huh? you understand it means? I want so you to now, explain to me how would you understand it? Tell okay, me in um, English that this yes. is what I would understand if somebody said that to me or to my prophet. I would read what he's mentioned in that no. context. What would you understand? Because I gave you the terms in English, sorry, Arabic and Urdu. Okay. So in so can English, I what would you understand in I'm English? Not, listen, listen, I'm not obliged to respond. You, you, you want a specific response. I'm not. If you, I am. Question, I am here for no. a specific response. Yes, Otherwise, you're interject. dodging. Don't because interject. now you, you realize you're losing don't the debate. You don't are interject. not able to respond okay. to it. And okay. now you're saying okay. I'm not obliged to respond. Okay. Do you know well, who says that? Okay, okay, okay. Now let me respond. Give me a give, give me a minute. Okay. Oh, take your if, time. Yes, Jazakallah. So if someone wrote a specific word with regards to Waladul Haram or things like that, okay. No. My question to answer. 
if somebody calls you, not writes to you, somebody calls you in this front of your face. This was no, listen, down. listen, this Ahmed. Down in the book. I, don't I want you to, I want you to answer my specific question. Right? All right. Don't All right. run around. Don't no waffle around. straight. If somebody in front of your face calls you this haram zada, mm. walad al haram, ibn al baqaya, three terms. I would mm -hmm. like you to tell me what would you understand and tell me in English what would you understand by it? What? What, what I would understand of Ibn al Bagaya? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're asking? Would you I have asked you to you be offended or please write down about it? He asked the same question. He asked the same question three times yes. and you are gone deaf, dumb and blind suddenly. No. You, 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 lost, say... you lost light of your eyes. Listen now again. We're going to okay. ask you the last time. If someone calls you Ibn al Bagaya or Ibn al Baghi, Ibn yes. al Baghi, Wald al Haram or Walad al Haram or Haram yes. Sada, yes. how would you understand it at first, uh, at the first moment? How would because you understand it? it? Because, because this, this is a false question. That's what I'm saying. That's my response. It's a false question. Would you because be offended? I have called, would you find if it offensive I have called, if you do that? No, no. If I have called the Prophet Sallallahu Wrong answer word. the question. Then I deserve don't to be called that. I don't deserve to be called that. Answer the question. This is what the Christians did. Yes, exactly. This is what the Christians did. Adnan, I'm going to have to let him go. I'm going to have to let him go. If he doesn't answer, this is you're going to go. In disgrace. Answer the question then. In disgrace. Last chance to answer, or I'm going to let you go in disgrace. Or, 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 or okay. come to Speaker's Corner. If you have, if you have any Murabi, any Imam, any Sheikh, who, yeah. who thinks Listen. he can defend your false prophet uh, on these issues we have discussed tonight specifically? True prophet of Allah. Discuss. True prophet Thomas, of Allah. No false. This is in speaker's corner. You're making Come claims. Today. It's an open platform. Let me this answer. Your, let me answer, your, Masood, brother. Brother, your, your no violence. No brother insults. Masood. No brother insults. Masood. No fights. Let me answer your question. Very peaceful, peaceful environment. No pressure. Okay. No okay. victim. No victim crying. No, no, yes, no one's crying. Did, did, no. did I do victim crying? So bring, did bring I claim victim scholars, crying? Bring your, did bring, I claim victim crying? Bring your scholars, bring your murabis, or bring your rant. imams to, it's to just talk a rant. to us. Bring the original sources it's just a rant. that we'll be talking. Okay, Brother Mansoor, I want to answer your question. So if someone asked me specifically what these, and, and he, he called me these things out, okay, uh, randomly. If I don't know, if I don't know the Arabic language or whatever language, I wouldn't know what they mean. Okay, if I know the language, let me explain what my answer. If I know the language, then yes, the translation is in in lay, 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 lay two sense. I can take it as 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 it's been as, as it's been explained. The son of a prostitute. It one of them is in Urdu. Listen, brother. One of them is in Urdu. You is understood at least one of them, right? Yes, the yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, so would you be pleased? So, would you so be happy with that, or, would, or would, you, would you be upset okay. with that? Okay, brother. You would not be pleased, pleased, right? Let's move forward. Let's move Islamically, forward. Islamically, now, if someone calls you Haram Zada or yes. Waladul Haram. Yes. Islamically, you know what the punishment is? Yes. You know what the punishment is? A word can be used in two contexts. Brother, 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 no, 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 no. Meaning, a word meaning, is not brother, always brother, used in a brother, 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 wait, wait, wait. If if yes. you give your talaq, if you give talaq, if you say talaq to your wife three times, and if you go in front of the judge and say, I didn't mean talaq, the judge will slap you and send Both you out covenant. and he will Both divorce your wife. You know why? Wait, wait, Both wait. Because it covenant. is the words that count. So if someone calls you Haram Zada or, today, or today Ibn al-Bari, al listen, 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 Ahmed, do you know what the punishment is in Islam? Do you know what the punishment is in Islam? Do you know the punishment? For what? For calling someone Haram Zada. It depends. If you're claiming. <laughs> for, 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 if, you, if you're claiming. For Ahmadis, it depends. For Ahmadis, it depends. No, I mean, I'm I talking about the word. I can't take you seriously now. I'm I speaking about the word. Seriously anymore. All right, I guess, I guys, I think we are just going in circles now. It's the same thing I over and over for the last the 20 minutes. So Ahmed R, I think, look, if you want to, I don't know, continue, perhaps mm. come down to Speaker's Corner and have a man to man, face something? to face. Well, I've done. The the lark is the majaz. Is the lark is not in the song. an idiom. The lark is not an idiom, my brother. It's not majazi. So you're giving false examples here out of nowhere. I don't know where you're getting this from. You get, the lark is not a majazi thing. It's a physical thing that happens. If I give the lark to my wife, it's not a majazi thing. Whereas if I call you, if I call you, it if I call you the to shaitan, if I call you the to shaitan, so when you say it depends, 
if when I you say it depends you, on haram listen, zada, it depends. Listen, it depends listen. on walad al haram or walad al haram. The, it depends on. I want to say last uh, thing. I want to last. I want to say last thing before I go. I want to say last thing. So Thomas that's Salih it. Salam has you, used Buriyat al Bagaya and think, Ibn Bagaya. Guys, I think we guys we need to move on. This, yeah, uh, yeah. Ahmed, you're most welcome to come and face me in the park. We need yeah. to move on because it's been all right, Ahmed. Bring we will see you in Speaker's bring, Corner. Is that right? Bring, all right. Bring your okay. Okay. Inshallah, bring we'll see you in Speaker's bring Corner. Bring How is yeah. it right. today? Did you enjoy later. it? Right. Who do we have next? <laughs> are people are waiting. circles for the last, I don't know how long. Hashim, your screen is frozen, though, by the way. How do you even talk to people like this? They are so manipulative and so like spin doctors. Black and white. Black and white statements that cannot be mistranslated or misinterpreted, they try to spin them. Now, they Let's tried with Zuriyat al-Bagaya, they think... tried with Zuriyat al-Bagaya, but their own books dismantle them, bury them. Okay, so it's, it's, it's very, very disturbing that they believe in a prophet, uh, in, a, in a person like this as a prophet of God. Yeah, this Im person, Bagar, a man, person, let alone a if, prophet of God. If somebody were to call this brother Ahmed by these terms on the street. He wouldn't be just sitting there and smiling. He would be raging, right? And, and you know, will, will defend himself from these insults. I, I challenged him, go to Bradford and call any Pakistani, random Pakistani Haramzada, okay. and then let him and tell him that, let me explain the context or let me explain what I mean. And then see if he gives you time. Okay. Let me just get brother Bashir for a little while again, once again. Asalaamu Alaikum, brother. I'm sure you are enjoying this conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I just want to say, brothers, I've been dealing with it for like almost 10, 15 years. And brother, I was eager to learn. I don't know why the, these guys aren't, but only Allah guides. But I was eager to learn, <clears throat> you know. And uh, how many uh, hadiths say Allah Nabi Abadi? I was like, wow, it's a lot. You know, <laughs> 15 years ago, I said, it's not just one. It's like so many. And then I, I looked at all the evidence. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot. Um, um, Sunni Islam has a strong case for rejecting. So un un unfortunately, the, 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 this brother is stuck in that cycle. But hey, we got someone else and that's it. I'm out of here. Assalamu alaikum. Right, uh, brother Taha, you've been waiting. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, how you guys doing? Congratulations on the 100K subscribers. Um, I've been at work this whole time, so I've been listening to the conversation in my ear while I'm while I'm at work. So no worries. Yeah, apologies um, for you know just making your blood rage and you know. And <laughs> no, so okay. so forth. That's the nature of the that. discussion that happens often. Uh, you know, when you're discussing this kind of hot topics. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, I'm a revert. Alhamdulillah, it's been uh, 13 years. Um, I gotta say, you guys are definitely an inspiration. Uh, I watch a lot of your content, Hash Hashim and uh, Mansoor, and uh, I've probably watched every single debate that Adnan Rashid has had <laughs> with, uh, you know, James White and Samuel Green, and you know, countless others. But uh, yeah, so let let me just get to it. I, I have a little bit uh, of time left before I have to go back to work. But um, what are you calling so, uh, America, United oh, States? That's fine. Yeah. yeah. So alhamdulillah, I've been, uh, you know, I've, you know, for the last four or five years, I've been, you know, practicing and, and doing a lot of studying. And I have a lot of conversations with my family about Christianity. Um, and so, you know, alhamdulillah, I've done a lot of, you know, reading and watching a lot of content. But some of the things that I come across uh, that, uh, you know, obviously, I don't think they're, they're good points that the Christians make, but it is a little bit of a you know, obviously, we, we mentioned many times that the Trinity is not mentioned anywhere in the Bible, not the word itself, but the actual doctrine. There's nothing mentioned in the Bible. Um, but when when I bring this topic up, they'll often quote Matthew 28, 19, um, you know, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. I was wondering what your guys uh, responses to this. I've heard a couple of responses in terms of obviously it doesn't it doesn't say anywhere in there that they're co-equal, co-existent. Um, but obviously what they will say was their response to that will be, um, well, if you were to do that in Islam, isn't that shirk? And so obviously they try to put you in a corner and why would it be shirk if they're not co-equal or coexistent? And so, um, yeah, the, that's number one. And by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll bring up two points. And if I have to go, then I would just love to hear the response while I'm at work. Um, so that's one point right there is, is your responses to Matthew 28, 19. Um, the other response is obviously we know that the uh, Gospels, the four Gospels are anonymous. 
Um, there's nowhere in there where they credit who wrote them. Um, and most Christian scholars will admit this and historians will admit this. Um, but the response that you get from them is that, no, but these gospels, you know, we don't know who wrote them, but these gospels were uh, circulating in the first century. And so you read the the early church fathers. So my, so when I do my research, sorry, I know I'm, I'm bouncing off, you know, two different points, but I'll just give these points to you guys and you guys can respond how you like. Um, so when it comes to, you know, when you read the, the early works of the church fathers, they often quote, you know, passages from um, Mark and, and Matthew and um, I believe Luke and other different passages from the Bible. I don't know if they're in, you know, when you're reading the works, it, it gives a reference to these quotes, to these uh, passages. I don't know if that's actually in the writings or the person that is, you know, translating these writings is just putting that in there as a reference. Um, and so I guess my question would be, what is your response to somebody who says that these works were circulating during the first century and second century? And our evidence for that is the church fathers often quote them. Who wants to take a, take a go? Go ahead, Adnan. Uh, the first point, 2819 Matthew, uh, there are a number of ways uh, one can look at it. Number one, some scholars modern scholars, they believe that this is a later development. These are not the words of Jesus. Rather, they were added later on. And one such scholar is uh, Graham Stanton uh, from the University of uh, uh, Cambridge. He, in his book, Jesus and the Gospels, uh, he stated that this is a later development. This formula, the triadic formula, baptizing nations in the name of the Father, the, the Son, and the Spirit. Because it goes against uh, the words of Jesus from the same gospel. There is a direct contradiction where Jesus, in the gospel of Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, if I'm not mistaken, states that, Go you not into the house of the Gentile, rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. These are the instructions he's giving his disciples. And for some reason, near the end of the gospel, he seems to have changed his mind, which doesn't make sense. Because he made it very clear in the Gospel of Matthew in particular that he was sent only to, to the Israelites. Okay? Not to the entire world. So that's one thing. Second, in the Gospel of Luke, uh, sorry, in the book of Acts, we are told that the disciples were baptizing people in the name of Jesus, not in the name of the triad. Okay? So even though Jesus had allegedly given instructions, allegedly, that go and baptize nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. For some reason, the disciples ignored him, and they were baptizing people in the name of Jesus, only one person. So clearly, there is something messed up, okay? Or clearly, there is something fishy there. So uh, scholars, having studied all these things, they claim that this was a later development then again, the missionaries and these conservative scholars will come back and say, oh, no, this is a liberal opinion. This is not true. They are just these people are just biased. They don't accept. But then again, if, even if we were to take the gospel of Matthew at face value, it contradicts itself. In one place, Jesus is saying, go only to the Israelites and don't go to the Gentiles. In the other place, for some reason, he, has, he seems to have changed his mind. And amazingly, in the book of Acts, again, we see that the direct disciples of Jesus Christ are not interested in Gentiles. It is only Paul who goes to the Gentiles and starts teaching them uh, about Jesus Christ. But the main disciples of Jesus, his uh, Ansar, or you can say his, uh, his Hawariun, his companions, his disciples, were based in Jerusalem. People like James and the Jerusalem uh, Council. This is clearly visible in the book of Acts. That's the first thing. The second thing you mentioned was what? That was what? What was the second question? The second question was when when so patriotic, patriotic citations. Oh, yeah, yes. So, yeah. Okay. The church fathers have been heavily interpolated. Okay. A lot of these biblical references were copied into the writings of the church fathers by the copy uh, copyists. Okay. There is plenty of evidence for this. I mean, these scribes imagine were interpolating the Bible. They were adding to the text of the New Testament. Why would we not do that with the writings of the church father? That's the logical uh, argument. And we have physical evidence of 
interpolations, additions made into the writings of the church fathers because we don't have any early manuscripts from the church fathers. The church father writings we have are from later copyists. Okay, many of them are very, very late. Okay, even secular historians were interpolated, like Josephus. You know, there are two passages that refer to Jesus Christ in Josephus. One of them states that uh, Jesus uh, basically was crucified and was a good man, rose on the third day and preached to the people. This is this cannot be a Pharisee, Pharisaic Jew writing this. Okay, scholars believe this was a later hand, a Catholic hand that added into the text of Josephus. So the longer longer passage uh, on Jesus in the book of Josephus or in his history is interpolated. So there are many many examples like that. So we cannot take this claim at face value that church fathers were actually quoting from the texts of the gospel. And let's say even if that's true, even if that's true, how does how 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 does this claim make the gospels early, and how do, does this make the gospels? Uh, basically uh, authentic in terms of the attribution to persons okay so all major scholars of the history of the gospels are unanimous that these were four anonymous documents the names were attached to them in the mid second century if not late second century i hope that makes sense that's the answer yeah that that, that makes sense um if you can uh, reference any of those uh, scholars that uh claim that the Gospels are anonymous, that would be great. Um, obviously, Christians are, you know, even Christian scholars will be biased and, and say that there's no doubt that these four were written by Lee, John. Lee Martin MacDonald. Lee Martin MacDonald has a book okay. on the canonization of the Bible. Okay, the canon of the Bible. Then we have another book by Graham Stanton, The Gospels and Jesus, Jesus and the Gospels. Okay. Okay. He has two books, by the way. Jesus and the Gospels and gospel and Jesus. So you can read both books and he discusses this. These documents were anonymous documents and they were initially called memoirs of the apostles. So, so the first time names were be given to these gospels were in the first, second century. According to Eusebius, who's writing in the fourth century, there was a man called Papias of Hierapolis who gave names to these gospels. And who tells us this? Eusebius in the fourth century. Okay, we don't know who the hell Papias is. We don't know who he is. We don't know anything about him. Okay, apart from the fact what, what Eusebius tells us 250 years later. So that's it. That's a short answer. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, last point, if uh, you guys don't mind me making, is if, uh, um, you know, a lot of times that the Christians will, will reference Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22 um, as a way to... Uh, you know, say that the Old Testament uh, prophesied the, the coming of the Messiah. Um, I know that they don't mention the, the Messiah is not, not even mentioned in those, you know, uh, those writings. But what, what, what else would you respond to, uh, you know, debunk those? those we, we would claims? respond. We would respond by pointing to Psalm 91, a prophecy about Jesus Christ that mentions him by name. The last word of the prophecy the last word of the psalm is yeshua and it has been translated in uh, in the english bibles as follows that i will give him my salvation the word salvation there in hebrew is yeshua okay and the name of isa alayhi salam was yusha or yeshua okay and if you read that psalm psalm 91 which is a prophecy about isa alayhi salam according to the gospel of matthew chapter 4 the dialogue between the devil and uh, Isa alayhi salam or Jesus, uh, allegedly the dialogue, basically uh, the devil uses a passage, a part of this prophecy against Jesus and Jesus does not deny it. So Psalm 91 is the best response to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, according to the Jewish rabbis and many Christian scholars, it refers to either prophet Jeremiah or Isaiah himself or due to Isaiah for that matter uh, or the tribe of Israel. Okay. So it doesn't stand the test of scrutiny for a number of reasons. So the best response is Psalm 91, okay? And there is no way to undo Psalm 91. Actually, Psalm 91 is a good treatment of the Ahmadis as well because it categorically shows you that Jesus will not be killed. He won't even be scratched, let alone brutalized. Psalm 91 is a very powerful testimony 
a prophecy not only against Christians who believe in, in the crucifixion, but even Ahmadis who believe in uh, similar absurdities. Okay. So, well, yeah, just want to ask one thing, brother, brother, brother Taha. So, according to, uh, if you want to also, the new Jerome, um, I don't know if you see this. Um, this is the new Jerome biblical commentary. Um, if you go to that, and you can get a, a copy in any library, actually, if you go to the front of the Gospels, the opening paragraph is very clear. It says, and I'm reading page 596, it says, authorship of Mark, nothing in the Gospel identifies its author by the name, since the label according to Mark was added. That label probably reflects the identification made in patristic times between the author of this Gospel and uh, um, other, other commentators. So, even in their own commentaries, they're very clear that they don't know the authorship. The problem is the Christians don't read this stuff. That's the problem. So if you actually go to the sources, they're very open about it, except the street-level preacher who isn't. Okay. Jazakallah khairan. Um, I hope this answers all your questions, brother. Thanks for joining. I'm going to go to the next uh, caller, inshallah. Thanks for joining, brother. Okay. Right. Alaikum. Brother Taha, you're muted. Do you want to unmute and say anything? That's right. He's probably gone back to work. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Anyway. Uh, right. Who do we have next? Saber. Saber. Assalamu alaikum. Do you guys hear me? Assalamu alaikum. Yes, we can hear you. How are you, brother? I'm doing great. Um, my question uh, regards freedom of speech. And it's kind of, it's been on my mind recently. I'm not sure why. But just to give you some con some context, <clears throat> I grew up in Saudi Arabia, but I grew up in American private school. So there was a contrast a contrast between the, free the freedom of speech that they taught us in school, like in, in history. And they would teach us about how like authoritarian, authoritarian regimes uh, didn't have free speech, which then cause the fall of their societies, things like that, things of that nature, and how freedom of speech in the West is a good thing because people can criticize the leaders, um, which, which creates a better society and things like that. So I grew up thinking that this is like a good thing, you know, um, until obviously, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam was being, uh, you know, made fun of and the deen was being made fun of, so then I have to take a step back when it comes to freedom of speech. And and then I was told that in in the Muslim society, if you want to criticize like the leaders, there is like it's it can be considered as backbiting. There's like certain rules to which criticize the leaders. So I'm just I'm asking how do we as Muslims like navigate this this kind of Western strong point of 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 uh, freedom of speech? So what's the question? You want to have the freedom to criticize the leaders? Is that what you're saying? No. How do we like navigate this as Muslims? Uh, because freedom of speech is like a strong point that the Western have. They say like it's a strong thing to have in society. Yeah, Obviously, but freedom of speech, is your definition based on the Western liberal secular view or is this freedom of speech something else for you? I mean, I guess so. Like, that's just the way freedom I was taught, of speech, you know? Yeah, freedom of speech includes freedom to insult, you know. Pr freedom not just to criticize someone, not just to speak out when something is wrong, which is permissible in Islam, but the freedom to insult, the freedom to basically, you know, like you just mentioned about uh, saying anything against the Prophet Wasallam. freedom of speech includes all this, including the, the burning of the Quran, which we saw recently. So it's not something which you can say that yes it is the same exact definition in islam and also in in the western secular view okay yeah, th yeah that makes sense so you would say in, in under islamic society like it would be allowed to kind of have these discussions yeah so we have boundaries in islam i mean obviously there's freedom to speak to question well, we do so yeah, yeah so brothers of we do so so discussion questions argumentation is encouraged in Islam with boundaries, right? That there are certain rules that guide what we can 
talk about and question about. And as long as you're not insulting the prophets, you're not insulting Allah, you're not insulting the Quran and things like this, then you can question anything. That's Islam allows questioning, right? What we don't take though is we don't take the liberal, liberal secular view that the right to freedom of choice is the right to insult, mock, and undertake any kind of jest that we feel is appropriate because you feel it's you feel it's appropriate. Because what they do is they make the individual um, um, uh, sovereign, right? So the individual gets to decide what is good and bad, and they can mock anything they like because it's their right, their individual right. But we live under a different system in Islam. And you know that very clearly, right? We are not individually sovereign. The sovereign is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah has given us guidance on what the boundaries are. So it is not even a one-for-one -one comparison. You're actually, you're actually making a category mistake here by aligning the freedom speech of the West, which is um, dictated under a totally different philosophical foundation, to a ability to question and ask and be an inquire, which is an Islamic right. It's, it's different, the two different things. Just yeah. one thing, uh, Brother Zubair, do you think we have the right to offend someone? <laughs> Interesting. Because the freedom um, of speech, you know, proponents, they want blanketly that yes, you should have a right to offend. I mean, what right do I have to offend your mother? Think about it. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's outrageous, but that's what people are trying to get this freedom. And you know, this freedom um, that they're trying to get is actually not just to have freedom to like express against uh, a tyrant ruler or so on. Ultimately, what they want is the freedom away from religion, religious ideologies, teachings, laws, and so on and so forth. That's what it's rooted. I and mean, that's what our brothers and sisters in, you know, in, in, in our Arab world, maybe they didn't appreciate early enough rather than jumping on the bandwagon and saying, we want that freedom too as well. But this, the, these are the philosophical root and the foundation why they want this kind of freedom. Freedom for them, it's not just freedom to, you know, just to you know, disagree and, you know, correct someone and so on. But all denying this is just to dismantle whole of the religious foundation in which God and divine law is something that's paramount. For them, they don't want that. As Brother Muhammad was saying, individual is sovereign. That's the whole idea of you know this freedom and liberty. So you know, I hope you know this clarifies some of the thoughts, inshallah. But you know, it's a long issue, so because politically loaded questions. Um, yeah. But I think you get the gist. We do not have in Islam yeah. the freedom, the right to offend anyone. Okay, you know, in the Quran, Allah says, "Do not even insult their their false gods, their gods, they which they think is true, but to us, of course, false gods, lest they insult Allah back." So we don't even have the right to insult someone's false gods, whether it could be any any gods they worship. So there's no right to offend. This is as far as I understand. Unless um, Brother Ustad Adnan wants to add anything to it, inshallah. I need to say walaikum salam, brothers. I need to say walaikum salam, brothers. I need to leave now, but um, alhamdulillah, yeah, 100,000. We're going to short as well, um, very quickly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, okay. I can see okay. a few more Someone guests is. on here. But, okay. I'll hang around for as long as I can. That's it. No more guests. Just these three final um, guests, and we're going to close, inshallah, in what, 10 minutes max. Because yeah, sure. we have work in the morning as well. You are muted. Adnan, you are muted. Sorry, can I take your jaza as well? We're going <laughs> to. Let's take these three, last three guests one by one, shall we, um, Hashim? All right. Thank you. Then, yes. Yeah. It okay, Brother now. Zubair, nice having yeah, you yeah. here. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Until next time. All right. So let's add. Oh, sorry. Jackie boys next year. Yeah, yeah, let's add them all together. Okay. You are the final guest. Alaykum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Salam alaikum. Yeah. Wa alaikum assalam. Oh, all Muslims, mashallah. What's on your mind? Just let us know what's in your mind. Because we're going to um, close our stream very shortly. And I appreciate it's been long and you've been waiting patiently. But let's try to wrap this up, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, I, I just wanted to say that, alhamdulillah, I'm very happy that. That that yeah that Dabba wise that that Subhanallah that you reach hundred thousand subscribers that and Alhamdulillah I'm very happy for you for you and uh, I also sorry if I keep on rambling too much but I I just want to say that um Alhamdulillah I I learned a lot in regard to Islam and my Deen and uh, increasing my iman because of your contributions and your videos and uh, and I'm really grateful for it uh, for you uh, Uncle Mansour. 
uncle hashim ustad adnan i'm really grateful for you and the things that you done to the uh, in terms of contributing to the muslim ummah and i just want to say that uh you know i i i, I really have uh, you know from your video they really had opened my eyes like in terms of to islam and stuff because when i was younger and stuff i used to be quite ignorant of things and i used to be quite um shallow minded uh, as you can say and i used to like question a lot of things but alhamdulillah after like i started to get a bit older and i guess more mature mature i guess and like it just i just what i just wanted to understand understand things more better and obviously i started um uh looking at different avenues of things for example reading the quran and stuff like that and also watching your videos and stuff i i really found them beneficial and and from those videos it really has increased my iman and my faith uh, so i'm just i just want to say that i'm very grateful for you and and that this 100000 subscribers that you guys reach alhamdulillah is well deserved and inshallah that um ustad adnan rashid um he gets the yeah 100000 subscribers to inshallah type around me inshallah 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 for the converts we really appreciate yeah. we should be on the start of god's channel next inshallah for the 100000 inshallah yeah and I, okay, i just i just want to say that uh, inshallah you keep up with the great work and the dawa and that, uh, that, all, that i just want to say that I, i'm always very grateful for it and i always find it beneficial when i watch it and and especially the videos as a whole cuz they really opened my eyes and i just want to say that i'm very happy and stuff i know you probably hear this a lot of times anyway so but i just i just want to say where, i'm where really are you grateful calling, and where happy. are you calling from jackie boy uh I, i'm i i mean i'm from uh, birmingham but okay. but right now i'm in oxford because of like studies and stuff but i but i inshallah also inshallah in the future that i, I want to one day come down to hyde park and actually see you in person and actually see you and you know you know stuff so yeah it's, it's yeah, one okay. of the things i really want to do as like as something that i want to do in the future so okay, that's inshallah, one of my goals we'll, inshallah. You there, inshallah we'll um we'll wait to meet you inshallah and, and may allah bless you and your family yeah. and and keep you well yeah. okay jazakallah walakum assalam jazakallah barakallah fik thank you barakallah fik assalamualaikum uh, i just want to say that uh, thank you guys you're doing great job uh, i learned a lot from your lectures but i just want to know if you're doing any further sessions on kalyanism because i missed it today and there is <laughs> were you inspired by nans uh, you today? missed it today <laughs> yeah i uh, yeah. actually i joined a little, a little um, later i was a bit well, busy so we'll keep this so in I mind have, uh, you know yeah. i don't have much material to yeah. uh, counter these kalyanis others i defend uh, islam and every with everyone every person i meet but with this okay. with these people because i don't i have not read much about this kadianism okay. so i don't have that much material to de- uh, defend uh, myself so point I, taken I brother point to... taken um we will think inshallah. about it inshallah inshallah we'll, 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 we'll benefit in money inshallah yeah thank you okay. god bless you stay blessed barakallahu feek assalamu alaikum jazakallahu khairan wa alaikum assalam brother abdullah assalamu alaikum brother hashim congratulations for 100000 subscribers here wa alaikum assalam brother mansur So in this equation I I I'm just uh, during my holidays I'm reading the Quran so I now I'm in the Surah Al-Ali Imran at the uh, verse 110 it says that kuntum khayra ummatan ukhrijat lin nas ta'miruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah wa law amana ahli al-kitab la kana khayrun lahum minhum al-mu'minina wa aktsarhum al-fasiqun They said it said that you are the best community ever raised for humanity you encourage good forbid evil and believe in allah had the people of the book believed it would have been better for them some of them are faithful but most of them are rebellious and the other mm-hmm. ayah says that they can never inflict harm on you except uh, lit, uh, little annoyance but if they meet you in battle they will flee and they will have no helpers so the other guys that come like these uh, verses that i re- i'm reading like and i'm seeing the debates of brother mansur and brother hashim and i see that sometimes the people that debating you guys like they're fleeing like i'm just reading these verses and i'm seeing the 
actions in the battlefield like it's the the dawa is a battlefield that you guys are doing oh. so it yeah. improves my iman intellectual my battle my day. Day. yeah 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 it's it's it's, it's actually battle it, yes. it needs a courage it's uh, it's not something that everyone can do anyone can do so by, by seeing you guys it improves my iman day by day like it encourages me to study more and to 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 improve yes. my knowledge about islam keep keep up with the reading of the quran you're in the right direction brother and keep us keep us in your dua inshallah yes. alhamdulillah okay inshallah. brother okay assalamu alaikum hello hi. hello yoji boji how are you doing hi hi how is everyone we, yeah, we are good where, where are good. you calling from yoji well i i'm i'm calling from um the you know, us okay good what's yeah. on your mind today Um I had a few questions. Um, Can you just have well, one question please if you don't mind? Okay, okay. give us your one best. Question. Give us your best. Fair shot. enough, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um What what is um is this um what do you guys study? What? Lots of different what things. What do you guys study? <laughs> Lots of different things. Okay, is there anything okay, you want okay. to know about Islam, Muslim Islam? What, Islam, yeah. Yeah, okay. do you want to become a Muslim? So, Now um so um for me I don't identify as religion as a religion you know Do you follow yeah. a religion? No I don't follow any particular religion. Do you yeah. believe in God? Yes, I believe in um the highest consciousness, the highest. You believe in the highest consciousness? Are, yeah. Are you a spiritualist? Yes, I'm spiritual. I'm I'm um spiritual. Yeah, I practice that path, yeah. So so you believe in spirituality, yes? Yeah, okay. yeah, I I believe. I believe um, I... so on your path to spirituality, okay, so on your path to spirituality, why do you do this? What drives you to do this? For um, connection, you know, uh, um even now, you know, uh, I'm um when I'm, when I'm out there, I, I'm um constantly learning different uh, different stuff, you know. Mhm. In books, TV, you know, video the, games. I'm the, learning. The question is: is you know this mm-hmm. drive to connect to spirituality, mm-hmm. this, this desire that you have? Where does that no, desire come to... from? Did you learn? Did you learn it, so, or was it already inside? It's uh, it's it came natural, it came natural, yeah. It came naturally. Okay, good, good. Yeah, so it came, it came naturally. So you believe you naturally have a need to. to to at least look sir, for something God. spiritual yes right um okay good yes sir so God, yes. we believe the same thing so, mm-hmm. so we we believe or not we don't believe we're told that mm-hmm. allah has instilled within every human being something called mm-hmm. the fitra which is a natural disposition to seek out god and worship him mm-hmm. now here's mm-hmm. the problem You have a basic instinct to seek God. If you seek yeah, out yeah. and worship the wrong thing, if you seek out and worship the wrong thing, you are you are at fault. If yes, yes, you have been exposed to Islam. So here today, you have an opportunity to learn about the right path, which is Islam. Uh, so what have you done to learn about Islam? Because you're on our channel. What have you done to learn about Islam? So uh, I've learned from. Um... what is a quran uh, in, from people i've learned mm-hmm. from what is a quran from people and they told they tell me to um go read it and i read it you know some of it you know okay not all but some you know i listened to in islam you know. who is god who is god mm-hmm. in islam do do you know have you have you learned who is god in islam all merciful all merciful all knowing um all important allah is one yeah yes so yeah, uh, do you know yeah, this yeah. Do, 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 do you know our conception of Allah do you know our conception of God well he's he's all knowing he sees everything um, he's in complete control of everything and his own being does that yes. make sense to you yes he's in control because yeah. if, if he was Good. Not, so he why do you not worship him? him why do you not worship him Why do you not worship this god versus spirituality? Why do you not worship the god that makes sense? Well, 
I don't worship a word. I I I I God God knows. <laughs> Well, who said a word? W- Sorry, yeah. we we don't worship a word either. <laughs> well, 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 we don't why, we don't why, worship why, a word. God is not a word to us. Why why put too much emphasis on a name? What's no, going to no, happen no. to you when it's you not, die? It's not about the and name. And when we die, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Yoji, when we mm-hmm. die, when yeah. you die, yeah. what happens? Well, I I I believe the death of the body. Not mm-hmm. the soul goes on. Uh, so, so your and definition of death, soul? if death, oh, it goes where it needs to go. Depending, depending on who you are in this life, experience mm-hmm. wise. Yeah. So, do you believe in cycles of life and death, like reincarnation? No, I don't believe in that. But I, I, I do, I do believe that do what you do with your duty, right now in the present, mm-hmm. and God knows. God knows, you know. Okay. So suppose you know somebody dies and then mm-hmm. the soul goes where after death? Do you believe in heaven and hell? I believe that certain people are in hell right now. Experiences they're experiencing it right now, a certain level. Okay. But you believe certain people will go to heaven, right? Yeah, I believe certain people are on are, are in heaven right now. Right at, now. At, a, at a certain level. Yeah. On this earth, well, when when you say that, um, yeah, right now as we're experiencing life, some people are in another dimension. That's. that's Could you give like me an, one example of one person that you know is in actually in heaven right now that you you can point to and say that person is in heaven? So, a person that's that's like has fully surrendered themselves to, to that higher consciousness they're fully give me an example of an individual that, that you know of that is actually in heaven oh. right now and you can point to it's like you know what that person over there is in heaven i would i would say the people like like um sadhguru like like sadhguru he he's experiencing what's it like to sure. be like does he have a tummy ache sometimes mm-hmm. That sub Sadhguru has a tummy ache sometimes. Yes, he he's aware that he, the body is having tummy ache, but it is a matter of do he react to it like how ordinary people yeah. react. So to the it, yeah. the heaven that he's in, he's actually suffering sometimes. So well, it's not it, really well, heaven as well, in heaven, body, where the yeah. idea of heaven, the concept well, of heaven rather, is where there is no suffering, pure joy, tranquility, yes, so, bliss, so, contentment, so, so, happiness. So, so, Sadhguru, so Sadhguru yeah. often has headaches. If you ask him, that's not so, pure joy; it's pain. So, 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 so here it is. Do, 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 do you, do you guys, do, do you know um, people that that has fully surrendered? They can also enjoy pain, which is still heaven. They can also enjoy pain from within. They, 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 they they're, they're um, aware that the body is having pain, but they're not reactive to it. They did not ad- ad- identify. No, we talk about heaven. We talk about paradise. Mm-hmm. Not not in this world. In in paradise, well, there's, there's, no, pa- there's, there's no pain there. Yeah. In hell, there is. By the way, you mentioned Sadhguru. Well, well, do, do you know level. Sadhguru doesn't actually believe in God like the way you do? Well, he he believe in in a divine consciousness. He he, he do believe in a divine consciousness. He not not a god concept like in Abrahamic, you know. But he do. Yeah, I know. Do I know. He's, he's he's a Hindu. Okay, mm. he's a Shiva, but so he knows this, his God. He knows his God. Do you know your God? I believe that I, I, we, I directly came from him because he's the highest consciousness, and I'm consciousness. So you believe in Shiva now, yeah? No, I don't believe in. I mean that. I don't believe in Shiva or Krishna. Or, or do you? Do these. you even know the name of your God? No, he has no name, no age, no form. I don't how do you know that? So how 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 does he communicate to you at all, man? When I'm med- when I'm meditating, then how do you I, know how do you know it is God communicate. communicating with you? He it he said this stuff on Satan. Day. How do you know that? Because of the results that I got from but the from Satan could you. could give you lots of good results, you know. Yes, he can yes. Give uh, you lots yes. of gold and diamonds yeah. and stuff like yes. that as well. Does that but, make but, him but, God? No, it doesn't. But, 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 but you see, look, look, um, 
when when um so, so so you say that like satan comes nice first right satan always comes nice satan first. satan can deceive seen. you with with material yes. things which yes. you so, which you really value so mm, he'll come yes. with the things which you value yes so he, but the so question he, is this you're he, saying you meditate he, yet he, your god hasn't even revealed his name to you how is that because that's he's not a human he he would not i didn't say he, he was a human he, he, doesn't he would not a human. <laughs> tell to you have a name, name you don't need sure. to be a human well, well, why can't he be named consciousness? <laughs> like no, no, consciousness. Call... Yeah. What? Consciousness so, is, it's a state mm-hmm. of a person. It, it doesn't mean, for but example, you know, in, in Hinduism, they consider mm-hmm. Brahman to be this universal mm-hmm. consciousness. Is that mm-hmm. your God? No, um, God, I mean, he, he knows who, who, what I'm doing, uh, it, whether it's, it's Allah, Shiva, or... You know, Krishna. The, no, but that's the God thing. That... How mm-hmm. how do you know all this thing? How do you know? Where's your evidence that God has communicated to you at all? I studied. Oh, you said you meditated just now. Yeah, I, I meditated, which which in first studying. What did you study? It's a form of study. Stu- you stu- you studied study. what? You studied what? Yeah. What did you what study? Is your source? Well, what did you study, Yogi? What? I studied life, life within. That's what I study. Say life what? Life? Yeah, life within. What do you mean life no, no, within? I know, but what did you study? Did you study a text? Did you study study books, scriptures? What did you so study? I, I actually used to study, Um, I used to be study Christian and Hindu after, Hinduism after. I used to study them both, Christian, and then I, I flip-flop, you know. And, and you're but, neither but right now. now <laughs> yeah, I'm neither. I, I don't identify with neither. Because both of them okay. open the my eyes. The fact that you're neither means whatever you studied from Christianity to Hinduism, okay. you, you disagreed with. So what is no, it no, now? No, I, I, don't dis- I don't disagree completely with it because it, it, it also comes into my, you know, my spiritual belief. Well, what are you then? Are you a Christian or a Hindu if you study, if you don't disagree so, with it? Yeah, look, here's what I recommend. Um, uh, no, 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 he's a spiritualist. He's a spiritualist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, but he's so all over the place. What I'd recommend, Yoji. No, I, I used That's to. That's right, because he's a spiritual be my, Yeah, I used to be my dad. And I, I studied the Quran because um, right now, um, some somebody told me to study it for myself. So I studied, I studied a little bit, you know. But then, but then I found out that there was contradictions in the Quran, you know. Good. Yeah. Good. But what about the contradictions that you found in in the Hindu Who's and the Christian scriptures? Who said? So yes, they, they, yeah, yes, they, they, that's the thing. That's the thing. In in, in Hinduism, they they, they they accept they they Before totally we, agree Yoji, that there's contradictions. There are no contradictions in the Quran. Let, let me be clear. Let me be clear. Yoji, hold on. <laughs> okay, okay. There are anybody that told okay. you there are contradictions. The Quran is lying. Okay. Okay. They are. They are. They are. There is yeah. no contradiction in the Quran at oh, all. No, no, no. Now let no, me explain I, I, why. I, I, okay. For for well, let me explain. Let me explain. Let me hold on. Wait. So, for over fourteen hundred years, the Quran has a challenge that has challenged all of mankind, using whatever technology they have to find mistakes and contradictions of the Quran, and or produce something like it. And for over fourteen hundred years, nobody has met this challenge. And and what Allah also told us is nobody ever will. So there will never be a technology, there will never be anybody in humanity or any peoples in humanity or groups in humanity that will ever meet this challenge. Do you know of any other religious text that makes a challenge like this? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm I'm listening. So, did you hear what I just um, said? um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I, I heard a lot what you said. So I have, I have a con. I read the Quran for myself, and I have a con. Oh, I'll take to Ijaza, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll 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 like, you know, really appreciate being here quite long as well. Yeah. Inshallah, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Here, continue, okay. please carry on. Yeah, no, me too. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. next time, I'm done. Bye, Sarakum. Well, I found I found a contradiction. You know. Yeah. I, I need to go as well, brothers. Uh, say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we're going to have to leave this last guest. Where are you going? I'm really sorry. Yeah. That's right. Welcome so, Yoji, yeah. the Quran says there's no contradiction and you find a contradiction. So, yes. if, yes. You, if you realize um, that it is explained to you that there's no contradictions, 
Yes. The, yes. Then you will have a lot of um, explaining to do because a book. Yes. yes. Have, having so many things being described from, you know, ancient past to the future yes, yes. and yes. Uh, in the natural world and so on, you expect it to contain contradictions and stuff like that. But if it doesn't, then you have to be really, you know, exp you know, in a position to explain how is it possible a book like this is free from contradictions. Yes. Anyway, yes. so and, what's, what, and it, what's and the contradiction that you found? And it's stated in the um in the Quran. I mean, I, I it's not like I make stuff up. I, I I get it from the directly from the Quran, and I ask people about it. You know, let, let, let's hear and, it. And did they say? Okay, so in um so how, how do, do in in because uh, a lot of Muslims that that I've met um they they say that Allah has no form, has no age, and all of these stuff, right? Because He's beyond all of um forms, and He's beyond all of this, right? So what do you what do you guys can I can I just yes. rudely interrupt and ask you, a contradiction mm -hmm. is when you have two statements, you know, saying two different one things thing. for the yes, same yes. instance, right? So if you yes, have yes. in the Quran, yes. in one place it says one thing, and another place about the same thing says something different, mm -hmm. contradictory, they, they will say there's mm -hmm, a contradiction. Yes. So ignore mm -hmm. what Muslims think and Muslims, you know, you, you know what they yeah, understand. They... You need to mm -hmm. give me two texts. From the Quran, yes, and yes. say there you go. The two texts don't match with each mm. other. It seems to be contradictory. Yes. Then we can yes. deal so, with it. Okay, so there, there's this verse in the Quran. Um, yeah, it's, go ahead. it's stating that Allah, Allah has a face. So it's either spir a spiritual face or a physical face. It has to be a, a spiritual face in another dimension. Do, so, do so, you know? And, 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 do you and know what a contradiction is? I don't think you still understood what contradiction is. Okay. Uh, let, let's hear. Let's hear these two okay. ayat initially. Okay. So in one place, Allah says, says there's a face. Is face a face, shin, yeah, and arm and foot. You know, a foot. Yeah, yeah, sure, okay. sure. And elsewhere says what? And elsewhere it says, nor is there anything equivalent to him. Okay. So Not how do thing. these you, so, so so you can't compare you can't compare anything to him, yeah, physical or so, spiritual from the movies and stuff. You know, no, no, it's you say you can't compare anything. To the him. way That's Allah the is yeah. is such a unique being. Yes, that there is no comparison to Allah in His yes, right, reality. Right. So right. when Allah says, for example, one His names and attributes, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean like, for example, He is merciful and there cannot be anyone merciful. Okay, mm -hmm. this is not what it means. It means Allah's uniqueness in His mm -hmm. in His essence is something mm -hmm. that is totally mm -hmm. different than any of this creation because the creation yes. doesn't share these kind of attributes or names or the realities. Oh, so okay. if Allah says, Allah says, for example, everything will perish save His face, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean here just face. Of course, it means His whole self. Face, His countenance, is representing whole of Allah. That's the meaning in context. But mm -hmm. what we're saying is, even if it meant that Allah has a face, one of and his now, attributes, yes. it doesn't mean that Allah has no form or Allah has a form. There is but, no other verse yeah. that contradicts it. What it says is but, simply, <laughs> Allah's reality, there's no one, nothing in the creation is like Allah in his reality. Okay. okay? So, Allah so, may describe, try to understand this, Allah may describe mm -hmm. his reality in, in how he is. For example, he's the one who sees, who hears, and so on. But how he sees and how he hears in his reality, there's nothing in the creation that resembles him. That's okay. so the understanding. See all the so things. He can't have. Hmm? Yeah. See all. See all this. These things that you're you're explaining to me in depth. Yeah. Why isn't it not in the Quran or the in the Quran that how you're explaining it? It is not in the Quran it's, it's, when it says "laysa yeah. kamithlihi shay." There is nothing like into yes. his example. Wa huwa sami al basir, and he's so, the one who's the seer. He's the one who's okay. the hearer. So in okay. one verse, it tells you there's nothing like him at all in whatsoever. Yes. Yes. There's nothing like his likeness. Laisaka mithlihi shay. There's nothing like his likeness, but yet it affirms at the same time he is hearing and seeing. So it so, doesn't okay. say, for example, he's not someone who's hearing and seeing, but it says okay. his hearing and his likeness of. Seeing is unlike everyone else and everything else. 
So, yeah, Yoji, so, so, where, where is the contradiction? Okay. I still don't see where is the contradiction. Because you, you claim this was a contradiction. Where is the contradiction? Yeah, he's understood. Now he's so, like, understood. Now it's not a contradiction. It's like the explanation wasn't given to him as, yeah. as, as we we're explaining. So, so what about a shin? Because um, I, 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 that's interesting because, you know, um, when, when I went to chapter 60, 68, yeah. 40, mm -hmm. um, verse 42, it says, it says that he has a shin. And it will be no, it doesn't say he has a shin. If you think yeah. about all of the Quranic ayah, Allah is so, never saying, "Oh, I have hands," or "I have a face," so, "I have a shin." So, try to try so, to so, hear, so, hear me out, Yoji. So what's try to shin? understand. So, try to understand, Yoji. Yes, yes. I'm explaining yes. to you. Yes. Allah doesn't anywhere say, "Oh, I have hands and I have this and this." Everything in context, Allah. So, to give you an example, Allah says, for example, there are a certain group of people, the Yahud. The Jewish people, a fraction of them, of course, they said the hands of Allah is tied. And Allah yes. says, no, his, his hands are outstretched. He spends as he wishes. Now, they are saying Allah's hands are tied. What did they mean? That Allah physically have hands which are tied? No, mm -hmm. they mean Allah is a miser. He doesn't spend. Mm -hmm. Allah is saying, no, his hands, out, hands are outstretched. He spends. Mm -hmm. So from the context, we understand what the meaning is. Allah is not a miser. He's very, very generous. But because Allah is using a language in which he's explaining that his hands, Muslims say, even the literal meaning we have to affirm because we do not have to just go by the metaphorical figurative meaning that is contextually understood. Because Allah has used these words, there's nothing to prevent us from taking the literal meaning. In fact, this is what we accept and affirm. So once we affirm this, we do not say, how the modality is of this, this uh, hands of Allah. Because when I say, for example, the hands of a clock, what comes to your mind? It doesn't. You don't automatically picture hands like a human being, do you? So the error a of different kind people of hand, think, a different, hmm? yeah, a different kind. So of when hand, when I tell you, hand, you, imagine the hands yeah. of a clock. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. appear to you the hands of a clock like a human uh -huh. hand, does it? Right. It doesn't. Right. right. Yeah. Because yeah. you know the reality of the hands of a clock is not the same reality as the hands of a human. Right. So the Hello. mistake, mm -hmm. the mistake people make, Yoji, when mm -hmm. Allah is describing Himself like He has hands, people automatically try to understand and think and imagine mm -hmm. hands like a human being or something of the creation. No, 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 no. So those no. people who do, they're in error. Likewise, okay. the shin. Or Allah's eyes, they have no mm -hmm. resemblance to the creation. Right. But, but we look, affirm look, look. them because Allah described them. We don't look. speculate about Allah who He is because mm -hmm. we are finite, limited human beings. We cannot speculate about the absolute creator of the universe. So whatever mm -hmm. Allah tells us, we affirm. Because we know, as He said, there is no similarity between Allah and the creation in His likeness. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. And and you do you, have yeah, you heard kind of, of this? Yeah, kind of, have you have you heard that Muslims in Jannah will actually see Allah? Have you heard of this? See his form, yeah. Yes. What will um, happen so, to you? Will you ever see your God? What happens to you when you die? What's your view? So um, what I, I, I only God knows. So I I, I just tell people only. No, God but you knows say you communicate to God, so you, He in, should have in, told in, you what happens to you after no, you die. Not, not not vocally, not with a human voice, you know, like uh, all of that, you know. So how do you communicate he, he, then? He, he, he gave me stuff, you know. He gives me. No, no. Stuff. How how do you communicate mm -hmm. if it's not vocally? Through through. If meditation. it's not through books, if it's not vocally, mm -hmm. how do you communicate? Do you through hear meditation. back? No, do you hear vocal, back? So it's not, says. You can't be no, hearing back vocally. because he says not vocally. So how do you but communicate gave, gave if it's me, not through books, nor is it vocally? Feeling, how do you communicate? Yeah. You just imagine it, 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 that you have it, it, spoken no, no, to it, someone? Is that no, how you communicate? It, no, it, it, Yoji, I think explain. the question Yoji, I think the question my, my brother Hashim is trying to say is do you hear back from your God? Not you meditating and speaking and praying and, and re reflecting. Yeah. Do you hear anything back where like instruction says, Yoji, I've heard you, this is what you have to do, and this is what you have not to do, and so on. Do you hear anything like that back? Not in a human voice. Not not in a in a voice, but he, he gives me signs that I am what I'm what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I, I'm supposed to be doing certain. He stuff, gave you, know? you signs. Could yes, those signs that I'm, be? That I'm supposed to do certain. Could stuff, those signs be like, something which is not from God? 
Yes, do, yes, do, do, it, could, it can be, it can be. If you're not knowledgeable about it and if you've not practiced it for a long time, you okay. will not know. So let me ask you this. Has, have you ever asked God or showed you, has he ever shown you a sign what will happen to you after a person dies? He 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 doesn't give me that revelation because why would he give it to me? Why would God give me? No, but this is this is a common phenomenon. You know, people die. Everybody yeah. dies. So Physically, if you don't know what's going to happen to you after your after you die, and all this meditation of yours is just pointless, what's when, the point of you... your what what is the objective of your or the purpose of your life then? When 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 you when you do it for God in this in this experience in this universal body you do it for anything for God then you, He will bless you and when you leave this body then what will happen? You will need, he will he 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 knows only God knows you know. So you don't know that's the thing you don't know. <laughs> right. Well, why would He tell me? I, I, that'll be why? a spoil. Why? Because spoiler. what is the purpose I'll of your spoiler. life then? Tell me. If somebody asked you, okay, Yoji, mm -hmm. you're going to live for eighty years. What have you achieved mm -hmm. in these 80 years? Does it's it tell you how to do good or bad? <laughs> avoid the bad? Do's and don'ts? It's not, it's not funny. So, I mean, so it, 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 it's, it, it's your afterlife. So I, I, I don't like to, um, I don't like to, you know, um, go into, like, I don't like to c contemplate on what's going to happen after this life. Why? I, I'm just, I don't, I'm just why? saying. Why is that? Is, no, no, but why is that? Do you believe that your end is going to be the end when you die? That's it. There's nothing after that. Yes, I I believe that you know. I mean, there's when when you finish your duty serving God, you 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 how you go to how do you even serve peace, you know? God when even you don't know what you're supposed to do? For example, the the good and the bad. Has God communicated to you what is good, what you have to do? And what is yes, bad, and what you have to avoid? Yes. Yeah, so he guides me while I'm because I, I I've I've um he I've, guides I'm you. worshiping him. He guides me. He guides okay. me without speaking. You know. How do you know the difference between way. good and evil if he guides you? How would you know the difference? I would know. I would know by by um by great insight. You know, great insight into what. What is good and what is evil, you know? Great what insight. do you mean, great I, I, insight? Like, be conscious, be conscious, you know? Just go into my conscious and. Is your is your morality me. based on your consciousness mm -hmm. only? Yeah, because that, that that's my that is my true my true self. I if if if, if I'm so caught up in so in the emotions, then out my mind will be clouded, you know. If I'm so clouded, because it's like. I'm going this way and that way, and you know the mind is telling me so. I can't be all in the mind and emotions, you know. I, I have to see stuff as as it is, as it is. No, but that's that's subjective, mm -hmm. isn't it? If it's just based on your own whims and desires, then no, 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 no. For example, see, what what differentiates you from a hippie who thinks it's okay to love as many women as possible as long so, as you're not okay. harming them? Okay, you know what so I mean by the, love the, as well, yeah. So, so 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 let's see, let's see if if if, if you're if you're going into uh try to go into a relationship, right? And you um you did this 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 person is like um less intelligent, like they, they might not know certain stuff, but you know more stuff, more stuff than them, more intelligent. You won't go take advantage of them and try to have a relationship with them. Because you already know it, it doesn't have to be any any law. No, no, I'm not talking about laws, having relationship so, with to know some that, valuable right? person. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that because you're both grown ups, okay? You yeah, mutually yeah. consented to having a relationship. Is that for you morally right or wrong? No marriage, okay. you have kids, you know, out so, of wedlock, okay, well, whatever it is. So, so, so marriage is with a, uh, with a paper. So, there's they, spiritual um, connection on certain levels. There's levels of connection, you know? So, at the highest connection of your relationship it's, it's it's like you're it's like you're engaged with that person like you'll do anything for that person you know now, i'm not talking so about you, just you, one you, person you don't need to sign a paper no, no, i'm not about mm -hmm. like a husband wife kind of relationship i'm mm -hmm. talking about just you know like the hippie life where you're free love with anyone and everyone that's what i meant 
For you, is that so, morally right or wrong? That's the question. So for me, you might ha- you might um you have to love um everyone. You have to love everyone, but it, 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 there's a level of that love. Like you know, you treat your friend at a certain level. You have a connection with your friend at a certain level, and your parents, your mom, are at a different level. I'm not talking about and your they, mom. They, they, Come they, they, on, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about. You know the kind of hippie yeah. life. You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Maybe he's not understanding. No, that. no, okay. no. How I, old I are you? By the way? A hippie, a hippie, twenty-three. I'm You're twenty-three, 23 and you haven't heard of hippies. No, it's okay. No, no. Okay, no I've problem. been in the island. Okay, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think... Which which island are you from? Um, um, Virgin Islands, the Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands, okay. I'm sure yeah. the happy is everywhere. But anyway, I mean, we're getting late now. So this spiritual uh-huh. life, I think it's it's sub- something which you have already realized is, is purely subjective. You think God yeah, is guiding it, it, you, it, it, but it, it, it is basically it, it, you have made your life yeah. around the way you feel is right rather than yeah. actually you, communicating but, but with I, God. You know, I, I have listened to a lot of you guys' videos and um, mm. they... um. You, the, you've been um debating with um subject subjective people like they're very subjective on you know they did they, they, they only do it for 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 only their desires like so to earn more money and to live a better no no life. no but desires I, I doesn't don't... doesn't actually just mean material like i said you know you could mm-hmm. be immoral person those are your desires you know you might be a villainizer <laughs> you don't need okay. to be just materialistic okay. there are okay. many ways of of following your desires so so what what if I so 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 so, so for me I'm, I'm doing this to to desire God's love and I'm no, not doing it for that's for what you're assuming you you think it is God telling you all these things no what, but it's actually your what, own desires you know what, you could what, be a victim what, what, it, of where, your what, own desires where where does desires come from it from yourself from your mind. consciousness. They're from your consciousness, which you worship. <laughs> you worship your consciousness. You could be worshiping your desires. You know that. I'm not kidding you. This is exactly what it is. Because you no, keep you saying be consciousness. The mind. Your, con- the mind. Yeah, your mind is You're worshiping yours. the mind. So the mind is where the seed of consciousness mm-hmm. is mainly. No, yeah. it, 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 it it involves all of your body from the Yeah, from it does, the but the main to, consciousness. To the... If you were mm-hmm. devoid of your brain, you, would you be mm-hmm. conscious? No, you wouldn't. Okay, so, so anyway, yes, look. yes, I would. Yes, I would. Look, look, look. Because look, when when a um when if a you, person if you were on an operating theater and right? removed your brain, look. you wouldn't be conscious. Trust me. Yes, yes. Okay, I, I, I'll so be that's the seat of your consciousness. I'll be conscious. It is. I'll I'm be, not saying I'll it is the only place, but it's the major seat of your consciousness. So you're okay. following your desires, my friend. At the end of the day, and that's what yeah. I'm saying. There, there's no desire. Is it? Okay. No desire for desire. I, I was going to propose something um radical, Yoji. Because you want to connect to the divine, you want to experience yeah. the truth. You'll say Allah, you'll say Allah, I know that. So Allah. what I'm proposing, what I'm proposing yeah. as you're reading the Quran, mm-hmm. you know, become a Muslim and experience the connection the Muslims have. See how Muslims connect to God through their yeah, prayer. They, yeah, I've been to, with Christians. They they also connect to God also. And no, I'm saying, no, no, no. I am asking you, this is a suggestion. Become mm-hmm. a Muslim because you believe in God, and 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 when yes, you read the Quran higher. and you become a Muslim, you will mm-hmm. see what we mean by God, and you will have that connection. Because what we believe, the Quran is the communication from the divine, and it has the divine hallmark. Why we are certain about it? Okay, every other you know book that? and every other religion that you talk about, spiritual religions and, and spirituality mm-hmm. and so on, the element of certainty is not there. If you open up. After the introductory chapter of the Quran, introductory chapter is mm-hmm. called Fatiha, the opening. The second chapter is where it really begins. It tells mm-hmm. you like this is a book in which there is no doubt, guidance mm-hmm. for a surety. This is what you will receive. Once you understand and take in the Quran as, as a message from God, you will have all the certainty. What's going to happen to you when you die, how to live your life, how to conduct your life's affairs, the do's and the don'ts. All of that is provided. This is where the real happiness comes once you know for sure. Because those Look, people who are mm-hmm. searching, Yoji, I'm just um, finishing and, and, and you yeah. let you speak to, to respond. Okay. Okay. Those people okay. who are on their spiritual journey, they're searching and searching. We have found what people are searching. We've already got the truth. Okay. 
While in the truth, the next thing is actually immersing yourself in the knowledge of this truth in practical manifestation of that connection that you have. And that's what we do living like a Muslim, someone who has submitted to the truth, to God. People who are searching and seeking, they're in the path forever and forever until they die. They keep seeking and they don't find the truth. Islam is that truth people are seeking. So we have the ultimate destination. People are seeking the way. That's the difference between Islam and every other. Every other thing is like a path to, and Islam is the path which leads to that destination. So Islam is the destination. Every other ways of spirituality and so on is a path, is a way. It doesn't lead you to destination. So we are giving you the thing that you're seeking is Islam. So think about it. Think about it. And I will hear what you have to say, but I, you're more than welcome to join in another stream because it's quite yes. getting quite late. So what do okay. you have to say before we um, say goodbye to you? So um, uh, I, I would like to like um, come back on probably on the next next stream. Yeah. Um, and have a friendly. I know there's a lot of people that they're all in their emotions and um, they're rambling and stuff, but I'm I feel very calm and. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I don't go into emotions a lot, you know, Be, because you know that, that that's like, um, if you keep on doing that all your life, then you won't find any happiness if you siding with the emotions and the identity and all these stuff, you know, just be one with God and all, all the life and you will go to him. When you leave the body, you know. Um, okay, yeah, I think we'll continue this uh, next time. It's yeah. quite late. Ah, yes, but, uh, yeah. okay. appreciate you. I'm your, gladly, yes. Yeah, but do take care and um, you know read, carry on reading the Quran, and then yeah. next time we yeah. talk, uh, we can, we can okay. explore it further. Okay. 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 You yes. take care. Yeah. Bye. Uh, um, Hashem, nearly eight hours. I mean, yeah, I know again. <laughs> too, too long, and we've got a stream tomorrow as well. Oh, I said okay. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So we we'll leave it there, inshallah. So I just want to just say all the brothers and sisters who might be watching and our friends, still quite a lot of people watching live. Um, we really appreciate if there's any benefit in our discussions that we had. You know, alhamdulillah. You know, we're trying to do as best as we can. <laughs> If we have made any mistakes and so on, do forgive us because, of course, we are human at the end of the day. And sometimes we might have, uh, you know, our approach may not be appropriate and so on. Like, you know, I was, you know, <laughs> like the that person earlier on, Ahmadi, he, he was very irritating. They were saying, like, yeah, I'm going to remove you from this tree and kick you out. I mean, perhaps it was harsh words. But the reality is sometimes, you know, our uh, we are made up of emotions and it might come um, and become quite visible. So we do apologize if you have taking any offense in any way shape or form with this um until then you know keep us in your duas and always remember us in your duas that allah makes and keeps us sincere because the effort in going you know more than 100k and more and more there might be an element where people think like we are somebody um we are nobody we are just brothers come together doing dawah and speakers corner um, learning and trying to share the learning with you. So we don't want to feel in any way, in any time, some kibber in our heart, some pride in our heart that we're somebody and we're doing this for our own nafs, for our own self. So please remember, you know, the words to keep us sincere because dawah that we're doing is for Allah's sake. Mukhlisin al you know, that's what we should all be aiming for. And, you know, make dua for us that Allah keeps us in our knowledge growing in ilm and nafia that we benefit continuously from knowledge that is beneficial and we learn every day and we can share this learning with you and at the same time to make us patient and 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 and, and humble in our efforts so that people can be appreciative of what we are saying and what we are trying to share rather than being and showing ourselves to be arrogant and so on and so forth. So this is something from me that my plea to all our listeners and our audience to continuously support us in the way that we hope to be to help you um, and to help us at the same time. And keep uh, your suggestions coming in through our email is there on the screen. If you think that we can, we should be doing some other streams and, and some topics on, that you would like to cover because if you realize in the last year, 
we have covered so many different topics, brought in guests from all over the world, started networking with people um, across the globe. And we will continue to do so. We'll continue to network and strengthen this build in which we'll create this you know, ethos, a platform in which we, we sh have a shared learning. And if you have someone in mind that you think that we should be benefiting from or benefiting our audience from, just let us know, inshallah. Barakallah. Yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone uh, for the generous contributions today with super chats. Sorry, we couldn't highlight any of those uh, because our live chat somehow on the StreamYard platform is, is not functioning. <laughs> so we can see the chats in the, um, in the YouTube studio, but uh, from there we can't highlight anything. It has to be in the StreamYard uh, window, otherwise we can't highlight. So apologies for that. It's something that's not in our control. Uh, we tried to speak to the the support team for the stream yard, they said that you have to restart the, the chat. So we couldn't do that either. So yeah, Barakallah uh, for all the support, the contributions. Uh, specifically wanted to thank our moderators. Mashallah, we have been doing a wonderful job. Uh, bro Brother Naeem Aurangzeb has been there again, once again, Mashallah. I hope his uh, dad is well. I don't know what the news, the update, I haven't got anything yet. Uh, so I pray that your, your dad's well now. Uh, and also to all the other brothers and sisters who have been moderating, uh, whose names we haven't mentioned, but uh, just up and up and to all of them. And also to uh, thank you for this 100,000 100, um, subscribers, this milestone. We couldn't have done it without you all. Uh, we thank Allah, obviously, first and foremost. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are want to show our gratitude in this little way we can with Humility, may Allah accept from us all, and uh, may Allah keep us firm and sincere throughout our journey uh, on this path of uh, of our life. Actually, until we die, we we pray uh, that Allah gives us the the opportunity to have the kalima on our tongues uh, as a during our last breath and. Uh, Say amen, all of you, because we pray for all of you to have the same for the Muslim one. And inshallah, we'll meet in Jannah. So, Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nahmadu wa nasulli ala rasul kareem. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdiki. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdiki. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayki.